I'll just give you the overview of the website and uh, I'll tell what all the things I'll be teaching you. Along with that, uh, like how, how the things will go on, everything I'll tell you now. So basically, the website is nothing but a particular site. So where it will, which will be having a front end part as well as the back end. So where the person which who is using the website can just see the view of the website like uh, without seeing he won't see any code and all those things or any back end what the thing is happening he doesn't care about it the thing is only is how the functionality of the website only we care about so if i just open website that is aerobotica.in so if i just open this website so we have something like uh, we are i'm getting this kind of page so where i can just see the particular uh, ui of the website so that is nothing but our front end part i can just see along with that what else i can see i can see something is uh, having you can see the bubbles are going here and some notifications are coming and i can just uh, go from uh, one particular page to another particular page so all the things i can just do from this particular site and along with that you can see the particular uh, ui of the website is designed in such a way that uh, at the top we have the nav bar and uh, at the middle we have one section we have a footer section over here along with that we have a number of pages over here if i just open this kind of page you can see a number of pages i can see and i can see the boxes are overing colors everything is been getting changed so all these things how it works and uh, how it happens so basically if i just tell you about the overview of the website if i take example of a this particular website so this is nothing but a dynamic website we have two types of website that is a static as well as dynamic so in the static website we don't have anything like it no database connections and there is no form to be filled over here so if i just i can fill the particular form over here I, even i can just uh, click to this particular button and uh, i can just view this particular raw form like i can just fill out this particular form i can just fill out the particular form i can enroll all those things that means some database is connected and uh, if i just from one page to another page i can link it and uh, we can maintain the particular authentication system i can do login i can do sign up everything so that is nothing but a dynamic website so which is a database is connected and any back end language is used for it to develop it so one one more thing we have that is static website so static website is just normal this is the with the html css and javascript part so by using only this front end we can just develop a static website so even i can just make one page like this static like whatever the code you will be writing inside your html so that will be visible over here and whatever the images you want to display the thing you would have uh, added inside your html code the path of the image so from there it will be display and it's just a, just a static website there is no database connections and uh, there is no data coming from any of the servers and all those things okay so it is static website so let's uh, discuss about uh, the dynamic website so suppose we have this is a website so website will be built with this uh, technologies so first we need to have a front end so with the front end we have this many options and we have a back end we have this many options and we have marketing tools and we have the databases here and uh, this is a domain and hosting i'll tell you later so we will discuss about the front end and the back end right now so what is front end front end is something like which we are seeing from the uh, website the ui of the website is nothing but a front end that means uh, the coded data whatever the code is there that is converted into a gui form that is a like with the graphic forms like uh, where uh, i can just uh, see the website or whatever the content is there i can just see in a very relevant manner and i can make use of it so that is nothing but the front end part so how the front end is built so like suppose we have this nav bar here and uh, we have the fonts of this that we provide by training to our interns it is in the big fonts and you can see the this is the one of this hovering part i can just uh, if i click here it is going down and it is uh, if i click here again it is going up so all this how it works so just the design of the website so the design of the website will be done using a front end technology by using html as well as javascript i can just use a javascript css html okay so what is html html is a hypertext markup language so hypertext markup language if i just press control u so if it is everything is a html here so you can see whatever the thing i have written here so this, this is a code of the website that means just a html code that like what all the html codes we have we have a html builder template we can add the meta tags we can give the title of the website in this format and whatever the thing the at the body i am i am seeing here that is coming from the body so that is written in the html format 
like if i want to use uh, display the image i can just use anchor tags if i want to link from one uh, particular uh, page to another particular page we use the anchor tag with the h reference over here and we have the images tag for the images and we have the another list uh, list tags a number of things we have so this is everything is nothing but a just a html code and html code that is nothing but just your structure or skeleton of your website that means with the html you cannot uh, say like oh, i can i need to uh, put an image in this particular size itself you cannot uh, reduce the image of the size and you cannot uh, add any colors to it and you cannot uh, divide the particular sections all those things cannot be done with the html html is just one uh, markup language where i can we have a number of components for images we will be using image tags or we will be use a division tags for dividing the sections and along with that we have the particular href attributes and we have something like uh, buttons we have uh, forms everything comes from the html but that is just a skeleton like if i just take one example of a human body so you have seen the skeleton of the human so without any eyes without anything just what it will be it will just the bones will be there just a skeleton of your web that is just a skeleton same thing you can compare that particular skeleton with the html okay that particular you can just uh, compare with the skeleton i will just open uh, one uh, particular uh, uh, ppt so you can i'll just differentiate uh, the particular stuff with you there okay so if i just open my documents so don't know why this particular things comes here so if i just click on the documents if i just click on to the document over here if i just tell uh, something if i just open this web ppt so here i'll just differentiate you the html css and javascript so what is exactly the thing is so html is a hypertext markup language and uh, the javascript javascript is your uh, soul of your website that means something thing some functionality is working some uh, 24 hours okay so if i just open this uh, particular uh, presentation so you can see so you can see this this particular uh, image here so this image is what you can see this is html just as as i said this is your skeleton of your website okay so the javascript is something here blade is flowing here so something the blade auto order 24 hours the blade will be flowing from one main to another main right it doesn't stop some functionality is happening so that is nothing but our javascript and what is our css css is a cascading style sheets that means you can create your, your style sheet like you can create your uh, uh colors and you can add the colors to it you can just uh, give the padding you can give the margin and you can add any background colors to it and how much size should be there you can see we have a bone here so we have a skeleton for this skeleton i can make uh, the size of the hand like if i want to make it broad i can make it use of the css and if i want to change the color of the t-shirt i can do it if i want to add anything with the t-shirt i can do it and whatever the legs should be there and what should be the color and everything whatever the stylings will be there everything comes from there everything comes from our css so without css you cannot achieve the beautiful websites over here okay that is one thing so without uh, css i cannot achieve the websites uh, in uh, in this particular fashion so here we have everything everything we have used with this website so without css if i see so this is all over css so sorry this is all over html code css comes from in css come from this particular raw files which we have imported so i'll show you in the coding part later so how to import css files how to we use with the javascript file and how to create our own things so everything uh, that will be come from where so if i just open this uh, slide you can just easily this is one best example to compare what is html what is javascript and what is css so html is something like a markup code just your uh, front end design so, sorry the front end uh, structure so for after creating a structure you will be add, adding the particular css to it that you will color it and you will make navbar should be this particular size and this particular section should be this particular size and uh, if you want to make the image round you will be achieving with the css and uh, the website which you are opening inside here so this is one website so if i just open this website so it is in the mobile view if i right click and open and inspect it like this so i want to see how it looks inside the mobile i'll just select i want to see at the um, galaxy fold i want to see my website how it looks at this particular uh, size so you can see it is it is whatever the thing it is coming in the mobile view also properly even it is coming from where even it is coming in my desktop view also for this all you need to write the css uh, for it like we apply the css media queries 
so that media queries is something like at this particular size this particular css should work at this particular screen size this particular css uh, should work so all all those things will handle by way how see the, the particular stuff so if i just uh, select this one if i just select uh, something like if i just select like this so you can see a number of attributes we have that is a css if i just remove this color white so see if i just remove the element here you can see the view uh, student detail is gone so you can see if i just uh, enable again you can see now it is getting color so all these things i can uh, see from this uh, inspect element tool so i can by this one uh, tool so where i can uh, it help us to add the particular css in the relevant manner like uh, first you will be giving a random css like uh, my particular color should be this much font size should be this much display should be block all those things so but uh, in the after uh, doing given given like it won't be perfect with the things which you will be giving it so again you will open this inspect element tool from here you will be changing like uh, you will just change because if i want to change the font size you will change from here and if i want to add any element style you can just add if i want to add the particular uh, background uh, color i can directly add the here directly by using i can directly check with this uh, particular uh, at the left hand side i can just uh, debug things like uh, however i need it so this is all about um, stuff so now coming back to here in this uh, page so we have front end so basically we design a website first we will be designing the website first we'll design a structure we'll add css and we'll add the javascript and we'll be build something like this okay there is a website but there is no soul in that one like you created a man you have not uh, put the soul in it to put a soul in it what you need to do you need to use a back end thing suppose this is a website which has been developed by using html and css and javascript so what is this uh, bootstrap so bootstrap is a one community so i'll introduce with the get bootstrap.com this is a website bootstrap so from where the developers will go to this uh, site and they will go to the documentation they will start their starter template and they will start building their website in a very uh, in a very easy manner so that means we have a components here suppose i want a buttons i want the button from uh, like this i want the button to display in my page so we thought i don't know css and i don't know javascript i don't know anything i don't know html also i don't know javascript also i don't know uh, the css also so the first thing is what here is we can just uh, work with this get bootstrap.com we can just work with the bootstrap first so which it helps the developers to build their website in a very fast manner and uh, even we can understand each and every concepts of html with this and but we don't uh, get and knowledge on the css as well as the javascript even if you don't know just you can visit this website where i can get some of the things suppose i want this primary color i'll just copy this button whichever i want i'll paste it in my website and i'll just change the particular uh, uh, text according to my requirements then we can uh, add you can see a number of buttons we have here suppose i want the images to display suppose mm -hmm. uh, suppose i want the images here so i'll just uh, search for the images here i want to search for the sorry i want a card suppose i want the suppose i want the card to be display so i'll just visit this website so see they have it they have given everything there has been like spoon feeding they have done in with this website the getbushlab.com is nothing like spoon feeding like free you can use and it it doesn't mean like if you copy the code and if you paste it is not like uh, you're not a developer like this okay even if you know suppose as a developer myself i know html i know css i know java css and i know javascript also everything i know even though i don't uh, sit and uh, design a website from my scratch i won't ever I, ever i have not designed with everything with now if i want to design this website same website only by using js uh, html css without using any other uh, extra things like which is already inbuilt like bootstrap tailwind css like that so if i start doing like this it will take uh, suppose i did with this suppose i have done with this uh, i think 10 days so if i do with same thing to just design the front end path only it will take around uh, one two two three months it will take the like time is time management we don't have and it takes more time and you should be very much strong in this uh, technology in this uh, css js so that you can design such kind of website with your own but with the help of the bootstrap few knowledge on js html css and with the knowledge of the bootstrap it is very easy to design the front end part you won't be getting any uh, like any difficulties while designing it it's very easy okay so we can just uh, copy the code from the bootstrap and with my small knowledge of js as well as css i can edit the particular code with the already written code i can edit it so i will copy this one so after copying this one we have something class here 
so how without it, the things which is class is nothing but the cs is added added with that and by by way of way we are giving class is equal to card so that i will access this card inside my css file and i will give some styling like this should be this particular width you can see this should be this particular width and the particular image should be like this and the whatever the font inside is there it should be at this particular size all those things we will be giving by using a class so class is equal to card by accessing this card i can give the particular css so whatever the css i will be giving for the card that will be applied for this whole section from where the division is tag is opening so already the inbuilt uh, bootstrap here is very amazing so we no need to change anything so just whatever the things is there with the bootstrap i can use all the components and i can build a website so i will just show you one example i'll just show you one example so this is a website so i have done so without using without knowledge of without using uh, html css js that means i not given my own no uh, html all those things everything just for the front end i used bootstrap directly i used the bootstrap and i designed this website so you can see if i just see this is the website which i have designed just with the bootstrap and back end is nothing django we have been i have been used so by using a django i have designed the other back end part everything we works so you can see search will work here and if i want to go to the blog page so you can see page not phone i'm getting here if i just click on to the blog page so you can see i'll be going to the you can see hey just log in and use my website and i can log in with the google accounts i can do the particular sign up from here and see how the image i can display with the right hand side and if i just click on to here um if i want to just go back to the home page i'll just go back to the home page like this so so if i even if i just want to log in with the google accounts you can see everything works so that means i can design the website everything uh, with the front end i can just use a bootstrap okay so starting as a journey in the developer journey so i better suggest you to start with the bootstrap first so when you start with the bootstrap you will get a knowledge on html completely and you will understand how the css works also and js js is completely scripting language so when it's required i can use or else uh, it's like an optional thing okay without javascript also we can design a website there is no mandatory if you are going with the node.js javascript uh, knowledge is mandatory if you are not going with the node.js and react there is no need of javascript okay without javascript also i can build a website doesn't matter so we are, then with the latest technology we have a react and angular so react and angular is a completely single page application so if i just uh, notice here if i just click on to if i just click on to here uh, uh, suppose if i want to just click on to the internship course as you can see the page is getting refreshed if i come back to home page the page is getting refreshed but in the react angular if you are designing a front end website even if you are going from one page to another page your page won't get loaded so what a great benefit right so see if i want to go from one page to another page it is loading and it, we need to wait at least for two seconds to open this particular page but with the react there is no need of waiting suppose best example is what youtube best example is youtube over here so if i just click on to the youtube over here best example is the youtube so see if i just uh, click on to any like uh, i have this kind of page if i want to just see uh, if i just say rv rv cj media see see the difference it is not loading the page just it is giving me the output if i just click on to the t series see, it is getting the output the page you can see here the page is not getting refreshed if i just click here you can see it is coming the page if i just say only see this the particular left hand side everything whatever it is it is fixed and whatever the tab nav bar is there that is fixed only what the particular component is getting changed that means we deal with the components in the react js as well as angular so like uh, which all the things need to be changed only that particular uh, component will get changed and rest all the things will be same so that is very useful for the single law page applications benefits of that is the our server's bandwidth will reduce and uh, so whichever the website we are hosting it we need to pay monthly or like yearly so like it will be it will generate a bill for us like uh, this many dollar that many dollars but uh, how it means it depends upon the usage of the website bandwidth all those things so with the react we can uh, save our money as well as uh, the executions can be very fast over here so this is all about the front end thing that is nothing but what we are seeing with the website that is everything is about front end so now comes under back end part so what is exactly the back end back end is something like which is uh, take caring of our uh, data and which is take caring of our routing system and uh, whenever i submit some of the buttons after filling the data so it takes a data and to store in the database our back end plays a very major role in it suppose now i'll just log out from here i'll just log out from here i just logged out so now 
I have something like I am getting this one. I want to register for internships or something. If I want to enroll, see if I just click on to the enroll, my backend what it did, it checked whether I have logged in or not. So if I have not logged in, it is giving, it is directly redirecting me to the login page. So here, here where the oh, the backends are uh, used, like it checks everything, like what is our uh, whether I have logged in or whether I have not logged in. If I have logged in, it will directly uh, go to the login page. I'll just now log in with it. Suppose I'll just log in uh, with any of the account. So I want to log in with this uh, first account. Suppose if I logged in with this account, so you can see it is just uh, logged in and it redirect me to the this particular form page. Now suppose I want to register some data. So I'll, I'll if I just see if I just click on to the end row, it is asking me please fill out this field. So when I fill everything and I click on to the end row, I the whatever the data user is uh, giving us, whatever the data user is giving us, it is very precious to us. It is very important. So where we need to take care of it and we need to validate it everything we need to do so this particular data we need to store it in any of the database which we are using it so now the data after saving it the data will get stored into our database and suppose if i want to search anything i can do search from here i can do the searching i think the search option is not available and if i just click on the student account i can just see all the data after the things and all a number of functionality like related to the form fielding to the payment integration to the uh, viewing the results and the authentication system everything is what everything is about our backend uh, system will take care of it and it store the data into the database so where uh, the backend comes into the picture so to select a backend we have a number of options so if you are good at the python now comes under uh, now i'll tell you about programming languages why programming languages is required what is the use of programming language suppose i am familiar with the python I can go ahead with the Python plus. If, if, if I am go, if I am good at the Python, I can go ahead with the Python Django also. So to go ahead with the Django as well as a Flask, we need to know at least uh, Python basics, like how the syntax of Python will be there, how to print it, how what is how the if else conditions works, and how the for loops works, how the functions works, how the classes works. So we need to have little basic knowledge on the Python. So to go ahead with the Python plus as well as the Python Django. So now if you are suppose if you don't know Python, you are good at the JavaScript. You can go ahead with the Node.js Express uh, like that. Okay, that is also one back, uh, pro this one uh, backend language. So you cannot use everything with the um, one website like Python for one thing, Node.js for one thing, Django for one thing and PHP for one uh, thing. You cannot do like that. When I decide uh, my website to build, I need to select any one from here, not like everything. For the front end, you can decide anything. Just you can go ahead with the bootstrap also. Just you can go ahead with the HTML, your own HTML also. Even you can go ahead with the HTML, CSS, JS, and Bootstrap also. And even you can go ahead with the React also for the front end part. Okay. And for the back end, anyone we can choose it. So if you took a React for the Django, so here JavaScript required, Python is also must and uh, should require. And uh, you can just uh, start building your website. Okay. And database comes and that is database is completely like a different concept. So where we have a MySQL database and we have a MongoDB and we have a PostgreSQL SQL So if you are selecting a Node.js or Express, MongoDB is more convenient. If you are selecting a Django, SQL 83 or PostgreSQL is more convenient. If you are selecting any PHP or a Flask projects, uh, the MySQL is more convenient as per my knowledge. Okay. So this is the database is used to just store the data like whichever uh, whenever the login happen authentication system when you for the in uh, e-commerce website like uh, storing your uh, payment integration data and uh, like handling the payments gateway everything the we need to store everything inside our database organization so we need database to store it the database we need to have a back-end part so who, who needs to take care of everything like any like all the errors all the debugging things everything will be taken care of by our backend front end is something that which we are seeing with the website that is just a design of the website okay so it is nothing but our front end this is all about the overview of the website come once you develop a website we can market with this uh, third party marketing instagram also you can uh, add a search engine optimization so that uh, our websites uh, ranks at the google and uh, social media marketing also we can do so that can be done with the money's marketing part and once it is done once you have developed everything so when we develop a website we develop inside where we develop the website inside the local host like we develop the particular website in the local host so where um, so just a second So, so after uh, 
develop a website after you develop a website we need to store it we need to go live to go live we need to take one domain from any of the site and we need to host our project inside the hosting so we have a number of things so this i will teach you once the project is developed so how the hosting works even hosting also i'll be teaching in the sessions okay so this is how the complete uh, websites uh, works okay any doubts uh, till here guys like got an idea like how the website how it's things what all the things is there with the websites so what about others i want everyone to reply content development your graphic interface of the website yeah okay so now what uh, things i'll be telling you what all the things i'll be uh, providing you see i can directly go ahead with the react js and python django if i go like this 100 percent sure i won't be understand because very complex things are there so so because we also what we'll do we'll aram say uh, anyways we have a 15 to 20 hours of session so easily we'll go it okay so we'll design we'll uh, see about the front end i'll teach you about the bootstrap thing and i don't i don't start with i don't start teaching html css in the office it's a very basic uh, concept you can learn by yourself okay but uh, if you have zero knowledge in the programming also i don't uh, worry but i i expect something like uh, at least basics of python you know like uh, just uh, even if you don't know python syntax also i don't care you need to know how if else condition works how for loops works what is a function what is a variable and uh, how the try accept condition works how we can import it all these things if you know and not more than enough front end no problem we can directly we will be start directly from the scratch that is a bootstrap so i'll be using first i'll use a bootstrap html css js then i'll uh, so obviously the course is on the python django so i'll teach with the python django mainly focus is on our front back end part mainly for the main focus is on our back end at by back end part so what we'll do i'll be teaching the authentication system so i will introduce with the rest api keys so even i'll teach you with the rest api django rest framework even i'll be teaching you the django rest framework and uh, i'll say how the what is api key how it works i'll give a introduction on, i'll give one uh, particular session on that and along with that i'll be first i will start with the easiest concept i don't want to make you to like uh, like starting only i don't want to teach you the difficult concept so we'll go go smoothly and we'll start building one uh, particular website so i have not decided which website to be built so i'll decide it uh, by tomorrow so anyways uh, we'll be taking sessions so uh, right so i'll decide uh, which website to be developed so we'll start developing that particular website from the scratch so we'll so you will use a front end uh, bootstrap like that or html css all those things back end we'll be using a python django as uh, we have mentioned and we'll start building everything so first we'll create how first we need to create a project we need to create an application and we need to set up the routing part i'll give the introduction like how it works like how exactly the python django works so we'll start with that one and uh, I will tell you the no installation parts. So, what all the installations to be done? I will teach you the authentication system. I will teach you how the database connections can be done, how to create a database tables, how to retrieve the data. I will be teaching you the CRUD operation, create, update, edit, delete, and I will be teaching you how to store the data in the authentication system in our database. And even along with that, I will be teaching you the Paytm integrations, how to create a Paytm integration like payments in the payments gateway in the websites along with that i'll be teaching you with the hosting parts also like how to host in a website and how to achieve the automated emails in the website how g emails will work how gmail so i can just when so someone's contact us how to send the automatic emails to them as well as for that mean so these all these things uh, will be implementing so we'll take we'll take one particular project so where uh, like any good nice project so where i can uh, start uh, where all this functionality can where it comes in that particular website we'll see that one and we'll start building it okay and uh, so no need of i i won't be first of all i'm saying i won't concentrate much on the front end part our main focus is on our back end part django but when i'm teaching the front end each and everything also i'll be explaining you because bootstrap is something like that even a 10th student can understand okay even a 10th standard can so 10th student can start with the bootstrap and he can build a website in just five minutes okay so that is uh, so no no tension about the front end part and if i want any changes i'll i'll say how to do the changes by applying our skills of the html css and js that things we'll see so i'll back end completely 100% i'll assure so you'll be expert with one python django so after the course you can arm so you can build your own website okay so that things we can we'll be seeing and the hosting i'll make you host the website freely for the free of cost like at the heroku platform so all these things will be seeing okay 
So now, so let's uh, st tell you about the installation part. So all the installations should be happen means first you need to have the VS Code editor. So VS Code editor. So let's tell VS Code download. So when I tell VS Code download, I have this option that is a VS Code download. See here. If I just uh, click on to this link, just open this, just click on to the Windows uh, 7 or 8 and 9 or if you, whichever you have your system, just click on to here. So once I click on to this uh, button, the editor will get start downloading it. You can see it is started downloading. Already I have, I have cancelled. Okay, so I will just cancel. So once it is downloaded, so I will say how the installation works. And one more thing, we need to have a Python installed in our laptop. I will just tell Python, download Python. Python download or something anything okay so once I say so I'll just click on to the first link so with this first link don't start directly with the Python 3.9.7 we need to see how we need to download means go a little bit down here so we have something here so we have something here like this if I come still down so we have here uh, so somewhere where is it so I want to download Python right so here we have uh, like this with the specified date we have whichever you like you can just download it so I think uh, I need to go with the let's say one more thing download python so once I click I'll just click on to this 41st link so here I have somewhere here it will be recommended one so where is that recommended so they have changed the UI of the uh, website so we have somewhere here itself if I just click on to the python 3.9 point so the latest one is what uh, 3.9.7 right so if I just see here 3.9.7 we have here august 30 it has been updated so if i come here so here we can see just uh, click on to this link 3.9.7 so here see which is your uh, compatible version if you are having a 64 bit uh, laptop you can install directly the windows installer 64 bit just click on to the windows installer 64 bit you can see it gets started downloading it it gets started downloading it i'll just cancel like this okay so now i have already downloaded so i am not uh, Again, I'm just not. I don't want to download it again. So once it is downloaded, so means you have VS Code and once we have Python. So why use why we, why we want Python? Like to go Python Django is a Python framework. I'll give the introduction about the Django now after the installation. Django is what? It is a Python framework. So web framework. So where I can use the Django web framework for designing a websites. So we need to have a Django Python installed in our laptop. So now. If I want to create a website, I need to type it right. I cannot uh, start typing the particular website with the notepad. I cannot use this uh, notepad and I can uh, even I can do it. I can build a website using notepad also. Doesn't matter. You can save the file and whatever the code is there, you can write. But code efficiency will be not be there. You won't be understanding and you will get bored with that. So we need to have one code editor. So that is nothing but our Visual Studio code. So where I can uh, use this editor for the editor, I can type the code in a very relevant manner. And I can easily, I can just save it. You can see how easily the, how the things uh, will looks with this uh, VS Code editor. So you can see all the colorings it will give. You can see all the coloring at the time of typing. I will be getting one. I will be getting the self interest to type. So half of the I no need to suppose there is a 200 lines of code. I'll just type 50 lines of code. Rest 150 rest 150 lines of code. Our automatic our Visual Studio code will give us suggestion. I can just choose the suggestions and I can uh, easily I can. Uh, what uh, I can just enter it and I can auto complete the particular sentences or uh, particular variables all those things so it is why we VS Code look something like this so some this is one project of the react js which I have opened so I'll just uh, close everything like this okay so something like this it will be the visual studio code so why we, we will be using this uh, code editor to just type our build our project in our local host so local host in the sense in our system will be using to develop a web, the particular website so I'll just close this one so now i'll give the so uh, now i want to tell you about the installation part so when you are clicking once you have downloaded just you will open just click on to the next 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 and install it so at the time of installation you need to take care on two things we need to take care about two things so what is the first thing is with? i have the particular document so if i just open this uh, document i'll say what is the where you need to take care about it okay so so this is all about i will be teaching you so i have the particular concept in the django what all i need to teach you so i'll be teaching you this uh, this particular introduction today introduction will be done so basic concepts of python i'll teach you with the django like how the exactly the python is used inside the django like how it works 
introduction with the booster of five will be doing it again uh, console all this thing registration forms we will see with the database we'll see static images dynamic uh, creation with the blog home page ninja techniques sending mails githubs i'll give introduction on the git hosting a website along with the payment integration so everything i'll be teaching you with this support so next i wanted one um where is it uh, let's see where is that uh, pdf so okay it's here django setup okay so we'll just open this also see here you need to take care about uh, two things so what is the first thing is you need to take care about this first stuff so that is nothing but uh, the installation of the python when you are installing a python you will be getting this kind of page see you will be getting this very much important uh, thing which i am saying you know so it will be like install python 3.964 bit it will be you will be getting this kind of page before clicking on to the install now before clicking on to the install now you need to do what you need to uh, enable these two things you need to enable these two things that is the installer python for the users add python 3.9 to the path these two things is very much important okay so at the time of installation of the python what you need to do this is a uh, you'll be getting this kind of page so i said you how to download it so when you are opening that particular uh, execution file just click on open and just install it you know normal installation in laptop holders so when you are clicking on to the install uh, when you want to install it once you open the file the particular downloaded file of the python you will be first you will be getting this kind of page like install it something by saying like this same page you'll be getting but uh, the version will be different uh, before clicking on to the install now you need to do what you need to enable this uh, install add python to the mark and enable add python to the, uh, add python to the part enable in the sense you need to put tick mark it should not be blank it should be a tick mark both the boxes should be tick marked then you need to click on to the install now if you are failing to do this one at the time of django installation you will be getting the problems again you need to uninstall python again you need to again you need to reinstall it at the time of reinstallation you need to put tick, tick mark to these two boxes then you need to put on the click on to the install now okay so this is very much important uh, things at the time of installation of the python okay so then normal procedure so just click on to the two check boxes click on to the install now done your uh, python will get installed so once it is installed coming back to the vs code at the time of vs code installation so i have said you how to download it so after downloading it when you are opening it you will be getting such kind of page so where you will be getting this kind of uh, page so at that time what you do tick mark each and every box tick mark here 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 everything so what is the use of this one when you are tick marking it so if i want to open any file suppose i want to open this web file with the vs code you can say i am getting open with code i can directly open this particular uh, file inside my visual studio code i can directly open this uh, particular file with the visual studio code i can directly open it okay so that is what the, i'll be getting one benefit so this all the four check boxes should be enabled and click on to the next when you are getting this kind of page then normal installation next 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 and install it so only you need to take care about this particular page okay so that is all about uh, the installation install the python install the visual studio code and all the check boxes should be enabled okay so once it is done i'll just uh, close this uh, file so come back to this one so once you after you install you need to check whether it is installed correctly or not so after installation my suggestion restart your laptop and uh, check with this one you need to enter pip pip so once you enter pip so once you are entering this uh, pip so once you enter pip after installation of the python sorry so let's tell uh, pip pip enter so what is pip pip is a package manager of the python by using pip we will be installing modules like pip install django pip install flask like that so see here we are getting some uh, options here i'm getting some things like i'm getting some of the commands and i'm getting some of the options a number of things like some output i'm getting it when i enter pip that means your python is work this particular thing should work properly this is very important thing pip should work it should not show any errors when you are entering the pip after installation so after that you need to check python is working or not i'll just tell python enter so once you enter python you can see it is giving me python 3.9.6 terminal i'm getting so i can just see if i want to print anything i'll just print i'll just tell print uh, welcome welcome if i just tell uh, like this something like and i can just close it and i can just uh, put the particular uh, i need to close also enter means you can say i'm getting welcome like this that means the particular uh, 
Python is also working fine. Even I'm getting output of the Python, Python is also installed properly. So if I just press Ctrl Z and enter, you will come out of the loop. So the Python is working fine and the PP is also working fine. And normal VS code will work fine. Automatically it will install. So once you have whatever I have shown you, that thing you need to do it. So this is all you need to do. This all, these only the two parts for the installations. So now I'll give about the web, overview on the Django. So what is Django means? So Django is something a backend framework. So backend framework of the which is completely written with the Python programming language. So Django is written completely with the Python programming language. It is a number one framework of Python for rapid development of the website. It's focus on your application. So we have two things in Django. One is a project and one is application. So project and application Django defaultly it will be giving once we enter uh, some of the commands of Django, then we will be start building with the uh, application and the project which it has been given and it's very rapid and in the case very free and as well as open source so then features of Django is fast okay it is very fast and uh, the particular concepts of uh, Django is very simple very it is designed in such a way that around so you can understand and uh, easily you can build your websites and easily you can understand what is the thing is going on so then it is very secure also because due to the CSRF mechanism we have uh, tokens with the things so we have automated authentication system with the Django. Just we need to import it and I can start using that uh, particular authentication system. And it's a uh, secure website in a very relevant manner. Okay. And if you do any mistakes also, it will uh, just neglect it. And scalable. What is scalable? 100 user is there. Same speed will be there and same functionality will provide. If there is a hundred thousands of users are visiting your website, even that even that at our time or a database can handle and even it will be give us the same uh, result and we it has very scalable man like even if there are at a time like thousand users are registering it it will give the space for all the thousand users and it will take care uh, each particular user accordingly okay so that is the scalability is nice with this one and it is flexible either it is a front end as a back end neither it is django is nothing but nothing or not even it is not a front end even it is not a back end it is a framework which we connect our front end as well as a back end and will handle the particular routing system and we will write our logic in the django and we'll write the functions everything with our django things okay and we have a number of libraries with the django like handling for the images handling for the payment integration for the hosting part and even for uh, a number of things like uh, if i want to apply the machine learning uh, like suppose machine learning i'll tell you suppose you have built a model so just you cannot show for the clients in your uh, jupyter notebook like this in the terminal shortcut you need to convert that output into the reality to just show that thing output inside a reality the functions of it you need to create a website first and you need to implement those functionality inside a website so as the machine learning is mostly famous for the python programming so as the django is also python easily you can whatever the functions you have written from the machine learning model easily you can inbuilt import it inside the django and you can create one web website and where you can easily show showcase your uh, particular uh, output the results of the sites in our websites so at the it is very famous uh, with the Django okay so easily you can connect your machine learning uh, models with your Django website and even easy you can give the inputs and you can take the outputs in our website by using a Django so then who uses Django Instagram is built completely using Django itself so you see so many users are using more than a Facebook or uh, Instagram is popular nowadays so that is built with the Django itself Spotify YouTube is all companies has been used by the Django and the most the thing you need to understand with the technically the model view template of Django is like this so we have uh, users so where user we have that means you are the person who is using website when you click on to any page how it goes means it goes to the server it take a URL and it will go to the Django server so before returning the page it will run the function for each and every URL there will be a function for each and for about there will be about function for the contact there will be a contact function for login there will be having a login function that particular logic we will be writing inside our views that is nothing but our view so that particular function it will run so when it returns a view when the view function is running the view is connected with two things it's connected with the database model and it is connected with one html files that means see this is very important to understand when i am opening a website i just open a website this one now I see I know it, I'm in this particular URL so now if I try to click on to this uh, courses bootcamp something uh, courses uh, page the URL it took as a slash courses I was the user 
Now I clicked on to that particular URL. It took the URL and it, it is returning me the template. It is returning what? It is returning the template. So whatever the thing it is returning, it is nothing but a template. It's some template it is returning it. Like it is nothing but it is a template for us. It is a template for me, which is the output it is returning it. So how it works? It went means see it uh, took the URL. It run the function that is view function. The function has connected with the database. So this is how database is connected. See the data I am getting here. The beginner to advanced level machine learning and deep learning and some data I am getting. I am getting some picture and I am getting is all the data. So what it did, it went to the database model. It took all the information from the database and it returned to the view for the function. So that particular data, whatever the logic is run, it is everything it is returning to the template. Template in the short form is nothing but our HTML files. So all our front end parts, we call it as a template itself. Template something like it is your website, the UI of the URL site, the UI design. So like this, the model view templates work. You requested for the URL, it uh, run the one, it is running one particular view function. That function is connected with the database. If any data is there, it is taking the data and it is displaying inside the template. That is nothing but for your front end part. That is what the architecture of our uh, this one will be there. So now client and server, same thing as I said. See, client will request for the template. That is nothing but for the page it goes to the view and it goes to the logic and it see any data is there in the database if it's there it will go to the model it dot data model will return the things to the logic so everything will work uh, done everything is working with our server side client is what client is only seeing what client is only seeing the output i want to go to this page means i can only see the output in my back end at the till the cursor runs the all the things will happen with our server side this is our server side logic that means in the servers the logic works so when i am requesting this particular page it went to the server for the url it took the logic it returned the html page and that particular html as output it is returning over here so like this the server and client side works and it is a html css you know like what is html i said you before itself markup language css is only for the styling javascript is only for what for your functionalities of your website Okay, we'll uh, start creating a Django project in today's session. So we'll see what all the things uh, will be there. So I'll just open one uh, folder inside the any folder. We can just create it. So I'll just create a new folder inside my E drive. So I'll just uh, create a folder name as so anything you can just give it. Okay, it's your choice. So I'll just give it as ARK. Okay, so I'm just creating a folder that is uh, ARK. So once I create folder, you can just uh, right click. You can right click the particular document and you can just click on to the open with the visual studio code so i want to open this particular folder inside my visual studio code so if i just click like this the particular folder will get open inside the vs code terminal so you can see it will be something like this so where uh, only the folder has been open nothing has been uh, visible here to you so this is one way to open the folder and there is one more way to open the folder you can just click on to the file you can just click on to the open folder here so you can see we can have an option open folder so any 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 particular uh, folder you can just open like this suppose i want to open any e-commerce uh, react project if i just try to click on to this so you can see the folder is getting opened here so you can see the folder and you can see all the files will be visible over here okay so like this you can open the particular folders so the best way is to open the folder is just right click and open with code so it will open the folder inside the vs code terminal so once you open the VS code, uh, the particular code, so we need to install some of the modules. So basically we are talking about the Python, right? So to talk about the Python, so you know how the Python uh, particular things works and uh, how to run the particular uh, uh, Python program, all those things inside the VS code. Suppose if I, so we have installed Python and we have installed the VS code terminal. So if I want to run any Python program, uh, create a Python program, I need to see the output. So just you can click on to the first uh, logo and you can just uh, create the particular uh, file name so if i just tell as the file name is test dot py so dot py is a uh, last i need to append it with the dot py dot html is html file dot js is a javascript file dot py means python file dot c is a c plus c file that is c language file and uh, we have a number dot java is the java file so for the python we have dot py so if i just enter so you can see I'm getting like this. So I'm getting this kind of stuff. Like uh, I got this particular uh, file is got created 
and even I can just run the particular file from here. Okay. Suppose uh, if I want to check, if I want to take a input from the user, like what is his name and what is his age, and I want to print the particular data of it. So how I can just tell? So if I just tell a is equal to, I need to just tell int of. So I can just tell input directly. So if I just tell as an input, so here I can just tell something like enter your name. Okay, you can just tell like this, enter your name. And here I'll just tell the B variable is equal to input. So if I just tell input, I'll just tell enter your age. Okay, so if I want the things to get inside the new line character, I'll just give it as a slash n over here. Even I can just give it as a slash n. So now I can just take input from the user and I can print the particular value. So I can just print a comma b. I can just uh, print the particular name as well as I can print the age. If I just save it and if I just uh, run this particular program, so you know you can see in the terminal I'll be getting the uh, data like to give the input. You can see I'm if I just run now. So you can see I'm getting enter your name. If I just give the my name over here, so if I just tell age is equal to 22, if I just enter, you can see uh, my name and age got printed over here. So like this, we can just create a Python programs and I can we can just run with uh, this particular terminal. So just I showed with an example like this. Okay, so you can just uh, create uh, the Python files and you can code your uh, Python program here and you can just run the particular uh, code from here with this, with this terminal. So I'll just delete this one. <coughs> so once I delete, so now let's talk about the Django. So yesterday we have uh, spoke like everything we have uh, discussed like uh, what it is and how can be done everything. So now if I want first I need to install the Django here. So first I need to install what Django that is a uh, Django is a library of the Python. Like you can say it as it is a framework of the Python. So now if I want to use the Django, I need to first install it. First I need to install the Django here. So how I can install, I can just tell it as here as a pip. So you need to just tell pip install Django. So you need to install what pip install Django like this. So what it does means it will install the Django inside your uh, laptop okay if I if I have, I have already installed the Django so again it uh, doesn't install in my laptop okay so it's saying me requirement already satisfied I have already downloaded the Django but in your case the Django will get installed okay so once it has been installed we can start using it so it is the only installation part of the Django with the terminal and we have something here terminal if I try to click on to the new terminal so here also I can just install I can install pip install Django even I can install any modules from here so defaultly it is using a PowerShell in my laptop. In your it, I don't know what it will be using it. So okay, if I want to change the particular uh, terminal, you can just uh, select the new terminal. You can just select anything. Like you want PowerShell or a prompt, command prompt or a git. If you have installed the git, it will be giving you these uh, another options. But command prompt and the PowerShell will be there. So if you want to select it as a command prompt, I can just select it as a command prompt like that. Okay. So it's all completely our choice. So now, to start with the Django, so I'll just uh, show you the documentation of it. So I'll, if I just tell Django documentation, Django documentation, how to get started. So how to get started, if I just click on to the first link, so each and every programming language, each and every framework will be having what uh, will have the documentation. So by reading the documentation, we'll understand the particular code and uh, by with that help of the guides we will be adding the code inside our uh, particular project so see they have said if you want to start your django application you can just uh, see with the django documentation so they are saying us uh, like installation spot if i click on the installation they have seen they're saying us uh, like you need to have the python should be installed so any any version of the python above three version so the python should be installed so that is they have been said so then after that one I just like click on to this one link so they have said the first thing is what you need to create an application and we need to create every, a number of things like how uh, they have said if write your first django application we can try with this particular tutorial so if i just click it will i think the tutorial will get open but somewhere it will be there so the partly uh, the complete uh, guide see if i want something like about the urls and view how it will work if i just click on to here see they have said here like uh, the url pattern you need to perform in this way and the particular function for that url it should run in this way that means see we have a band listing here something so we, we have a function of band listing here suppose i want to run this particular function i want to just run the function so when i am running the function it will take the url for this one bands path is equal to slash path suppose you think 
suppose there is a website name website uh, name so this will be our uh, website name slash suppose you think some website name suppose i want to run this particular function i need to provide the url path the path is nothing but a bands so if i just tell it as a bands here so b a n d s bands slash when i when i click on to this uh, url what it takes means it will run the function which function it will run it will run the views dot band listing function it will come back to this views dot pure file and it will just run this particular function it will return the listing bang the listing like this so like this they have said so like this uh, it will work so we'll see everything with the coding part but i just wanted you to understand i wanted you to show this django documentation so any doubts regarding this one you can just uh, go ahead with the django documentation you can see so we have form validation so see if i want to create a database table so how i can create i can create i suppose they have they, what they have done means they have created a database table that is band contact form so that will be what care field, character field they have given, email field they have given, boolean field they have given and they have created a database table for it. Like this we can uh, see with our uh, documentation. So I'll just close this one. Coming back to here. So now once we have installed Django, software installation of the Django part. So what you need to do, you need to start the project first. So I'll say you have an overview of Django here. So just open, I think, no, google.it. So here there is uh, something like, uh, yeah, where is it okay if i just open this uh first stuff okay here it is not there okay see it will be something like this so we will be having some of the part so something will be having we will create something like that so for the front end we'll be using all these stuffs like html css basics of js and the bootstrap so basically 90% will be using a bootstrap itself which includes all these three things inside bootstrap okay so mainly focus will be on our backend part that is what the python django so we'll look on to the python django and we'll be looking onto the database database will be having a sqlite 3 database which is a default lead will provide by the django but postgresql will be you can i'll show you how the connections can be done but the process will be same then we'll host a particular application in our heroku application so like this will be the process of creating a project so now we need to create a project so we have two things inside django we have a project and uh, inside the project we create our application so any application 100 applications you can create it inside one project like uh, suppose you want to create one e-commerce website you can create as an app for the e-commerce and if you want to create your web or blog application you can create one more uh, like create you can just run the command and you can create uh, one more app and all the app you need to implement inside your project it's very simple so i'll show you with the coding part so there is a command now see at the left hand side we don't have anything it's totally blank we don't have any other thing it is the, our folder is empty now i mean i will run one command so what is that command i'll just tell django admin start the project i want to start the django project so project name i need to give so what will be the project name anything can be there so for now i'll just give the project name as project itself so i'll just give it as a project so I'm saying my Django admin to start the project that is nothing the name is what product should be there so you can see the folder got created so you can see the folder got created automatic and we got n number of files automatic so that means we have got settings.pio file so see the code of the settings.pio file don't worry what is the code we don't deal with this uh, particular file not much just for the in initialization we'll just initialize one one line of the code suppose I am creating an application we will be adding inside our installed apps so we need not to change any code from here it should be a default you need to leave it as it is so then we have a manage.pio file if i want to run this particular uh, project i need to run this manage.pio file i need to run this manage.pio file to just uh, run this particular project so now i want to run the project that is manage.pio file sorry i need to run this file manage.py to run this django project to run this one i'll just uh, open the terminal back so here i'll just say i need to run this manage.pio file so now i am inside the ark folder so inside the ark folder there is a project folder first i need to go inside the project folder to go inside i need to just tell cd and i'll just give space and i'll just tell cd project now i am where i am inside the project directory now so i'm inside the project directory so after coming inside the project folder now i need to run the command what this manage.pio file i need to run it so now i'll say uh, python manage.py run server so this is a command to run the particular django project 
Oops. Okay, so this is a command to run the particular project. So I'll say python manage.py run server. Once I enter this one, I'll be getting a starting development server. So starting development server, I'll be getting it. So where I can just open the particular the particular local host URL and I can see what is going inside on my project. So we cannot directly create the project into the original servers. So first we need to create a project inside the local host inside our laptop. So once everything is working, then we move on to the production spot. That means uh, inside the live servers. So I got some uh, starting development server at the uh, HTTP protocol that is 127.0.1 port number 8000. So if I just press control, press uh, control inside your keyboard and click on to this link. So once I click on to this link, you can see the, you can see here, you can see the particular uh, data that is the uh, Django is worked successfully. I'm getting this kind of page. This is a default uh, Django page. So where uh, Django has been written, some, someone has else has written. So default page, it is returning like this. Okay. So now I don't want this kind of page to get written. I want something to be my own thing. I need to create it. My own website. I need to build it over here. So that thing I need to uh, do it. Okay. I don't want to show this Django default page. It is just for your confirmation like uh, yeah, the Django has been installed uh, perfectly in your uh, system and everything is working fine just for your sake. Okay, so we have it is running where so and because of this particular uh, server, we are opening this particular link. Even you can just copy like this, you can just copy the link and even you can open paste the particular link inside your Chrome and you can open it. Okay, the project will run here. So if you are stopping the server, if the server is stopped, suppose now I am just stopping the server the server is stopped now if i come and refresh the port number 8000 page the server will be get crashed and it, it is say, saying me this site cannot be reached okay so now i have if i want to restart the server i, I need to tell python manage.py run server the server will get started so you can see i'm getting django page over here like this so like this the uh, installations will work now so now what i need to display means i want to display the hello world over here i want to display the hello world Something like I want to display a hello world inside my web pages. I don't want to display this particular thing. I want to start creating my website. Uh, I need to do the uh, like I need to start the website. So now I want to display something else inside the web page. I don't want to display this Django default page. Okay. So this one I need to uh, do now. So how to do that one? So see the particular steps. So this thing we won't uh, do daily and sit. We don't uh, at the daily sessions. I won't create a project, I won't create a application and all. Once the application and project is created, we work on with the same application itself. Okay, so don't think like uh, when I when I start teaching you now, don't think like uh, what I need to do everything every time uh, this much. It is only the starting procedure. So once the procedure is finished, then the same uh, some of the uh, repetitions will be there. Like when, if you want to run a function, like how you are running one function, same function you need to run for the other functions also. Like uh, you'll be get an idea with that. So we deal only with the few files. We won't deal everything. We don't uh, deal with each and every file from here. So from here only we deal with the URLs and settings. The rest of the files we are not going to touch. Okay, and we will create one more thing now. So we have what we have a project created, and I'm getting this page now. I want to create my own application. To create my own application, again I'll just click on to the new terminal. So I need to create one application by the name app. So now first I need to come inside the project directory. So I'll just tell CD project. Now I'm inside the project directory. Now what I need to do here is I need to run the command. So what is the command? I need to just tell Python. So I, I, my PowerShell doesn't work. So I'll be using the command prompt here. So I'll just new, open the new server, the, the particular new command prompt terminal. I'll cancel the PowerShell from here. So now first I need to come where? I need to come inside the project directory. So once I come inside the project directory, I need to create an application now. To create an application, we have a command python python manage.py start the application and you can give the application name anything. So now I want to give the particular application name as app. So it is a command to create an application. So I am giving the command python manage.py start the application. The application name I am giving it here. The application name is what? The application name is app here. So I'll just enter it. So once I enter this command, you can see the app got created now. So the app got created. So now what I need to do next step is I need to, I have created an app, but I, Django doesn't know you have created an app. So we got a number of files here. All files is .py file is what Python files. 
so we have admin file we have apps file we have a models we have test and we have views so these many files we are i will explain one by one later when it comes so just think these all the default files and folder got created when i run when i have just run the two commands over there okay so that is what i have done so now i have created an application so i have created an application i need to tell my settings what settings what your file is your father of your django project like each whatever the thing you are doing it you need to tell to your uh, project settings that uh, these all the things i am uh, doing it like uh, if i have created any folder or you are creating any files so for sorry the folders you need to inform your project settings like i have created these uh, folders like that so now i have created an application that by the name app so this particular uh, thing i need to uh, in initialize it to create initialize it i need to just tell just tell app app okay so i'll just tell app app i'll just put a comma over here okay so app that means so whichever the application you have created let let it be anything so just a second So we have created an application by the name app. So I need to initialize inside my installed apps. Like uh, I have created the uh, the application by the name app. So I'm initializing inside the installed app. So once you installed, just click on to the save all. So each and every time I won't say that I am saving the things. So whenever I so whenever I type anything, when I'm moving for the other file, I'll be pressing Control S. So Control S is to save the particular file. So either you can just save it from here also. Okay, even you can save from here or save all you can do it. So that means save all is all the files uh, will get saved and save means only this particular file will get saved. Okay, so whenever you do any changes with the any file, you need to just press Ctrl S. You need to keep uh, saving the files. If you are not filing the particular uh, things that doesn't work here. Okay, it doesn't reflect the particular changes whatever you have done. So now I have created an installed apps. So now one more thing I will create. I will create one folder. So where I'll create, I'll create here in the project folder. So with the parent project, I'm creating it. See where I'm creating here. I'm just creating to the main project directory. I'll click on to the second logo that is a new folder. I'll just create a folder name by a name templates. So I have created a folder templates. So all my front end thing I'll handle with the template folder. So all the front end thing I'll handle with the template folder here. So now as I created a template folder, I need to say again in my settings, like I have created a template folder. So at the place of 58th line in your settings.po file, this is your settings.po file that will be inside your child project, the settings.po file. So inside the directory, you need to mention the particular uh, folder name. The folder name was I created was templates. templates. So I created a template folder name. So now if any front end parts I am uh, rendering it, our Django will look onto the directories that is templates. So because it is also is initialized now. Okay. So once it is initialized, just save everything. So these are the two things we need to add inside our settings dot profile at the 58th line as well as at the 40th line that is whatever the application you created that you are initializing it so now i'll just uh, close this file so once i created the template folder so why i created a template folder so all my html files i'll be adding inside the template folder so i want to maintain a folder structure so all the python files sorry all the python files will be there inside the application as well as project and mostly we will be dealing with the applications folder and all the front end html files will be dealing with the folders that is template folder so i'll just click on the template folder so i'll click on to the new logo that is a new file so inside the new file what i'll do i'll just create a new file name uh, i'll make it as index.html suppose i'll just tell index.html file so i'll just tell index.html file so this particular html file means whenever you are giving .html it will be treated as html file okay so now here i'll show you the few extensions to install so if i just click on to these four boxes i'll just tell here as a html snippets so html snippets is there something just uh, click on to the first uh, particular thing. This, this is the html snippets so just there will be a button install click on to the install button okay this is one extension important extension to download download this uh, because it will uh, help us to uh will write the our code very efficient manner like it enables the auto complete all those things so html snippet is one thing and one more thing is what python 
Just click on select the python, search for the python with these 4 boxes. Here we will be getting this kind. So python I have already installed. For you it will be a button that is the install button. You can just click on the install button and you can install the python. So then what else next? So next uh, I need to install django. So I'll just tell django. So if I just click on the first link. So you can see you can just install this uh, particular Django also. You will be getting a button install. You can just install it. So these thing, three things you need to install it. The important one. So then what you need to do. Uh, one more thing I will just say. Install the prettier. So with uh, pri prettier. Okay. Something like uh, pri t t i e r prettier. Okay. So p r e it is. Okay. Not p r i. So prettier if i just leave so this is a prettier code format right just it will format your uh, code like whenever you are giving save or if i just want to format the code like um, some like mismatching of the lines will be there so at that time it will uh, prettier file your code okay you can just right click and pretty file so it works for all html css javascript all those things okay this is one extension you can install it so once it is installed so next come back to the project so I have created an index.html file. I'll just press shift and exclamatory. Shift as well as exclamatory. I'll enter the code. So you can see I'm getting a boiler template. So it might not work for you. So if it's not working, don't worry. Just uh, write h1 tag and start writing the code. Okay. Doesn't matter. So it will and it takes time to enable the particular stuff. So here I have selected as a Django HTML. So even you can just select it as a Django HTML. So how it is coming DJ here. If it's not coming also no problem for the symbol just you can just select again you need to just see the uh, stuffs here so where here you need to see the stuff like uh, where you are getting something like you where the thing is you are getting the sorry what we can call it as here is like uh, which is the extension it is loading when you are typing the code you can just uh, see it from here at the django template so if i just select here i can just i have a number of things installed it might some of the things might be in your laptop which is auto auto installed so you can select it as is from the snippets you can just select it as a html like this okay either if you don't want to select html even if you have django html django template you can select it as a django html also it's your choice so now after selecting it press shift and exclamatory and enter it so once i enter i'm getting a default uh, page here so a default html code i'm getting so what is the code i'm getting document type is a html the language is used as english language and we have a header part and we have a body part so inside the header whatever the in the tab whatever the inside the tab whatever we will be seeing it so if I, what i am seeing here in the tab the installed work successfully so this is coming from where header part so whatever the things you are adding here that will come from the header and what are the things you are seeing inside inside the body that is coming inside your body part okay and we have a meta tags so neglect this one it is just they are saying the what is the view size of it and uh, we have a title name here i can change the title name so i'll just change the title name to i'll just tell the python uh, program so i'll just tell python programs something the title name i'm just giving as a python programs uh, inside my title name so once i create it, the title so i'll add something inside the body so i'll just tell help h1 tag i'll just tell hello so i'll just tell hey welcome to my website something i'm saying okay hey welcome to my website so now i want to display this particular stuff here i want to display this particular stuff inside the here here i need to display the stuff like hey welcome to my website i want to display i want to remove this default application now i want to render the particular html file from the application which i have created now so once i created it so i created a html file now, now i need to just add the routing path so just i want to add the routing part so i'll just come back to my views.pure file so here i'll write one function so what is the function to create a function inside the python we'll be using a function keyword name dev so i'll just create a function name index so i'll just create index name uh, index it will take what takes the first argument as a req request and it will return something what it will return i'll just I'll return render so it will return it will take first argument as a request and it will return the html file so what is the html file name we have created it as a index.html file i want to return this index.html file whenever this particular function runs over here so now i'll save it here now i need to add a url part to it so we have this one so it is nothing but it is a local host 
when i am loading this page i want to run this particular function the function name is index function what it does means it will just return the index.html file so index.html file automatically our python will look into the template folder and it will return this particular page as a output now to add a url path i need to do little configuration so i need to go inside my project urls.pyo file so i'll just click on to the include i'll just uh, import a include button so i'll say whenever i get whenever there is a path for the local host so whenever there is a path path for the local host so whenever i just mention empty with a single quotes or a double quotes whenever i use the empty string that you need to think like i am redirecting to where i am redirecting to this particular url so if there is a slash about page it will be a slash about if there is a nothing just this page means it will be like this okay so that is nothing but with empty even you can just use like this also even you can just use as just a slash or you can just keep it as an empty so when i am keeping as empty you need to think like i am redirecting to this particular url so i'll say whenever i get this kind of url whenever i get a path for the url i need to include so i need to include what i need to include my applications file so what is the application file I'll just a app dot urls so i'll just make it as a apps dot urls so that means whenever whenever i need to redirect to the home page i want to include the application my applications urls dot python file so i need to create a urls file inside my application i click on to the app i click on to the first uh, logo new file i'll make create a new file that is urls dot py file so i'll be so i need to uh, i have spelled it wrong so i'll just tell urls dot py file okay so i have created a urls dot py file here so after i create a urls dot py file now django will look onto this app urls so we are including the particular path where first inside the child project that is urls so once i add the path django will look from where it will go from here to here django will jump from this urls to applications url so now i'll just paste same thing whatever i have copied and remove this particular stuff now i'll remove this path also so now again i'll add the url pattern so now i need to run this index function right so before running the index function i need to import these views all functions i need to import it so i'll say at first thing i'll just tell from my application from the application folder i want to import the views so i want to import these views python file so i'm just telling if i want to import any of the files you can write this kind of syntax like from the folder which is the file you want to import it so it is about the syntax so once i know i have imported the view so again i'll just say the path so what is the path i'll say whenever i get a request for a local host that is a with the string with nothing i need to run the function i want to go to the views function dot i want to run the functions from the views which which function you need to run i need to run the index function i'll just copy the index function i'll just paste it like this and i'll pass one more uh, optional attribute that means name is equal to index that means exact the function name should be index itself it should not be any other name so i'm just using as a exactly to match with the exact url so i'm using like index so i'll just save this much so once i save if i refresh the page you can you will be seeing here so you can say i'm getting the site is cannot be that means some error has been came inside my terminal to see the error i need to open this particular terminal so here if i just go to the python file so what is the error i'm getting no module name that is app.urls so i'm getting like this so i'll just save everything now so once i save all so my server will get restart again if it's not restart you can just press ctrl c now i can just run python manage.py run server so once i run this server you can see the server is automatic started again so now come back here if i refresh the page you can see hey welcome to my website so like this i can redirect the particular pages so this is how the things works now i'll now you'll get clear so suppose now i want to render to the about page so i want to create two more function the function is what i want to create a contact page and i want to create a about page so whenever there is a slash contact it should run the views dot contact function so con tact and where exactly the function name should be what contact okay so then for the about same thing i'll just do it for here as well as here so whenever there is a function for the about it should run the particular function name that is about function and the function name should be about i need to put a comma here put a comma at the end okay i'll save now 
So once I say, now I need to write a function for it. So inside my views, I need to run the, I need to write a function. So I'll say, I need to copy same thing like this. Whatever the things I have, I need to copy two times. So first is what? First, I need to write it for the about function. So whenever there is a about function, the URL request comes, this function will run. That is, it will return the about.html. Whenever there is a URL come for the contact, it will run the views.contact function where the function name is contact. I'll just copy this contact function and I'll just create a one more new function by the keyword dev and it will return what? It will return the contact.html file. So I'll just save everything. So once I save everything, if I see, if I, if I am at the home page, it is going. If I just go to the slash, so, slash contact. So if I just go to the slash contact, you can see I am getting an error. What is error? Error is like contact.html is not found. That means what? The contact.html is not found. It is saying us true. So because we don't have any folder inside my templates with the name contact.html. Now I need to create a file that is a contact dot dot html file. I will just create like html. Okay, so here I'll just say something. I'll just tell h1 tag. I'll just mention as a uh, contact c o n t a c contact page. Okay, so now again I need to create one more file that is what about dot html. So about dot html file I'll create where inside my template folder. So here I'll just create the h1 tag. I'll just make it as about page. So I'll just say this much. So now once I save, if I refresh now you can see I'm going to the contact page. So if I go back, I'm going to the home page. Now if I want to go to the about page, I'll just give it as a slash about enter. You can see for this particular URL, it is going to where it is going to the about page. If I just want to go to the home page, I can come back to my home page. Okay. So like this, we can create a project, create an application and we can uh, create a HTML files in this manner and we can render the particular function for a HTML page. So that is it is all over back end part and we have the front end part is all about inside our HTML. So we have a database SQL 3. <coughs> so which is Django is defaultly providing is DB SQL 3. If I click on to the settings, so see here inside my settings. So we have a database connectivity written here. So what where it is written? It is written here. Database connectivity is written over here. That is the data set engine is being used as a DB SQL 3. And you can see as a base directory, see, see DB, DB SQL 3 has been used. Okay. So the connection has been written defaultly inside our uh, settings. So like this, all the things works. Understood guys, till here, any doubts? If you have, you can ask me. How to create any, while creating a project app as well as rendering this uh, website. Any doubts? <coughs> so I can just, uh, I have the two screens over here. I can see in one screen, like how many are uh, there, all those things. So you can just comment it over here. So if you want to see with your screen, so you can see, I can drag it from here, from that particular screen to here okay so any doubts till here <laughs> okay so <laughs> like this will be there so in next class we'll start with the website so now if you want any program to so we already we know in my in engineering and all what we did we just uh, saw the output here itself, right? Mm -hmm. We saw the, all the output here, right? Understood? We saw all the output here itself, right? Inside the terminal. So we can see the output here also in our web browser. Okay. So tell me from your side, which program you want to see the output at the browser rather than seeing in the terminal. You should take the input from here itself and you need to display the, we need to display the output here itself. So which program? do you want me to do any program you can just suggest because I'll be giving one assignment to you. So you, you just try with that particular pro you, even you can try with your uh, laptop. Like I'll show how to show the results. So any program, so any program from your side or I only choose any program or uh, show you the example. Okay, so I'll just uh, show you one uh, particular uh, program. So I'll just uh, call, I'll just want to print any function like what I what else I can, which program I can just tell. Suppose I'll just tell some Python programs here. I don't want to type the logic and all Python program programs. 
okay so we have python programs here examples i'll just see one example here so any first program we have a number of things so we have find the lcm so find the kilometers and the number something we have and uh, now mm, okay so suppose i want to display display the multiplication table or find the particular factorial of a number so i want to write a, i want to display the output like finding the particular factorial of the number so like this will be there so program is something like this so if the number is zero it will print like this if the number is equal to equal to zero it will be like this and uh, if i want to print means it will be the, the final result will be like this and the input will be like this the input will be taken in this particular format so now what i'll do here is so so you can see it is a one uh, nice function which it has been written so it will return what it will return uh, the particular output in this format if it's equal to equal to n or it will be like this so if i want to see any easiest program rather than this so any program i can just see from here mm. print the present and odd position okay add the multiplying the matrices so suppose i want to just reverse the string so it will be very easiest the program the python program to reverse the particular string so suppose i want to run this particular uh, program so whether it is uh, like i want to return whether the particular program is uh, uh, like i want to just reverse with the reverse manner right so basically i need to do what i need to take input from the user first to take input from the user i'll just come back my index.html page i'll just take the input from here so i'll just create one form here so i want to create a form of the post request so i want to get pass the data to my backend from here i want to pass the data to my views to this function to just run the particular logic so what i'll do i'll just uh, where is it if my forms is uh, in my index.html file i created a form so here in the form what i'll do i'll just take input i'll just tell label so i'll just tell uh, inp for inp i'll just take it as a inp as input i'll just tell uh, enter the string or a number enter the string or a number so i want to just tell like this i want to show the particular program to my like this if i just come back in my here you can see if i refresh the page i'll be getting like enter the number or a string i'm getting such kind of stuff so then what i'll do i'll just take an input to take an input we have a attribute input inside my uh where inside the particular uh, html page i have an input if i type tell as a type is equal to text i'll keep type is equal to text as an input then i'll say i want what i need to uh, display something like uh, sorry no need of placeholder here whatever the user is typing whatever the user is typing here now you can see if i refresh the page i'll be getting like boss so whatever the user is typing here and once you click on to the submit button i need to store the i need to pass the data to the views so here what i'll say i need to store the data i will create one variable by name is equal to something so i'll just tell name is equal to the name it will be input so something i'll be given as an input so inp is will be the input so where whatever the user will be type in this variable the data will get stored then i'll just say okay then i'll say what i'll just say here as a name type is been taken input name is been taken so i'll just take it as a required so that means the required attribute what it does means until an analyzer won't uh, write any data it doesn't accept the form of a post request so after in this one i'll just create one button so what is what button submit so i need to create a button submit over here this will be a submit form so i'll just tell it as a i'll make it the button name as i'll tell uh reverse the input i'll just tell convert so i'll just, or else i'll just tell it as a reverse reverse the string so i'll just tell reverse i'll just tell it as a reverse output okay reverse output this will be the button name once i save this much so i'll be saying see i'll be getting here like this so i'm getting as a reverse output so we created one label we have an input box and we can just reverse when i try to click on directly reverse it is saying me please fill out the field until an analyzer won't fill it doesn't work now what i need to do here is whenever i submit it as if whenever i'm using a post request there is one csrf token it will take it as a thing so i need to pass this csrf token in this format beside the each post request form so i'll just save this much so whenever i there is action happens whenever there is a action happen i want to just run this particular program i want to just run the reverse slash pgm i want to run the reverse program action so once i save this much see whenever i try to say yes 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 and reverse input it is saying me reverse uh, verification field so if i refresh the page so i will just go back to the home page so when i give something reverse output you can see it is telling me reverse program url is not found so what i'll do 
I'll go to my URLs dot file. I will write a function for it. So what is the function name? Is this one for this particular URL request? I need to run the this particular function. So where the function name will be the reverse program. So I'll just save this file. Now Django will look onto the views reverse program function. I'll come back here. I'll just copy the same thing. Here what I need to do? I need to pass the reverse program function. So what it returns means now let it be will be render the output inside the about.html itself or else you can render the output inside the index.html or about.html is also fine so i'll just save it as a about.html file itself whenever there is an output so what i'll do so now i got the reverse program here so now see what it does means whatever the input i'll give so i'm inside the home page suppose if i want to give my name if i click on click on to the reverse program you can see it is going to the about page how it worked Whenever I click the particular submit button, reverse output button, it took the action that is a reverse program, method is equal to post, it took the value and it went to this URL that is reverse program. So Django will look onto the app URLs program, so URLs file, so it will see the path that is reverse program path. Whenever there is a reverse program, it will just went to this particular reverse program, it is just running this reverse program function, so where the function name is here. So Django will jump from URLs to views. It will search for the function name reverse program. It is just returning the about.html page without any results. So now I'll write my logic here. So I'll just write the logic here. So I'll write one if condition. So I'll just tell if the I'll just tell if the method dot request. If the method dot request is equal to is equal to when there is a post request. When there is a post request, you need to run this particular function. So what I need to do, I need to take input from the user. To take input, I'll just tell, I want to get the input. I'll just tell as a get input. So I want to just get the particular input from the user, the variable. I'll just say it as a uh, request from the particular request, from this particular request, which I'm getting it. So with this request dot method, so request dot, for request dot post, from the post request, I want to get the particular data. So I'll just tell it as a get here. So in this, I'll just say, what from which variable you need to get the data. So inside my index, we have given something name is equal to INP, where my data will get stored. So I need to pass the same INP where inside my backend in here. At this position, I need to pass the data. So from here, it will just take the data and it will just print it. So suppose if I just try to print the get input, so just I want to print the particular get input now. So once I click onto the get input, I have saved everything. Now see, whatever the input I'll be doing, it will get printed. Whatever the input I'll be passing from here, whatever the input I'll be passing from here, it I need to print the input here, where it will show in the terminal. So see, I'll just give something like, I'll just tell something my name. If I just click onto the reverse input, so I'm getting name method is not de defined. So request dot, so I need to give it as a request dot method here, not method dot request. So let's tell request dot method is whenever there is a request method is equal to post, I need to just get the input. Now I'll just go back. So I'll just enter here. So now suppose I want to display Python program. So if I just click on to the reverse output, but it returned me the output page. But if I just show you the thing what I have printed here, get input. So you see here inside my terminal, you can able to see here the Python program, whatever the data has been I passed from the input as an input, I'm just passing from here. That particular data is getting to our backend. It is getting passed. It is just passing perfectly inside my backend. That is a Python program, something. So once it is passed, now I need to check the output. Now I need to write a logic for it. So what I'll say, so what I'll do here is uh, whatever the input I am getting it, I want to reverse it. So just I want to reverse it, right? To reverse the particular string, what I'll say, I'll just uh, say output here. Output, output, output is equal to so here what i can say here is uh, i need to just sell whatever the get input data will be there so i can just use this format iphone iphone minus one this is a slicing concept of python if you don't know i don't i don't know how to tell you so it will take starting position it will take the ending position that means take full input reverse whenever i am giving at the minus one it will reverse the complete string into the reverse manner and it will store into the output here so if i just show you here as in the output also if i just see if i just print this particular output so once I'm printing this output, you will be seeing in the terminal. If I just click on to the reverse output, see the output over here. So see here, first to what was the Python program was there. And here it is getting mark that is something I'm getting like this I'm getting. 
So that means the completely the string is got completely reversed here. So what all the the particular reversing whatever the input I am passing it, it is reversing it. So with this particular data, okay. So even we can check the palindrome or manner, not. So with the if the get input is equal to equal to output, so what it will be? It will be the palindrome program. If it's not equal, it will be a non palindrome program. Even you can display. So as now we are just uh, so, uh, so I am just showing you the reverse of how to reverse a program, like how to reverse the complete given string. So with this, I am just writing this logic. So what I'll do, I just pass, I need to pass the particular data. I need to pass the input also. I need to pass the output. I need to show the output where I need to show the output inside my about page. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll pass the particular data inside the dictionary. So I'll just tell my dict. So my dict is equal to, so or else I'll just say it as something context. Context is equal to, so as a dictionary I'll pass. So whatever the get input will be there so let's tell it as a get um, input INP UT input I want to pass it as a get input like this then I'll put a comma and I'll say whatever the output is there OUT output for the output I'm just passing a key value pair we call it as this is the key this is the value so for the output I will just pass as a value like this okay now what I'll do I'll pass this context in my HTML form I'll pass this to a particular context inside the HTML form. So I'll just save it. So once I save this much, now I want to just get this particular output instead now. So what I'll say here is uh, in my about.html page, the data will pass where it will just pass as a context to the about.html page. So it goes to the about.html page. Here it will be there. I'll just make it as a output. I'll just make it as one now. Uh, uh, H2 tag. So let's tell. Uh, output uh, output of program is something it will be so here I'll just give it as a h4 tag so I'll just give it as a h4 tag I'll just fill as an input so input is this much and same as it is I'll just say the output will be this much okay so input is this and output is this one so I need to password as a context I'm passing it to get the input I'll just copy this input I'll just paste it over here so I'm, whenever I'm getting the input data I need to just pass like this as a get input so here whatever the output will be there it will show here as a output I'll just show in this format okay so I'll just save like this if I just save all now see if I try to click on to here you can see I'm getting in this format so I'm getting an output of the program is so same thing I'm getting input as well as output so for this one I need to give it in the double quotes I guess yeah in this double for in a double thing I'll just give that means I am passing the variable of the context so I'll just save like this so I'll just go back to here program suppose I want to give the I want to reverse the string I want to just reverse the, like a uh, I'll just apple uh, banana something like this if I click on to the reverse you can see the particular input is being given like this and whatever the output reverse of this particular string is this one so I am getting a proper output so if I want to uh, reverse anything i want to reverse one two three four five six seven eight nine if i click on to the reverse you can see the input is given as a one two three four five six seven eight nine and the output is this particular thing so like this we can see that we can take the input from the front end part and we can pass it to our back end and we can just take a url for it we can create a url for it and we can run one particular function for it so all our python logic will be writing inside the function and whatever the output will be there as a dictionary will be passing to the html files and we can easily see the output inside our front end part okay so the main objective of saying is this one just i wanted to, to explain the url path and the routing so how the your routing will be done how the urls will be created how the views will be created and how the output will be rendering to the index.html page so this was the main uh, thing which i wanted to show you with this particular program understood guys any doubts if you have you can ask me this just keep it as a practical just don't say it uh, simply just uh, don't listen when, when i'm asking something you just reply for that any doubts with this any doubts guys okay fine uh, so any doubt Binot and uh, Ashita, Sushmita, Dhanlakshmi, Anish
So Anish, if you remove H, it will be my name. Then uh, Shisha Shaili, Shisha Prabhu, any doubts? And are you getting it? Are you getting the how the thing concepts? At least it's something is going right. Understand like understanding right. You're getting any idea? Okay, fine then. So I think uh, this is one uh, class is enough for the Django. So next class we'll start building a website. Directly I will introduce with the Bootstrap. So we'll see how the Bootstrap components can load inside our website. We we'll start building the authentication system and we'll work with the backend part. Okay. So I'll share this uh, today's class uh, recordings inside your uh, in, uh, like in that particular drive. In same drive I'll upload it and I will share you the link. And uh, one more thing is uh, one thing I forgot. just try with your different different programs. We'll take any program from the Google. Just see what is the input you need to pass. Pass in that in that particular fashion. Create inputs in the front end. Get the output inside your views in this fashion and just try to print in this format. Okay. So it will be like one good practice for you. So I'll just go inside my F drive. So any of the drive you can just create it. I'll just create a new folder here. So I'll just create a new folder with um I'll just create a Django project. So I'll be giving the particular uh, folder name as Django project and this particular folder I'll just open inside the Visual Studio code. So this particular folder will get open inside my VS code. So in the last class I have said you about all the installations and all, all the things you need to be doing. So now I'll just click, it, click on to the new terminal as well as in the new terminal. So I'll just create a project as well as an application again. So in the last class, I have explained you how to create application as well as a project. So same thing, I'll just remind you once again. So I'll be going a little bit fast until uh, the last class, whatever I have completed till then. Okay. So here I'll just select it as a command prompt. So it's your choice, whichever you can just um, choose it. So now I need to create a project. To create a project, we have that Django admin start the particular project and you need to give the project name as anything you can give. It's your choice. So I'll just give the project name as project here. So I want to just create the project name as project. So once I click on uh, run this particular uh, command, so you can see the empty folder will get changed into the on um, some files will get added over here along with the project directly. Okay. So let's wait to create it. <coughs> Okay, I'll just uh, delete this particular thing. So I think it got uh, so I'll just cancel it. So now I'll just click on to the new terminal again. So let's wait. Uh, it take a little bit time. If I just select it as command prompt again, so it has been selected. So this particular folder is, uh, we don't have anything with this folder. So you can see we have the empty folder here. So now we need to run this particular command. So what is the command? Django admin start project. And you need to give the project name as anything. I'll just give it as a project itself. Okay, once I enter this command, you can see the project is got created here. And all the particular files got created. And now we need to go inside the CD project. So then I need to create an application. To create application, we have a command python manage.py start the application and you need to give the application name as anything. I'll be giving as the app itself. So once I created here, so you can see the app folder got created. So now what I'll do, I'll just create a urls dot python file inside my application. So what all the thing is that other day I have said, you need to go into inside your setting. First, you need to initialize your application which you have created. So here I need to initialize it. So at the 40th line so i'll just give it as an app and i'll just put a comma and i'll just save it so after saving it so you can see migration folder got created so then what i'll do i will create one folder so what is the folder name here i'll create the folder name i'll just give it as a templates so inside the templates i need to put all my html files that is all my front end uh, files i need to put it inside a folder that is templates 
So inside the templates, I'll just create one more file. That is, I'll just make it as a index.html file. Okay. So here I'll just uh, use a boiler template of HTML. So here I'll just give it the title name as O. Oh, I'll just tell in the H1 tag. I'll just tell welcome to home page. So I'll just say something welcome to home page. So now I want to run this particular HTML file. I need to render this HTML file using Django in my front end part. So now I need to do the back end configuration. So as I register inside my settings, same as it is, I have created a template folder. I need to say inside the templates directory, I have created a template. So I'll just create the template folder over here. I'll just mention the folder name, T-E-M-P-L-A-T-S templates. So once I save, then I need to go inside my URLs. So here I need to import the include part. So after including it, I need to add the particular new path of it. I'll just say whenever I get the local host of IP address, that is 127.0 port number 8000, I need to just include my applications URL, app app.urls. Okay, so I'll just save this much. So it will just take the URL from here, Django will jump from here to apps urls.pure file. So it will jump to here. So I'll just paste all the things, so whatever I have copied. So I'll just remove the upper thing which I have uh, no need. So I need to import this path uh, module from the django.urls. So now I'll just add the configuration. So what will be the configuration? This thing. Whenever I get this kind of request for my local host, for my website, I need to run the particular some function. I need to run one particular function. So what will be the function? I need to create a function here. I'll just create a function that is an index which takes a request and which returns the particular HTML. Return render. First argument you need to pass it as a request. Then second argument you need to say which is the HTML file you need to render it. The HTML file I want to render it is index.html file. So I'll just save it. So once I save all the files, I'll just save everything from here. So once I save, I'll go to the URLs. Now I'll import the particular views. So I'll just say from the application, from my app, I need to import what? I need to import the views so as i import the views i need to run the function which is the function the index function i need to run so i'll just copy this function name so i'll just say whenever i get the request of a ip address of the home i need to run this particular index function where the function exact function name should be what index so this is what the thing we have done in the last class <coughs> so now that's all the configuration now i need to just run the server to run the server i need to run the command python manage dot py run server so this is the command you need to run. It is a python manage.py run server. So once I run this function, so you can see if I just uh, open, if I just press control line, click onto this link. So once I open this particular link, you can see the particular home page is visible. So inside our screen, you can see here the home page is getting visible. That is a uh, welcome to home page. I am getting it right. So then, so once you have, uh, once you are getting this kind of uh, home page, welcome to the screen. Sorry, welcome to the home page. Now you can see our Django project has been working fine. <coughs> okay. So till here we have done in the last class, right? So any doubts, any, any doubts still here? So I just went first because I have completed these stuff in my last class. Now we will be continuing with the same project itself. So until the, until the end of the session. <coughs> any doubts? So I want you to interact. Okay. So I don't like this type of slide. So when I'm asking something, you need to reply. Any doubts still here? Okay. <clears throat> so I have the one more screen. I can just see the comments, whatever you have comment. Nishita is saying no doubts. What about others? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, fine. So now I need to integrate the bootstrap now. So let me introduce with the bootstrap. So I'll just go to this get bootstrap.com. So we have a website that is get bootstrap.com where uh, I can get the code and I can use it for the front end part. So even we'll be looking with the React JS also with the same thing. So now let's understand what is the bootstrap. So here if I click on to the docs, so now you can see the latest uh, bootstrap is game that is a uh, bootstrap 5.01. So anyone uh, knew about this bootstrap who are listening? So have you ever tried with bootstrap any day?
Just reply yes or no. Have you tried with Bootstrap? Any anyone? Okay, bootstrap four you have been used. Okay, fine. See, bootstrap four and bootstrap everything is same. Nothing uh, is uh, more different. But uh, in bootstrap five they have removed the jQuery. Uh, everything uh, they have been used like uh, like everything the JavaScript they have been used over here. And uh, they have not uh, they have removed the jQuery part and rest all the things are same itself. So in the bootstrap, what is the bootstrap means? Uh, it is a CSS framework. I said in the starting introduction class. So bootstrap is uh, designed for such developers who don't want to uh, think more about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Just uh, they want to, if they want to build the particular front end part, they can easily go with this bootstrap for the front end and they can uh, just uh, focus on the back end technology. So, here what they are saying if you want to use our bootstrap uh, community, I need to use this starter template. So, in the starter template, what else we have? We have a link here, we have a CSS link. So, this is a link where I can get the particular CSS okay so and uh, and we have some of the script files over here from this particular CDN link of the script where I can easily what I can just easily get the uh, what I can say the particular uh, script things like if any whenever there is see we have a components here so we have a component we have a number of buttons so when I'm clicking something some uh, action is going to perform that action will be coming from where the actions will come from the particular uh, scripts okay there is nothing but it. some javascript will be running it so that particular code will be loaded from this particular cdn link and the css like color rings margins and uh, what all let it be any see any component from the bootstrap whichever has the class name that particular uh, class uh, code the particular css will load for it so that css will load from this particular link itself okay so you need to have an active internet to use this bootstrap so when you are using the bootstrap you need to use the uh, your internet should be on over here okay i have connected with the wi-fi so you need to on your uh, wi-fi when you are using it if you just copy from there and without internet if you run, run the project the css uh, files won't be get rolled okay so now where i need to paste that one whichever i have copied so i'll just remove everything from here so here i will be using it so see this is the thing so this is what this is a bootstrap thing so where uh, we have a html file so normally it is just a html boiler template but we have a links here so this is a link which is being used where this is a link coming from the bootstrap css that is a cdn link if i just open this uh, file if i see if i just copy from href what all the href is there if i just copy if i just open inside a new tab see over we have a css written over here a number of css file is been written here so that means uh, the CSS of uh, the bootstrap has been written with this particular one file. Okay, that is a bootstrap uh, min.css. So where I can everything they have defined. Like when I'm using a auto margin, what should happen? When I'm using a left uh, text center, what should happen? All the CSS has been written here. So this particular code will load it inside my HTML page. Okay, from here. From here I can just uh, use uh, make use of it. And same for the SRC, whatever is there inside the SRC. For the script even you can see the script uh, code written over with this particular link so i just save this file if i just press ctrl s you can see if i refresh the page now i'm getting hello world over here that means whatever the thing is written inside the body so that will be get printed okay that's that is that is that is just uh, getting uh, loaded over here so now let's uh, create one website so we'll create we'll focus on creating a website so where uh, the authentication system should be there and uh, we'll see what else but all, all the things uh, can be used and uh, <coughs> and i want to display i want to just to give you the back end how it works like we see the crud functionality we'll be seeing it then along with that uh, we'll be seeing what uh, how to create api keys and uh, how authentication system all those things we'll be seeing now so now first let, let's set up the particular uh, website so what i'll say here is Title. So I need to give the title. Whatever you want, you can just give the title. So I'll just give the particular title name as uh, anything you can just give. So I'll give the title as uh, I'll just tell as a matter. I'll just tell mastermind. Okay, mastermind website. Something I can give it here. <clears throat> so I'll just give it as uh, the title name as this one. So here I'll just remove the header tag. So I'll just save it. 
So now coming back to the website. So if I refresh it, so you can see I'm getting a mastermind. The title name is been changed. Where I have been now, and I'm just uh, creating like that. So then come back to the bootstrap. So as we are integrating the bootstrap in the website, so what do we need to do? First, in any website, we will be having what? We'll be having a navbar. So I'll be having a navbar in any website. So let's get any navbar from here. So I'll just get click onto the navbar here sections in my component. So here we have a number of uh, navbar here. You can see we have a navbar here. The image is getting from here. So if you want this kind of navbar, you can just copy like this. So now let's copy the navbar where I can have a number of functionalities. So now if I just uh, see which navbar I can just take it. So you can see we have this kind of navbar. I want something like this. Some navbar should be there inside our website. So what else? What I can do here is I think uh, here somewhere it might be at the starting. So here see we have the this kind of navbar. If I want to get this kind of navbar, I need to use this uh, below code. So I'll just explain you what is the code. I just copy from here. Come back to the code. So as below, below the body, you need to add the code. So inside below the body, I need to add the code. I'll just add this code over here. So I'll just save it. So once I save, so we we'll see here. If I just refresh the page, you can see the navbar is coming over here. That means the navbar is loaded here. That means all the CSS, everything is working fine. So how I am getting? I have not defined any color for the search button. I have not said this uh, like this should uh, come the navbar, and background color should be gray. I have not said. So how it is coming? So it is coming from the CDN link that before which I have shown you from this href code the CSS is written by the bootstrap that is loaded inside our website okay so that is what has been visible over here now I can modify according to my requirements according to my requirements I can modify this uh, stuff here so what I will do here is so we have the navbar written here so see we have a navbar class so this class everything wherever there is a classes Wherever there is a classes, you need to think what you need to think the CSS is written for it that is loading from the bootstrap. Okay, so the CSS is written for it and it is loading from the bootstrap. The thing that, you, that is the only thing you need to understand here in the classes. So, without classes, it is a HTML, with classes, it is included with the HTML. Okay, HTML plus CSS is equal to what that is equal to wherever there is a class name written. If something the class has been used in any tags. So division is a tag and navbar is one tag and also a ul is one tag so inside any tag if there is a class you need to think css is written for that particular tag if there is a no class there is simple normally a one html there is a html uh, syntax okay so everything is html syntax but including classes if there is a class with that along with the html the css is written for it that is the only one thing so we have a navbar so where they have uh, given navbar light and the background is equal to light so if i just go to the buttons so see they have given the in the bootstrap you have a number of colors so for primary we have blue color secondary this is gray color and a light color which is being used with this navbar so you can see the light is being used as a bg bg is nothing but a background and navbar is light so they have used a light light so if there is a light that means the light color is being used here if I want to get a dark color, that is a red, red color, I can use what? I can just use the danger color here. So I'll just rechange. If I just change it to uh, background is equal to danger. So if I just make like this, D A N G E R danger. If I just save it for the danger, if I just come back and refresh, you can see the background color is changed to red color. That means it is working. So like this, uh, the things works. Okay. So any day when we are creating a website, we need to start first we need to get the requirements from the clients so when i'm creating any website what all the things we need to do first we need to get the requirements from the client like what all the things uh, the clients need like whether he needs uh, <coughs> like we need to like whether the client uh, first we will be taking a requirement from the clients so if you work with any projects in the company later uh, after you get play so you'll be having first you'll be having a training part so training things will be going on so in all the training they will be teaching what they will be teaching you based on your uh, work like if you are uh, going as a developer uh, the developer thinks whatever the technologies they want they will be teaching you and uh, if uh, any other things like networking the networking technologies they will be teaching you like that but everything uh, it won't be like this like as you go they will give you the project and uh, say you to do it won't be like that first you need to 
take a training from the persons like from the whichever the company is there and training will be very this one so like you cannot expect uh, any more things from the them like uh, as my experience so no one is going to teach you properly so they might give you some code like uh, files or anything like they will be giving you some uh, channel links or any platform you can just learn so like that they will be telling it but they will be teaching you that uh, but not in the depth so just you can understand what uh, they are saying it but you cannot code it whatever according to them so for that you need to um, create you need to just uh, look for the outsourcing for learning purpose okay so it's upon you so before that only i'll be saying you uh, don't wait for that time so before that have some knowledge in all the technologies so like uh, have some knowledge so where you can uh, like when you are going to the company you need to understand like uh, if they say you to learn this one and they'll assign you the task to do it after uh, learning it so the things which they are going to teach you with that you cannot complete the tasks which is uh, given for you so for that you need to have the prior knowledge so for that particular knowledge you need to work hard before uh, like in the college time itself okay so it is one thing so first any website when you are going to create it you need to first understand what is the requirements of them so what all the functionalities they want so like uh, if the if the if the particular client says i want a website so where uh, i can uh, have the authentication system like user can log in and user can sign in and even user can uh, sign up the particular user can uh, log out from the particular session and even you can just say suppose i want to create one news channel website so i will be i want to upload the daily news so what are the news will be there i want to upload it inside one blog section so if they want to create you say you to if they say you to create a blog page you, you should be able to create a blog page and uh, and uh, said so like this you will be taking a requirement from the clients and you will be adding that all the integrations uh, inside your website and one website if they say you to create you won't be uh, handling it like per person you will be having uh, many people in the team so each one will be assigned to do a different task suppose uh, they are in the other team so something like we are 11 now uh, 10 people are there now so in the 10 people we want to create a website so we'll be giving uh, different different tasks to different different person i might say that uh, nishchita to just create a login page and sign up page only the front end part and the uh, ss uh, prabhu will be take caring of back end and uh, shisha shaili will be take caring of the database like how to creating all those things and anish will be taking care of uh, creating a api key like that so that things all will happen now uh, when you are uh, creating a website so you need to know all those things so i am not saying you to become a expert in that just you need to know like how the things works and you should be able to understand the requirements so now in this particular website let's uh, create the let's, let's add up some of the functionalities now what i'll doing is i'll be saying you how about the authentication part so i'll just uh, see like first i'll be uh, saying you how to minimize the code how to uh make your website uh, more uh, what you can say uh like rel reliable i want to make my website reliable that i don't want uh, the things like uh, should be reused i'll be using a concept of uh, what there is a ninja technique so something there is a ninja technique so uh, in uh, websites so what is the technique means suppose you see if i just go to this website <coughs> see if i go back the navbar is there same as it is if i want to go to the any other page if i want to go to the collapse button you can see i have a navbar written here if i want to go to the icons see it is just opening even the navbar is been there here itself navbar is there and uh, even if i just go to the documentation the navbar is been there here itself even if i go to the home page the navbar is there here something what uh, we can notice from here is so what you can notice from here anyone so what you can uh, say with this so see if i just go to this page something is constant if when if i just go to this page something is constant here so only the component is getting changed not the complete uh, website structure so structure is same itself just whatever there below the navbar is getting changed right so now for that one suppose if i just uh, show you with one example so that now we want something like we have a website so where we can just uh, make it as a uh, something i'll just say for the website and the anchor name whatever the website name is there i'll just give it something like ERK. so i'll just give any initial over here so here i'll want to have a home page here i want to have a home page fine i want a home page and what else i'll do is we have a something link so i don't want to have a link i'll just make it as a about page so i'll just make it as a about page so i'll just say 
So along with the about page, I need to have one contact page. So I'll just make it as a contact page. Okay. So we think like we, we have this much and we don't want the disabled from the li to li, I'll be removing it. So what is ul? ul is an unordered list of the HTML. li is a list tag and a is an anchor tag. So a is an anchor tag. So anchor tag is used whenever you are type, whenever you are clicking onto that particular content, it should move from one page to another page. So to work with that particular functionality, recruiting purpose, we will be using anchor tags over here. Okay, that is called like something anchor tags, where we have href as an important attribute with the anchor tag. So wherever, if I just say here as a slash, so it will go to the home page. If I say as a slash about, it will go to the slash about means it will go to the about page. If I just say slash contact, it will go to the slash contact page. So we have anchor tag home page. Whenever I try to click on the about page, it should go where? It should go to the slash about page. And if I try to click on to the contact, it should go to the where? It should go to the slash contact page. Okay, so now we have this much thing. So then I'll say the napper, whatever the napper is there, make it dark color. I want a black color to be the navbar. So even the background color, BG. So I'll just make it as a dark color here. So I'll just save it. So once I save here, if I just come back my into my refresh, my refresh, you can see. The color has been changed to black color. So now we have a home page and we have a about page. If I try to click onto the about page, you can see here uh, we are getting page not found. Okay, we are getting page not found. That means we have a only two URL. We have admin URL and we have a name is equal to index URL. That means in this particular URLs.po file, we have admin credentials. I can go to the administration page. Then we have what path page. That is nothing but just a app URLs. So inside my app URLs, we have only one URL that is by the name index. We don't have any other index. So it is giving me the error. The page is not getting found. That is a 404 error. I am getting it. If I try to click onto the contact, same thing I am getting it here. Like this. Now, see what I want to show you for the Jinja technique. So what I want here is I want to create two more paths. This I have shown you in the previous class. You need to put a comma over here. So here, whenever I try to go to the about page, it should go to the function that is about function should run where the function name should be about and uh, we have start about function where the function name should be about so whenever i try to click on to the one more thing suppose i want to go for the contact right so we have a contact url whenever the contact url request comes it should run to the contact so it should uh, it should just uh, run this particular contact function where the function name will be what function name will be contact so now I need to write a function for this one, for this path as well as this particular path, I need to write a function now. I'll just go back to the views, so I'll just copy the same thing, one, two, okay. So let's copy the same thing below. First one will dot for the about, I'll be writing a function. Whenever there is a about page, about.html page should load. And whenever there is a contact page, contact. So whenever there is a contact page, the contact.html page should load. Contact.html page should load. Okay, so now everything is working now. Now if I just come back to the home page, now if I try to click on to the about page, I'll be getting different error. So what is the error? Template does not exist, that is slash about. So it means it went to the slash about URL path. It went to this particular about URL. It run the particular function of the about. So that is a about function. It is written in the about.html page, but in my template folder, there is no about.html page. You can see there is no, so it is returning as the error. There is no about.html saying it. So now I need to create what? I need to create a about.html page. So let's create a about.html page. Okay, so now what I need to do? So now see, if I want to, now I want to do it for same for the contact also. I'll just make it as a contact.html page. About.html page and contact.html page. So there is empty now. So we don't have anything. So now see, if I just come back to my refresh, I am be getting an empty page here. So you can say I am having an empty. If I go back, so I'll be having in the home page. If I just click on to the home, it will be in the home page. If I try to click on to the contact, it is an empty page. Now, same like this. If I am going to here in the document, we have a nav bar. If I go to the example, we have a nav bar. If we go into the icon, we have a nav bar. Okay, so now what? See, if I want to just load the pages what i need to do i need to whatever there is an index.html page is there i need to copy everything so whatever the thing is there inside the index.html i need to copy and i need to paste it in the contact and i need to paste it in the about.html so i'll just save it here so once i save now see 
Now the same page will be either. So if I see, if I just go back to the Chrome, if I am in the home page, you can see I am getting a home here. If I just go to the about page, you can see the slash about is there. Even the about page is there, the particular navbar is there. And if I go to the contact, you can see it is going to the slash contact URL and same page has been there. So how will we get to know I am in the contact or not? So I need to go to the about.html page. So now if I just want to go to the about.html page, so I'll just change the title name to about here. So I'll just make the particular title name to about and after the navbar, after the navbar, I want to create one h1 tag, I'll just say about page. Okay, so I'll just say it like this. So now coming back to the contact, same I'll just change the title name to contact. So after the navbar, as the slash nav ends, and we'll just use a h1 tag, header tags. So I want to just display contact page. I just save like this. So once I save, you need to do control S. Whenever you do changes with the, any of the files, you need to just press control S. Save all the things and you can see the results here. If I just come back to the home page, I'm in the home page. If I go to the about, you can see it is returning me the about page. When I'm going to the contact page, it is returning me the contact page. Okay. So now the important thing is what? Imagine I want to remove this disabled button. I want to remove this disabled button. So in all the pages, I need to remove it. So to remove this one, suppose if I just go to the index here, index.html page, if I remove this li to li tag, so wherever there is a li to li, if I just remove it, so once I remove, if I just come back and refresh, even if I remove in my index page, it is not removed inside my contact page because each page has its own HTML code. That is what the thing is happening. If I just go back to the home page, you can see the disabled has been removed. If you go to the content, it is there. If we in the about, even it is there here. So I don't want like this now. Suppose in future, you have around uh, 20 to 25 HTML pages. If you are doing a little change in any one HTML, like if you are doing any change inside the navbar, if you are doing, suppose you are changing about to about test. So you need to do with all 30 HTML files. If there is a 30 HTML files in my templates, if you are changing one changes, if you are doing it, you need to do that all the changes were in the all the other HTML files. You need to do that particular changes. So what is there? That is uh, like it is demerit. It is like uh, time is getting waste here. And along with that, it is not uh, efficiency. The code efficiency is not there. So I don't want like this to happen. Suppose if I'm, I'll, I want, if I want, if I'm just removing in one page, in each and every page, the particular thing should get removed. And I don't want to use navbar everywhere. I don't want this navbar to get used everywhere in my all HTML pages. The code is more over here. So the code re reusability concept has been not used. Now that is what in the like according to the data structure and all, we need to the whatever the code is there, we need should not repeat. We should not repeat ourselves. Okay, that is a do not repeat yourself. So what is there is a we call something like DRY. So D R Y try concept. So what is mean by try? Do not repeat yourself. That means it is not like you should not repeat yourself. It is like you should not repeat the code again and again. If there is the code, you need to try to use the particular code. So now, but to overcome that one, we have a Jinja techniques in Django. So Jinja techniques, what it does means, whatever the things we needed, like uh, things, whatever the thing I need is, here is uh, suppose I need to have the navbar here. I need to have navbar compulsory in all the pages. And I need to have what? I need to have this uh, CSS template. That is a started template. It is nothing but the links and the scripts should be there in all the HTML pages. So I can use the bootstrap component so that I can use the badges. I can use the navbar. If there is a forms, I can just use it. And I can just use the images, forms, everything I can just use. So these are all the mandatory thing. And when I'm going from this page, to this page what all the things is getting changed so whatever is below the navbar is there that is getting changed and the title is getting changed right the title is getting changed and what all the things is below the navbar only that particular thing is getting changed so rest all the things is same here so now what i'll do here is i'll just reduce the port from here so what i'll do i'll just see what i'll be doing it i'll apply the jinja techniques so i'll just create one base.html file BASE base dot HTML file. This will be the basic HTML file of them. So that which I'll be in, include extending in all their HTML file. 
So what I'll do, I'll just copy everything from the index and I'll just paste it over here. Okay. So now I'll delete everything from here. I don't want, and I'll delete everything from the contact page. I don't want, and in the about page also, I'm just removing. I'll just save everything. So now in my base.html page, I have the code. Rest all the files are empty. So I've removed everything. Now, since if I just come and refresh also, it will be empty, blank page. If I go to the home page also, it is a blank page over here. So now see what I'll do. So in my base.html page, I'll add some of the properties now. So what will be there? I'll just remove these comment lines. So whatever is not visible to you in the this thing, it is a, if I just press control slash, it is a comment. Control slash is used for what? Commenting the uh, lines. So just uh, press control slash to comment the line. So now I don't want that thing. So along with that, I need to do some of the changes. So what are the changes? I'll just save everything. So I'll say here, the particular title will get changed in each and every HTML page. So I'll just remove this one. So what I'll do here is in that place of a title, I will create one variable. That is the one tag I will create. That particular tag I'll just extract in other HTML file. I'll give the value to it. So here I'll just give the particular tag name as I'll just give the uh, particular ta tag name as uh, what else I can give. I'll just take it as a contact. I'll just tell as a block B L O C K block. So I'll just create one block. So the block name is what here. I'll just make the block name as title. So this particular block name is a title. So I can extract this particular variable in other HTML pages and I can just dump the value here. Any value I can dump it. So I'll just say like this along with that after the navbar, each and every HTML will be having some content. So that particular content, I'll just create one more block. I'll just create a block name as block body. So this will be the block body here. So block body. So whatever I'll be adding inside this variable from other HTML file, that code will be just dump here. So whatever the code I'll be adding by using this tag in other HTML files, that will be get dumped over here. So all these two things I need to change first now. So I'll just save everything. So I have a block title and I have the block body. So rest all the things should get loaded in other HTML, in all the HTML files. So now what I'll do, I'll get, go just go to the index.html file. I'll just say it as an extends. So which HTML find you need to extend it. So I want to extend the base.html file so I'll just make it as a base dot HTML here. So I'll just say, so once I say only one line of code, so see, I don't have any other things here. I'll just uh, close everything from right hand side. So I don't have any file, any code inside my index. What I did, I just use this one line of code that is the extent the base dot HTML page. So once I enter this one, if I go to the home page, you can see the navbar is coming. That means the whatever the code is written inside the base dot HTML page that is loaded over in my index dot HTML page. Now see, I'm getting this page. So I have not added the complete code, even though I'm getting it. If I go to the output, it is blank now. So same thing, what I'll do, I'll just uh, put same, if I just go to the about.html, I'll just paste this much and I'll say, I'll go to the contact, I'll just say, I want to use this HTML file, I want to use this base.basic.html, I'll just save it here. So once I save, come back to your code. Now see, if I go to the about page, the navbar is there. If I go to the contact, the navbar is in there. But you can see the title has been not changed. The title is getting not changed here. So now I created something in my base.html file, which I'm loading in other file that I have given the title name as block title. So block title, if I just copy this particular block title, I'll go to the index.html page. So I'll say wherever there is a block title, I want to inject some value. So I want to inject the value. I'll just make the injecting value. That is, I'll just keep it as a home page. So I'll just tell it as a home. So once I go to the home page, you can see the title name is changed to home page. But I mean, when I'm in the about page, the title name is not got changed. It is showing the URL path of it. So now same thing. I'll just copy from here. I'll just copy from here. I'll just go to the about.html page. Here I'll say the title name should get changed to about. So the title name, whatever the title name is there, it should get changed to about page. Same thing in the contact, I'll just uh, say here, I'll just say okay, whatever the title is there, I want to just display it as a contact. So I'll just save this one. So once I just press control S, so if I go to the about, you can see the title name is got changed to about. When I'm going to the contact page, the title name is got changed to contact over here. Now you can see the routing is working fine and we have used the code reusability concept. That means from one HTML file, everything I'm extracting it and I'm importing it. 
now the question is what i want i want to add any content over here to add the content inside the block body i have given one thing like that i have given as a see after the nav bar i have given something a block body so where i can extract this variable and i can dump the particular content over here so let's copy this block body inside the index.html page i'll just say inside the block body i want to have one h2 tag i'll just say uh, home page so this is my home page so i'll just say this is my home page and this will be there if i just go to the home page you can see i'm getting as a home page whatever the thing if you are adding if you add 100 times over here if you add 100 whatever the content is there if you want 100 times even you can see if i refresh the page it has been added over here you can see all the content is been added okay so now i'll just press ctrl z so let's say so now same thing i'll just go to the contact so after the content i'll just say in my block body i want to just say this is my contact page contact page now i'll go to the about.html page so here also i will just extract the block body page so here i'll just change it to about page i'll just save it so once i save everything if i just go back to the home page you can see it is visible as a home page if i am going in the about page it is giving the about page if i am in the contact it is showing me the contact page so like this the jinja techniques can be used now if you want to create one more page suppose if you want to go to the base.html page suppose now i want to remove this one i want to remove a drop i want to just change the drop to here authentication i'll just change it to authentication or i'll just say it as a new user new user i'll just say as a new user so i'll just say user so i'll just click on to the sign up i want to just display the sign up here i'll just say here as a what else i can say i'll just say it as a login and here i'll just make it as a what are the something else is written now i'll just change it to log out this, this is one drop down if i want to add any content i'll just add the content and i need to just change the h reference part only this the two things i need to do it at the time of editing so now i'll save everything so now see if i am in the home page uh, the particular thing got changed sign up login and logout even if i go to the about page also the same thing has been there you can see whatever if i want to do any changes in my future i need to just do where i need to just do in the base.html file if i do any changes with this file all the pages will get reflected that particular change i don't need to go to all the pages and do the changes okay so this is what very one uh, most important uh, thing uh, in today's session that is jinja techniques the code reusability concept is been used so even if i am in the any other pages i can just uh, go to any of the pages from here. okay the same content will get changed in all the pages okay let's start with the session so let's uh, start building one uh, website so which uh, we can use that particular website in our resume so we'll add all the functionalities in that like all the authentication systems block pages and uh, we'll try to add payment gateways everything with that one so we'll see like uh, if anything so like uh, all the like our details everything should be added into that and if we need any day like anything like suppose uh, so nowadays uh, you people will be having a number of this one right so our replacement they need to fill a number of forms all those things so we'll create one website so where we can store all our files over there so easily you can now uh, use that particular website to retrieve the data and uh, fill the particular form and we'll see all the functionalities and i'll say you in the professional way like uh, how i'll be building the portfolio so we won't be setting everything uh, like we won't focus uh, much on the front end part so i'll say you how to get the front end uh, things from the bootstrap like how to use that particular uh, bootstrap things inside our uh, website and how to modify it and what all the things uh, we can uh, do that one we'll just see that one okay so now what we'll do here is uh, i'll just uh, go to the google chrome so inside the chrome so if i just tell here uh, bootstrap themes so i'll just get the bootstrap themes here bootstrap themes so if i just tell the bootstrap themes you can say i'll be getting like this so themes.getbootstrap.com so we have see we have like these themes so whichever you like you can just uh, use it for the front end and we can just uh, focus on the back end part and we can just uh, create one beautiful website okay and uh, so our motive is to design this website in a very professional manner along with that so these things we will be used in our resume okay? even you can put this particular website in your resume so when you can show it for any projects like that so see we have uh, like this kinds of uh, theme 
So this theme is uh, like it is all the completely dashboard. Like it is like so you can see this is the based on the dashboards. So we no need to design any dashboards now. So you can see we have like this one. So they are given as a dollar five fourteen in rupees. Like we need to purchase uh, these themes and all. So we cannot uh, purchase these themes. So I don't want to purchase. So I'll get the particular free themes. So we have the particular uh, theme series. We call something like a uh, uh, free. Um, so something was there that is theme forest something. Just a second. Uh, bootstrap free template. Okay. So if I just tell like this. So you can see bootstrap date mod uh, made com. We have the dream features. So you can see we have here also the particular uh, templates. I can get it for free. So we'll see which is uh, which uh, template I can get it for free, and I'll be using for the uh, for the resume. You can see these all the free, see all the free Bootstrap templates. So whichever you like, you can just download. So I'll integrate this particular uh, theme inside our uh, front end part so in our Django for the back end, and we'll remove all the unnecessary things and we'll uh, try to modify that particular stuff. So I think I have said you about the getbootstrap.com. So the getbootstrap.com is this one, this particular website. So where we have the documentation and we have the components all those things so like we have buttons we have the carousals we have the drop downs and nav bars a number of things we have so we can we will be using this also but rather than using completely from here so we'll get some of the important things from the front end uh, that is from the theme and we'll start using that one if we need anything we will be using this uh, bootstrap get bootstrap okay so now to see here we have something like this so this is like similar to any website so if i just see any other uh, thing so where i will just see for the portfolio so there will be having any option let me see so you can see e-commerce we have landing pages we have portfolios if i just tell it for the portfolio so we have these kinds of uh, things so we have all uh, these many for portfolio for the admin team we have like this and uh so we have so let me see which is the good one i'll just select that one and i'll be using for the uh, development of the website so e-commerce you can see we have e-commerce for here landing pages so we have like this and um, because we'll be having others I just say here others so we have all uh, this one so whichever you like you can just start using it so now what i'll use here is if i just click on to this uh, preview so it is free so you can download this one okay so now so we have if i just click on to the launch preview so the website will look something like this you can see it will be looking something like this. so you might think if anyone's a portfolio you might be saying you might think of oh, everything they have designed they would have not designed everything they would have taken the and they would have modified and they were connected back end that's all the things will be done if i tell you about promptly i did this website from my end i not coded everything from my end for the front end part so everything is a is a bootstrap theme is this is the one thing i just modified it so you can see if i just keep the cursors over here i am getting this kinds of stuff so i am getting it i am not designed like this for the all front end i have never wasted the time for designing all these things okay already pre-made things was there i just changed the background colors i changed the particular uh, sections all those things i have done okay so like this uh, we can just uh, start using you can see these all the things i have not done so but i can modify it according to my way. so like this so uh, we'll be building the website so you don't need of uh, doing everything so you can see we have like this this kind of uh, website i think it is just a single page so if i click on the welcome so what it is going you can see it is going to the welcome page Okay, so if i just go back to the services page so you can see it is going it is it is looking something like this okay so shall i use this uh, website for the portfolio development so we can just keep it these things as an app bars and if i just click on to this one it should uh, go to the um, like some of the pages if i just click on to the home page so if i just go to the back over right here I'll just go back to over here so this is all you can, you can just use any whichever you like you can just use it but i am not keeping same everything but i'll be changing all the things over. so this is one website we can just get the free theme so if i just go to the stack bootstrap dot com so what here we have uh, these kinds of templates so one more uh, i have seen one particular template so i'm not getting from where it is getting so bootstrap made.com so if i just go to this website okay so this is bootstrap made.com is also fine so you can see i want yeah i was seeing for this particular portfolio i wanted this kind of website i wanted to use this one so what i'll do here is i'll just use this all uh, as a for the front end part i'll be using it. okay so see here the website will be looking something like this so i'll just cancel everything so bootstrap did uh, bootstrap made.com demo and i portfolio it will be looking something like this so what i'll do here is in the mobile view so in the mobile it will look something like this so if i just click here it will be looking like this and here i can just uh, display my profile all those things and uh, in the tablet you can see it will be looking something like 
but in the desktop it will be looking something like this which is uh, amazing nothing okay so where i can just uh, connect with this particular website with the back end so we'll see how it can be done so now i just click on to the free download here so i wanted to download this website so i wanted to download this one so we have the versions here see i can use it in the in, in number of domains everything it has been they have given for the number of website we can use it for the clients i cannot use permission the working of the php ajax is not available premium or support of the image is not available and uh, access to the developer version is also not available so but they have given they we can download for the free like front end i can download it but anyways we will be designing our back end part so for that particular purpose there is no need of uh, this all the technologies if you want you need to pay for dollar 19 rupees what i'll do here is i can just select it bootstrap file or else you can just put it for bootstrap yeah, for also i just select it as a bootstrap file so here they are asking the email address so what i'll do here is i'll just uh, give the email address so i'll just click on the i just click on just download okay you can see it is started downloading okay so without giving the uh, email also you can just uh, now you can see it, uh, it got downloaded so once it is downloaded i'll just click on the show in folder so it is downloaded here so i'll just cut it this particular file so after cutting it here so now what i'll do here is i'll just uh, start from the scratch itself so whichever we have done in the previous uh, things so anyways we want to modify that particular thing so i think uh, the particular uh, website name i have created inside so i'll just create it here itself i'll create one new folder so i'll just create a new folder so the folder name i'll just give it as uh, portfolio okay portfolio dynamic website it's just not a portfolio each and every functionalities will be adding it here just it is not a single page which will show only the static data so we'll load the data from the database and we'll display the data into the front end part so i'll just create it this folder portfolio dynamic website i'll right click and open with the visual studio so you know how to install the visual studio code and even even i have said you how to download the python so all those things you have that is the pre request for the developing any website using python so now so i'll tell once again so what are the things you need to be installed you need to have what you need to have download python just download this particular python.org go to this website so then after going to this website click on to the python 3.9.7 anything and go at the top at the bottom here there is a windows 6 dollar issue for uh, 64 bit click on that you have 32 install this one so after at the, at the time of installation you need to enable the python add to the path so as i have said you that particular uh, things it will just show it right so like uh, add python to the path if i just go back so here if i just go back if i just tell uh, python path If I just tell something like this if i just click on the images so here you see here we have something like we'll be getting this kind of pages but when you are opening these pages you need to see install uh, you need to enable this box and even you need to put tick mark to the box then you need to click on to the install now this is a very important step at the point of install it's already i have said you so then you need to have visual studio code just download the vs code editor so after downloading the vs code editor so just don't uh, download this particular theme for the front end so i'll just cancel so now I'll go back to this folder so which i have created a empty folder so what i'll do i'll just paste this particular uh, file which i have copied so it got pasted you can see you can see it is all uh, pasted so now after pasting it just keep it as it is now so now right click and open with this visual studio code which is this particular folder okay so it has been open inside my vs code so download the html snippet extensions from here html snippets and uh, install the django with this and uh, click on to the new terminal so i have uh, created a new terminal so anyways we are devising a new website so i am so this part which i am going to tell now the setup of the project as well as uh, the installation of the application and uh, how to render to the html page i've said you two times in my previous session so that in the recordings you can just see it at once so now again i will be telling i just take two to three minutes just to do that much then will integrate this portfolio inside that particular website okay so for that one what i need to do here is so i'll just uh, you need to install django so that is pip install django you have done right so so pip install django so this pip install django you need to enter this particular command so once you have installed the django then i can just start developing my website so what i'll do i'll just select it as a command prompt here so i'll just select it as a command prompt so after selecting as a command prompt i'll just enter the particular uh, to start the project what is the command so we have a command django admin start the particular project start project and you need to give your project name so the project name i'll just give it as 
project itself okay don't want to keep any complications so i'll just uh, select the project name as project itself once i enter this command you can see here uh, the project will get created by using this uh, particular uh, command you can see the project got created so once the project is created i need to go inside the project then i need to create application to create application i will just tell python manage.py start app so i need to create applications here so for the first application i'll just keep it one so i'll say how to connect with the two two or two or three applications so for that in the virtual environment so for that particular virtual environment you need to do what so i'll just say so what i'll do is python manage.py start app so i'm just starting the particular application so the application name I need to give the application name as app here. So I'll just create it as app. So as I said before, like uh, for separate separate operation, we'll be having separate separate application. For authentication, I'll give one separate application so that there is no confusion should be there. So that this will be the new things to learn for the previous batch also. Then uh, I'll just say, so for the authentication, no, I'll just uh, make it as a UTH auth app, okay? So I'm just saying the authentication, for the authentication, login, sign up and logout, I'm creating one application that is auth app okay so this is only for the authentication i'll be using it for the no other purpose i'll be using this so next i'll create one more application so what will be the application here so python manage.py start the application str to start the application so this time i'll just create application for the block page so here only there should be a block things only there should be a block content so i'll just make it as a block page so anything i'll just give it as a blog here blog blog so this will this will be for the block uh, rendering it will only for the authentication system you can say a number of python files got generated so once i run this command so now uh, this is for the authentication and this is for the blog and for the normal operations like uh, keeping like our uh, contact pages and uh, services pages all those things so we'll create one more application so i'll just tell python manage.py start app so here what I can keep the particular name is uh, I can just keep the particular uh, portfolio portfolio okay so I'll just keep this particular uh, file uh, the particular uh, normal our normal application will be the portfolio application for this one I'll just keep like so now we have created uh, three applications with a single project so now we need to destructure the particular project I need to just uh, destructure it and I need to run the server so wh what I need to do here is so now for uh, rendering i'll render to the portfolio home page itself so here what i'll say i'll create one function here so i'll just write the particular function so what will be the function name here is so i'll just tell the function name should be home page or anything or okay i'll just keep the function name should be home which will take the request as an argument and it will return uh, return render so it will return render first it will take the request then second thing it will just take what so second thing it will be taking the which html file i need to render it so for rendering the html page i'll just make it like so i'll say just uh, render the index.html page index dot or else i'll just keep it as home.html home.html page so i want to run this particular function which will redirect me to the home page okay this is the function we have written so for this one we need to add one url path to add a url i'll click on to the portfolio i'll click on to the first logo here i'll create a file urls.py file so here i am creating a urls.py file okay so here urls.py file is what means so here we need to create a particular path for it. so before that one i'll just uh, go to the project urls so i'll just copy from all the stuffs here so then i'll come back so i'll just copy here i'll go back to the urls i'll just paste it so here i'll be using the path so from what is the path here from uh, urls from django.urls i am importing one path uh, module then here i need to add one path here so what is the path i need to add so i need to add something like whenever i am running the port number 127.0.0.1 at ip address and a port number is uh, 8000 when i am getting that request i need to run the home function this is already i have said you so for the same path i'll be adding it so i'll say i want to add a path whenever i get this kind of request that is our local host i need to run the views dot in my views so there is a function name that is a home function where exact function name should be home itself so this particular function i need to run so here i need to import the views here i'll just tell from the particular portfolio port portfolio i need to import the views i need to import this views python file 
So from this, I need to run the home function. So now I have set up the application stuff now. So now I need to create a home.html file. So for that one, everything I'll just maintain my particular uh, templates in one folder itself. So I'll just say new templates. So I'll just create a new folder by the name TEMPLATS template. So you can see it should be in the same path. Should not put templates in some other way and all. Okay, it doesn't work then. So inside the templates, I'll just create one file that is a home.html. I'll just create as a home.html file. So where here I have something like so here I'll just create a home.html file. I'll just give the talk, uh, title name as uh, portfolio. And I'll just give you the H1 tag. I'll just tell working. So I'll just keep something like it is something, it is just working. Okay, I want to just render this page for right now. Then we'll extract the portfolio and we'll dump it over here and we'll see how to deal with the static files. So now what I need to do here is I have created an application. So fine. But I need to register this application where I need to register this particular applications inside the project. So I need to register inside the project. So if I just go to the settings, so we have a settings.python file. So here I need to register the app install apps. So first I'll just register only a single application that is I'll just uh, register for the PORT port uh, portfolio. F O L I O portfolio. Okay. Spelling is correct. Yeah. So then I'll just put a comma. So once I save this much. So you can see the migration folder will get created just if I just press Ctrl S. Whenever you do any changes with any of the files, just keep on pressing Ctrl S. Make the habit. Okay, I won't be saying all the time I need to press Ctrl S. Okay, so you need to save everything whenever you are doing any changes. So I said here. So now one thing I need to just sell here is so see if I just run the server here. So to run this particular project, I need to run the server. To run the server, I need to just enter Python manage M A N A G manage.py run server so i need to just run the particular server so once i run the particular server if i just go back to the page here so if i just say 127.8000 port number if i go to this url you can see django is working fine but i don't want to show this kind of uh, file when i am getting this kind of ip address i need to render what i need to render this home.html file which is the i have created i need to render this particular file which i have been uh, created now so for that one you need to go to the projects urls so here i need to import one thing that is include and then i need to add the path so what will be the path name here so i'll just create a new path whenever i get this kind of ip address whenever i get, in, uh, get for the local host address so with the single quotes or a double quotes with empty you need to understand that i am rendering to this particular page even whenever you are i'm using any slash just if i just use a slash you need to understand i am rendering where I am rendering to this particular home page. Okay. So now I'll say I need to go to the sorry. So I have imported this one, right? Something that is include. So I'll just copy this include. I'll just paste it here. I need to include what? I need to include my portfolio's URLs. So whenever I'm getting this kind of path, I need to just send my Django to this URLs file. So the URLs file handling will happen from here. Again, it will just check. Whenever there is a request for this kind of page, it will just run the views.home function. It will just run this particular home page. Okay, that all that is that will be the thing it will work. So I'll say here as a portfolio. So I need to just tell the application name. So pivot port and f o l i o folio dot u or l s. So I created a urls dot python file. So I want just I want to render to this file. So if I just save this much, so once I save this much, you can see. Um, server is getting whenever I press Ctrl S, yes, the server will get restarted inside my terminal. So now see if I just come back here, if I refresh the page, I am getting template home.html is not found. So it is giving me the error. The template is not found because I have not registered the templates inside my settings. So you need to go to the project settings.py file. So there is a only one settings.python file inside your whole project that will be inside your child project of your project folder that is in the settings.py file here something we have uh, here if i just go to the directory so we have a directory so here i need to just tell uh, i need to just add one more folder at templates so just enter this one in the single quotes add this time uh, the particular folder name templates so once i save this much so now save control s go back to the file refresh you can see i'm getting the thing is getting okay so like this we need to redirect to the home page so I have said you about the bootstrap people you know and you have, as a day I have said you uh, the Jinja techniques how we can do 
and same thing we need to apply again so i'll save everything so everything is working now so now what i need to do i need to render this portfolio stuff now so what i'll do here is i'll just tell extract files extract here so once i extracted you can see the portfolio got created so now i'll just delete this particular folder i'll just delete it so once i extract it so i have n number of things so when i click on to the index.html page so you can see it will be looking like this okay but same thing it doesn't uh, work in the django so this like this it doesn't work so we need to do a number of the settings now i need to do a number of settings so what i'll do here is i'll just i'll open this particular way i have a extracted right now i can open from here also because this folder is inside the same folder it is this particular folder is inside the same uh, editor so see we have a index.html so whatever the index.html page is there i'll just copy everything i'll just press ctrl a i'll just ctrl c so after copying from this particular stuff i'll go to the home.html page so where i have added this boiler template i'll just remove everything from here i'll just paste whatever i have copied so once i save once i say what will happen so if i just go back to the output if i just refresh see i'm getting like this so what is this it is just a html page it is just a html with no css and no javascript is working if i right click and inspect if i right click and inspect it so if i just see if i just click on the console this is many errors we are having so this is all having the they are saying that this is not found this particular file is js is not found this images is not getting found and the css file is not getting uh, loaded so this is all the errors i am getting so now i need to fix that particular error and unwanted things everything i'll just uh, remove from this file only i'll keep what all the things i need it okay so for that one what i need to go here is so first i need to create one static uh, directory so for the static uh, things so if i just go to um, So for that one i need to just create one static directory so that uh, i can just load all the css file and all the all the javascript file along with that i can just uh, check whether the particular file is loading or not in my console all the things i can just do that one so for that one we need to add some of the settings so what is the settings first here is to so see here if i show you in this uh, html file we have a links for the loading the css font i am having sorry the fonts thing they have went to this website and they have loaded the cdn link for it this is fine and they have set hreference for the icon and they have set for the this one all these things for this one fav icons so that means whichever the fav icons means whichever the things which will be showing over here so in the website so it is showing the globe here so i can just change with the fav icon so i don't want fav icon i'll just remove it from here so i want a google font so they have used so i'll keep like as it is here we have some of the css file they're saying the file is loading from this particular assets and vendors and os and os.cs.css.css.css this is all of your css files so this is all your css file it is loading with this href location but we don't have added the particular location inside our project so that is nothing but this one if i just go to the uh, this one so see we have asset folder we have css images js and vendors okay so we have css folder inside css i have a style.css inside the images i have some of the images you can see which is uh, coming from the bootstrap so let it keep as it is later we'll delete it so now we have a javascript files so where we have a main.js file and we have a uh, vendor uh, something so where i have a uh, bootstrap css a number of css files we have so a number of things i have done so what i'll do here is i'll just copy this folder i'll just copy this particular folder now i'll go inside the project directory so where is my project structure is there. so this is your project structure that have been created right now so here i'll create one new folder i'll create a folder name as static so i need to load all the files in the static loop so i created a static folder so as i created a static folder i'll just paste this particular asset folder which i have copied from the front end part which i have downloaded it that is nothing but from the ipod folio so we have a asset so this is a folder which i have copied i copied that one and i pasted inside where i pasted that particular folder inside the static directory so i have copied and i have pasted it over okay so once i have pasted so now what i need to do here is so now i need to uh, connect the static file to my django project so to connect that one 
So you can see the static folder is being converted where all the CSS and images and JavaScript files are being there. So now I need to go to the uh, settings.pov file that is inside my project settings. So here I need to add that directory as one uh, base directory. So here you see, so if I just go here, you can see the they, how they have been uh, as a base directory they have added like this. Okay. So now same way I need to add as a base directory that the particular static uh, files are there. I need to add in this particular fashion. So what I'll do here is I'll just uh, copy this like this. I'll just copy like this. So either either else I'll do one more thing. What I'll do here is inside the static. So I'll say in the Python code I need to import the operating system. So in, in, import the operating sorry there is no semicolon here. So after importing the operating system I need to create one static path. So what will be the static path here is static files files and it will be the directories. So here the directory will be in this particular fashion. So what I need to say here is so inside this directory I need to just tell the operating system os dot path dot join I need to join as a base directory. I need to join as a base directory that is nothing but that is a static folder. So this kind of code you need to add inside your project in the settings dot means you are as a static files directory you are uh, loading this particular static folder inside your Django project as a base directory. So this thing we need to just tell and once you do we just save it. So once you have saved now what I need to do here is I need to go to the home.html. So I need to go to the home.html file. At the top of the HTML, I need to just tell load the particular static file. So if I just tell load static, it will be because the Django template I have been selected here. See here, if I have selected as a Django template. So you can see the Django template is been selected. If you are not getting that one, you can just install from here. Just tell Django in the extensions. You can just uh, download like whatever, whichever I have joined Django, I have Django template, Django template, all the three I have installed and Django snippets also have been installed. The four things I have been installed, you can just uh, install in that particular fashion. So now, once you have installed this one, you'll be getting this kind of suggestion, this kind of syntax, all those things. If you're not getting, you can simply you can just type it. So here I have loaded the static files. So now I have loaded the static folder inside my HTML file. So now what I need to do here is, so now see, what will be the changes here? Nothing, no changes will be there. So there is no changes. Okay, now I need to set, set the particular things. First, I'll set the CSS file. So let me check with the first CSS file whether it works or not. So where is the bootstrap CSS files are here? Here is a style CSS. So where my style.css is getting loaded. So what I'll do here is here I'll just copy this path. I'll just cut it. I'll just cut this one. I'll just tell it as a static. So once I say static, it is it is just giving me the syntax. So what I'll say inside your static folder, I want to load this particular path which I have copied in this fashion. Here I need to just go to the assets, then I need to go to the CSS file, then I need to load the style.css file. That's it. I'll just paste this much. Once I paste, if I come back and refresh, you can see the things is getting something is happened, but not perfectly. It is not getting it. But something is happened. You can see the changes has been fetched over. That means now the CSS file is loading, but still the boxes are not coming properly. In number of things is happening. So why it is opening? Because I have just loaded a single file. Still I need to do this for this one. So what I'll do here is I'll just uh, uh, say. So now I need to same same thing. I need to just tell. I'll just cut this much. I'll just tell static and I'll just paste this much. Same. I'll just cut this particular stuff. I'll just cut it. I'll just say static and I'll just paste this much. So same thing for all the things. Wherever there is a starting in the CSS file which I have copied. So for all the things I need to do same like this. So you need to paste the same ref path. Okay, you should not change any other things here. So I'll just cut first. I'll just tell static. It will be giving this syntax in the href. Then I'll just paste like this. Same way for here also. I'll just uh, cut till here and I'll just say static and I'll just paste this. And even I'll just uh, cut like this. Okay. So let's uh, select this much and I'll just say static and I'll just paste it. So now I have loaded all the files statically inside my Django. So rest all the things let's uh, give like this. So now here we have meta tags. That is the content I have, I have a description. So let, later I will say what is this one. So here I'll just say, I'll just remove the title name here. So I'll just give the title name as uh, on my website i'll just give it as a my i'll just give the ark website 
something i'm just giving as a title name so i have loaded all the css file so same as just paste this much so once i paste same thing there are some of the static files so just we'll remove unnecessary things from the top later so now something i need to do so we have a footer section which they have given the credits uh, credits over so they have given uh, for the reddish for the bootstrap made all those things so i'll just uh, remove i don't want to give any credit for them i'll just remove from them so here i'll say so here there is a design by so i'll just tell design by myself i'll just tell design by a or k so just put it your name so after putting your name so we'll keep this href as empty after hosting it we'll put the particular link over here so now just uh, we'll keep it as a empty so design by a okay so now we have something here so what will what is this here we have the same static assets folder so what i need to do here is i need to just put it same as it is so i'll just select multi cursor functionality i'll just say here static okay so i'll just select this much so what i'll say here is i'll just uh, open the process then i'll just put the percentage then i'll just say as a static so multi cursor functionality you can just say pass static i want to just select the static so this thing i want to load it into the single quotes so once i'll just save like this so where is it sending it is ending over here right so i'll just press alt wherever i need to do the changes i'll just uh, press the cursor so here i need to select here and i need to select it here sorry it got changed so once you you need to just uh, see carefully select first where you need to change uh, change so here as well as uh, here and here and next i need to do it for here then third or third file i'll just select it here then even i need to select it here here as well as here wherever there is the ending with the dot js that means you need to do it first so let it uh, be like that later will change so here what i need to do i need to just put a single quotes then i'll give the space and i'll just give the percentage symbol and i'll just close it okay that's all at a single time you can just do all the things so these are all the shortcuts you can now uh, do it so there is one place which i just missed here is somewhere here where is it so some one place i have just missed it so it is ending properly when it is ending even the uh, dot mean and it is ending properly even here it is ending properly and uh, then here uh, so here i need to end properly so when it is ending when it is ending and uh, here it is working okay here i have just missed it so what i need to do here is i need to just uh, say like this i'll just close like this and here at the end i need to just put the double quotes okay just see properly how it is there okay so just i am just loading how i have done at the top just i have loaded the css file right so i have loaded the css file where at the top here same as it is i have done if you are getting difficulty doing the for pressing alt and all those things what you can do here is just uh, so cut the particular thing press static and whatever the single quotes you will be getting empty box paste it over there that's it and here same see just i was saying just copy like this cut it and just say static and just paste it even you can do like this it's your choice but the part should be there properly so once i save everything so now come back over here now see if i refresh the pages if i refresh let's see what are the changes now you can see the changes has been there now you can see some of the things all it is getting loaded you can see all the stuff is loading perfectly but the image is not there so no problem for me so later we can see all the forms is getting properly all the thing is getting fine okay so like this you need to do it so somewhere there is a images also here so somewhere there is images so we'll see where is the images so let's see where is the images so let's fix everything properly then we'll start editing so here we don't have any images here and uh, if i just go in the portfolio section here we don't have any images so somewhere else we have so I just press ctrl f and if i just say dot jpg so you can see we have a 25 images over here we have a 25 images wherever there is a dot jpg we have a 25 images over here. it is starting from where it is starting from this particular end if i just go again if i just press stop so from here from including here we have a 25 images which is loading in our in our website so what i need to do here is so i'll just select it as an asset here so i'll just select it as an asset so if i just select it as an asset it started as the 19th one so what i'll do here is i can just uh, use multi cursor functionality and i can just uh, use that particular syntax so better than that what i'll say here is i'll just uh, wherever these images so i'll just cut and i'll just uh, uh, use the static uh, particular syntax so anyways he see it is going to the static directly it won't load it here so i need to load the images in this fashion same as it is how i am loading the css i'll just tell static and i need to paste like this then the images will get loaded so if i just said this is one asset so here also we have somewhere all the images which are having so what i'll do here is i'll just select uh, from here to here 
So let's cut it. I'll just say static and I'll just paste this much. Same as it is, I need to do for this much, for this also. Wherever there is images, I need to just put in the static and I need to just change the particular stuff over. So then the images will get loaded. Same we have like this and uh, same uh, things we have over here. So for this, this one. So now after doing this kind of stuff, so let's see whether it is loading or not. So now I don't know what to do for everything. I just, uh, I was showing you how to get the images. If I refresh the pages, now you can see the images will be there. You can see the image is coming. Before it was not getting it. Now I am getting this kind of image. Okay. So like this, uh, you can uh, do it. So we can see I am getting some some of the images wherever I have gender changes it is all loading it. Okay, so let's keep it like as it is here. So there is no need of any changes. So now what I need to do. So now we need to just uh, play all the Jinja techniques and we need to just modify our application. So we'll just click on to the create a login and sign up pages uh, all those things. So any doubt still here? Understood how to get a front end part from other website for free. And how to put it inside our Django website and how we will modify. So we'll do with the, such a website, they won't be one get to know you have modified somewhere. So think like oh, you completely only have designed. Like this we'll do it. Understood till there any doubts if you have you can ask me. Still we have errors with this website. If I just right click and inspect, see here we have in the console. They are saying me they would have said like this this many images are not getting. What is that? There are 17 errors which we need. That all the errors is you can see. Dot jpg is not found. Dot uh, file jp is not found. All the images is not getting found over here. So it is what here is happening. So what I can do here is same. I'll just uh, change all the things over here. So wherever there is a thing, so I'll just uh, change it over there. So here I need to just do the changes here, here, as well as uh, so here only two things are there. So I'll I'll just I'll just uh, close it. So I'll better. I don't need of any doing and uh, typing stuff. I just tell as a static and I'll just paste it over here. Same way I'll just uh, select till here and I'll just tell it as a static and I'll just paste it. That particular errors will be going that all the images will get loaded. So same for uh, this particular section and same for this particular section. So even now, so if I just uh, comment this particular section, it will get commented. So better than that one, what I'll do here is I'll just select it Excel. I'll just copy the assets one. So after copying it, I'll just press Control H. So from this particular place, I want to copy the assets. So what I want to replace means I want to replace with this double uh, with this uh, flower brackets, and I want to have a percentage symbol. Then I need to have a static coming over there. Then I need to just uh, put the single quotes. Then same thing I need to just pass assets over here. So same thing I need to just pass the assets. Then later uh, all the things will get. See if I just press enter, so I would have given space here. Yeah, I have given the space. Here. So now what I'll do is if I just press enter, so you can see the static is got changed. So I want to change it for here. For everywhere I'll just change it. So wherever there is a static, I'll just change it at a single point. So I'll just tell enter, 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 enter. Okay. So even I need to do this here. So here I don't want to do it. So be careful while doing it. This was already we have done that change. So once I have done, just uh, save. So once I have saved, so next I need to do for dot jpg. Dot jpg. Wherever there is a dot jpg. So if I just uh, start from here, so where is the error is coming? So see the color is being changing from where it's got changes from it is there perfect from here we got changes, right? So what I'll do is I'll just press control H wherever there is a dot jpg from here. It is a sixth position wherever there is a dot jpg. I want to replace with what I want to replace with a dot jpg itself. Then I need to put a single code. Then I'll just give the space. Then I'll just put the percentage simple. I'll just close the into the flower brackets. Then I'll just close it inside. Uh, just I'll just do this much because already there is a double quotes out. So once I enter, you can see. Uh, if I just enter again, so see the changes has been high. How it is getting the changes? So you can see how the changes is getting here. So one is got changed. So even the portfolio two got changed. Again, if I just enter, so you can see again. Uh, wherever the changes is there, it will just uh, do the particular changes. At the tenth, it got changes. It got changes to like this. If I just enter again, so everywhere I'll just. Uh, you like this dot jpg percentage okay i'll just press enter let's see where is the i'll just enter for the test monocles so till here i'll just set it so i'll just paste like this so now see if i just go back to the above so where is the error is coming it started you can see the color only i can get to know there is the error 
So see here it is not got changed over here so i'll just say i just want to this like this and then to put the percentage i need to just close it that's it all there is gone so now i'll just save it because it was not saved before so all the things you can see all uh, i got in, like by using the shortcuts i can easily do the things in a very relevant manner so rather than pressing selecting all and doing changes this is one thing uh, which i like it so i'll just save it so now come back over here refresh you can see half of the error would have went now I'm getting only one error. So what is this error? At the this is the particular error I'm getting. Profile image dot jpg. So if I just select this much, I'll just select it. I'll just copy. I'll just press Control F. I'll just select where is the. So here it is not going anything. So if I just see here is the error where I am getting. So what I'll do here is I'll just select till here and I'll just resolve this particular error with this syntax. So now everything has been changed. So now can see there is no error inside my console so all the things is working fine if you are not getting like this if you are see the image is also coming over suppose if you are not getting this kind of stuff because in many computers so what will happen means uh, due to the old css which is loaded you won't be getting even though after you are getting the changes if you have any errors first you check with the console if you are if you're a console if the console is empty there is no error over here this is a warnings neglect the warnings if there is a no errors over here then there will be no error in your website even though the what i can say the margins paddings all all those things would have not come properly if you are getting like this just press what you need to just press first press control and then press shift then press r control shift plus r what it does means it will remove all your cache files and again it will refresh your pages so at that time your uh, things everything will so now you can see all the things are coming images coming all the stuff i'm getting you can see all the images also coming over here now so now now i'll just keep whatever i want i list all the things i'll just uh, remove from the website and i'll just keep it whatever i need it so according to me i'll modify the website okay understood till here any doubts if you have you can just ask me so this is the one first step you need to do whenever you start creating a website first you take a theme whichever uh, according to the website requirements then start developing it don't sit and uh, uh, create a website from the scratch. It will take uh, years like that. Okay. So better take solely the bootstrap is there. So that is why the bootstrap each and every website will be created with the bootstrap itself. 99% of website will be created with the bootstrap. For the front end they will use and they will modify it. And uh, only the focus is on more on the back end part. Any doubt still here? Just I want everyone to reply. But if I am having two screens over here where I can see your uh, participant, in our participant, so I am having an error like no messages. So I want everyone to reply. What about others? What I say? What about Navya Shri? There is no need of calling me, sir. Okay, you can just call me any. What is fine? So, now what we need to do here is we'll just uh, set up the project now. So, we'll apply the Jinja techniques, and after applying the Jinja techniques, uh, we'll see what all the things. So we'll modify everything. So first we'll modify all the pages, then we'll look on to the backend part. So how to modify it now? So modification is very easy. We are expert in doing modification. So there is no need of any more uh, hard work for the modification. So first what I need to do here is I can if you want you can just keep like this, whichever the things we don't we don't want. I don't want any testimonials. If you want any testimonials, you can just keep it. If you want means you can keep it the testimonial. Like uh, let's keep it for testimonials. Like uh, what we'll do here in the testimonial is uh, if uh, we'll allow the users to give the reviews on your website. So the particular reviews will display it over here. What you say? Fine now. We'll keep this one. We'll keep uh, this particular one section. So the testimonials. Will... So what we'll do? Allow the users to what? to give the reviews on your website or any other thing like uh, we'll give one uh, they will give one your uh, about yourself they will write for you 
you know anyone can do it uh, like only the login persons who have done the login we will allow them to give the reviews over here we will give this testimony and anyways we need to have a contact details give the particular contact details also so we need to have the contact part also then along with that services is there so services uh, even you can keep this particular services steps in your uh, steps uh, you can just keep it the services pages also no problem then we don't want this uh, portfolio stuff i don't want this display i don't want unnecessary things so i'll say where is the portfolio so let's copy this portfolio so what i'll do i'll just go back here so i'll just search for the portfolio section so i'll just press ctrl f here is the portfolio section i don't want completely i'll just remove it here so i'll just select everything portfolio to so these are all the images just images it is getting loaded so here is the end portfolio section i want to remove it i'll just remove later i'll add it new one whichever according to my earlier style so once i say if i refresh this particular section would have went you can see testimonial is there now services are there services you can just keep it along with you so whatever your service there, you can just put it in the services section later we'll be doing it so these all things will put it into one html file we don't put everything uh over like this so now along with that we have a resume here so resume is there so i think uh, resume is uh, required so we'll anyways uh, then you can if there uh, you can just put it like this so here it is very nice one so what here we have here is i uh, will see what to do we'll keep it okay we'll see how to design with this resume part so we have the left hand side and we have right hand side right so how it has been divided means they would have divided with the row and column so we need to if we are keeping a resume we should not keep like this same like we should not go inside your html page and you need to do the changes if you want you are you should design in such a way that uh, we if if i want to change anything later suppose i want to add one more professional experience in my data in my resume i should be able to do it from where i should be able to do it from mobile itself once i do any i'll just open the admin panel in my admin panel if i do the changes it should reflect over here automatic okay that things i need to do so that's a uh, thing or that all the things i need to do so we'll do with the resume part also we'll keep it okay so we'll try with that one. and what are the skills you have let it keep it like this we need this and this i don't want what are the facts in there i don't want i'll just remove the facts factx facts so i need to remove this particular fact section so i don't want to deal with anything with the facts so where is it if they started here it will be written in the comments so see that fact section and ending the ending the particular fact section i'll just remove it i'll just save this one so once i save it will be removed and we have about about yourself let's keep as it is okay that is all the things we have inside this website so we have a contact page also that we want it what i'll do is i'll just save it here so i'll just save everything once i say if i refresh so we have like this so now we need to work everything each and everything we need to work with the dynamically each and everything we need to work uh, each sections we need to work with the dynamic part so something else we had with this so let's see what all else uh, extra we have in the portfolio we have inner page.html if i just uh, open this inner page.html what is this inner page okay it is just a inner page so I, it is something like uh which is this i wanted it now this is something which i wanted because i will be rendering for each and everything i will rendering for one one different different pages for login for sign up all those things so we want something like this so only i need to change only this much part right so this will be the constant the left hand side whatever it is there it will be the constant thing and even in the right hand side whatever you have all the css files all the javascript files that will be the constant that i need to keep it only the changes will be done with the front end part that is only the things you so that is i want to do it so that i want to have the i need to keep the inner page and portfolio details something is there if i just open this website portfolio details is something like this so what for what we can use this one imagine for what i can use it i think i can use it for uh, blog pages and all so better than this i'll create it with my own css and with my own uh, bootstrap components with this uh, better than this we'll start creating so i don't want this all so i'll just neglect so this just i wanted to see what all the adults extra is available with this bit that's all so now we have took everything from here so i don't want anything i have forms also here so we have a contact.php so it is not needed we'll create our own forms problem so we have like this right so now i want to do all the changes so what else i need to have here let me see so now i need to start modification the trending technology so i'll go to the navbar here 
So see here there is a mobile uh, nav bar toggle. That means this particular CSS they have written for the mobile part. So whenever there is a the display width will become at that particular size, this particular uh, CSS will get loaded. That is what thing is there. So now all the things I need to change it here. So here we'll put our image. I'll, I want to put my image over here, my photograph. Then I'll give my name over here, and here all the social media links are there. I'll keep every all the social media links uh, along with like I'll just uh, put it mine in a social media link. I see we have a Twitter, we have a Facebook, we have Instagram, we have a Google Plus, and we have a LinkedIn. So these are all the things we have. I'll just uh, add my URLs part to it. Okay, so I'll do it that later. That all the things we can do it. That is not an issue. So now I need to put my image over here. So I need to just put my particular image over here. So whichever you have the image, you can just put it later. So I'll show you how to put the image with those. So now, first we'll modify this particular. So what are the things we need to have? So come back here. So we have a home page and we have a board. We have a resume, we have a services and we have a contact. So what I want to hear is, I want to, first I need to just write for the about services and contact. I'll show you, I just wanted to show you the Jinja technique. What, what is my idea? I'll just show you. If I just, say i don't want to keep everything inside the single page the, i want my website should load fast if they want to the go to a particular page they should uh, reload the they should go to the separate uh, url for about for resume for services for so on, later we'll see if i want to show all the details in the front end we'll keep it but we need to have a separate pages for each and everything so if i just want a resume to see only the resume page should open i don't want everything should show to the user so it is what one thing i need to do it so here we have a home page right so whenever there is a click on anyone try to click on the home page you should go to the slash page and next is for the about so anyone try to click on the about it should go to the slash about page okay it should go to the slash about page so then if anyone try to click on to the resume it should go to, so first we'll see for the about and contact because we are working only with one application that is my portfolio and later we will see for the blog and later we will see for the authentication so first we will start with the authentication itself after uh, our revamping our website it is after restructuring all this list. so now whenever i try to click on the home page the url how it takes means whatever there in the href it will look onto that and it will reload the page and it will give you for you with the particular ip address local host then whenever there is anyone try to click on the about you should go to the slash about now anyone try to click on the contact it should go to where it should go to the slash contact page contact page and next if anyone try to click on to the services it should go to the slash services page so now i'll just save this much so once i save this much i'll just uh, save come back here reload the page after reloading it now see if i try to click on the about it is going to the slash about page but the page is not getting found and if i just go back to again for the services it is showing the services now we need to create a separate page pages for it and i don't want to load everything just i want to load the, this kind of this much information i want to like how the about is there like that i need to just display it so for that one what i need to do first i need to create a file what i'll do i'll create one basic dot html file now i am applying a jinja technique i'll just create a basic dot html file I'll just create a basic .html file and one more thing I'll I, if, I, if I lose the data so suppose when I'm modification if I just lose something so I want to retrieve back right so for that one I'll create one more folder just later I'll delete it for just right now I'll just say a uh, retrieve or it or retrieve dot html I want to suppose if I lost I can retrieve from here what I'll do whatever there is in the home page I'll just copy everything and I'll just put the particular data safely inside my retrieve.html so this is all the thing i need to just paste it so then what i need to do i need to create one more file that is contact.html page i'll just tell contact contact.html page then i need to have what services services.html page then i need to have about.html page a b o u t about.html page then i need to have what resume for the resume building right so i'll just also uh, no resume i'll just uh inside okay i'll put it here itself resume dot html page okay we have these many files i have created empty files i have created so what i need to do here is now i need to apply the jinja technique so what i'll do in the basic dot html page 
I have see one thing is mandatory. So whatever is on the left hand side should be there always. It should be there in each and every page. It should be there. Whatever the thing is there at the left hand side. Along with that, whatever is at the right hand side, I don't want to be everything. I want to keep what I want to just keep till here. I want to just keep whatever the page I am loading. If I am having, if I am opening the services, only the services should show. Rest all the things should not show, and it should load from the database. So that all the things I need to do, right? So what I'll do here is. In the services page, the services dot HTML. I need to just uh, add the. I need to just keep only that piece of code over there. So what I'll do in my base dot HTML page, whatever is there inside my home, I'll just cut everything. I don't want anything inside my home. I'll just paste inside the where I need to just uh, paste inside the basic dot HTML, page, which will be the my base basic dot HTML page. I'll just paste it. If I come back to the home page, I don't have anything here. So it is there. If I just uh, refresh. It is there because I have not saved it. I need to save everything. If I refresh, it will be an empty page. I don't have anything now. So now what I need to do? Be carefully. What I need to do here? So here, I will be using a Jinja techniques. So what means? What is what is the Jinja technique? So I will remove everything from here. So what I need to remove the non unwanted things. So I don't want. Uh, I have this. This is a mandatory thing which I need to have. Here at the place of a title, I will load the title name dynamically in my website. So here I'll just give the block as a title. So this will be the block title for me. So where if I want to give the title name for the website by extracting this block title, I can just give it. I'll just save this much. So then, so this is one thing. Next, next is what? So here we have a home about resume about. So this is this is all the more common things which will be there. I wanted to keep here itself. And it starts the hero sections where uh, that is what is something like what is this hero section, right? So that hero section, I think uh, it is uh, loading the particular uh, background image. Whatever the hero section, whatever the Alex Smith, I am uh, the developer, everything, whichever it is, it was getting at the home page. It was getting right. So what I'll do here is for this one, I'll load, I'll keep one separate thing. I'll just say um, bl rosik block. So block. Uh, so I'll just make it as a black background. So or else I'll just make it as back, uh, block uh, arousals. So or else I'll just take it as a block hero. I'll just keep it as a block hero section. So where your uh, things will be getting over there. So whenever I want to put anything, at that time I'll just put all the hero sections things. I'll just put it. So now I don't want. I'll just remove it. So then we have a block main. So where all the important stuff will come. So here the about is there. Everything is there. So where what I'll do here is in the main section, I will remove everything from here. I don't want anything to keep. I just resume everything. I just remove testimonials. Also, I'll remove. So I'll just go till here. When I don't want the contact page, I'll just remove footer section. I want it. I want the particular footer section. So that let it be the footer section which will be having the copyright. I will remove from everything. So see where I am removing. I am removing everything from the main section. So anyways, we have a retrieve file, right? I can get it from there whenever I need it. So I'm removing everything from here. I'll just save it. So inside the main functions, I'll just keep this is the block body. So this will be my block body section. This will be the block body section. So I'll just keep this body section as it is. So then photo sections I need to have. And if I want to have a script files, suppose I'm writing my own JavaScript things, I need to load that particular script from here. So I need to so if you want to add any script file for your website, I'll say here it has a block script, a C or a PTS script. By extracting the scripts block, I can add it the script files over here dynamically. Then along with that, I need to suppose I am adding any CSS. Suppose I want to add any CSS, that CSS should automatically inject it here. So for that one, I'll just keep it as a block uh, CSS. I'll just keep it as a block CSS as a block style i'll just keep it as a block style okay style will be more uh, convenient style css if i want to add any css files i'll inject here dynamically from other pages and i want to inject the block title name dynamically here at this particular place and suppose if i want to add any things this is mandatory this should be there in each and every pages where each and everything is and block hero is not mandatory and even the if I want to add anything inside the main function that is whichever it was showing on the body so that I'll add it over here. So if you will understand right now, just do what I have done till here. So after if I just save now, 
I have done the basic. Now come back to the home.html page. It is empty now. I'll just extend it. I'll just tell extend basic dot html file. I want to extend the basic dot html file here. So I'll just tell basic dot html file. I'll just extend it. I'll just come back and refresh. See what I'm getting. See, see how I have easily I have done the changes. So here I don't have anything. I don't have literally I don't have anything here. Just whatever the thing is there in the basic.html page that got loaded where that is got loaded inside my home.html page. Got it? So here I got. Now this is all the mandatory things which is coming from the basic.html page. So now in my home page, I want to add the hero section. I want to add the hero section. I want to give the title name. So what I can give, I'll say the title name. So now I'll say wherever there is a block title wherever there is a block title i have mentioned here i'll just copy here you need to inject what you need to inject the title name in my home dot i'll come back here i'll just paste it here i'll just tell here as a yeah okay i'll just give my title title of the website yeah okay pro cool. i'll just give something like this i'll just give the title of this website i'll give the title name as yeah okay pro code over here okay so I'll just so you need to give like as it is. So once i save if I refresh, I am getting AIK Pro Code Row. So, how the changes is getting reflexed, reflections you can just see. So, now after giving the AIK Pro Code, now I want to reflect, I want to put a hero section. So, what is that hero section? I'll just say here again. So, instead, I want to load all the things. Along with that, I'll just remove these templates or uh, things. I'll just remove this one. So, whatever is there inside the comment, you can just remove. This is only for your understanding. I just press Ctrl slash, it is comment. Okay. So come back to the block uh, main. So here there is a block hero section, right? Where it will be injecting some of the code whenever I do anything. So now come back to the home.css. So I want to load the background image. So that is a block hero. So at the block hero, I need to add the thing. I want to add the background thing which it was going currently. So for that one, what I'll do here is we have a retrieve.html file, right? So for the retrieve.html page, so we have a block hero section. I'll just tell hero. So it is what the section which I had removed. So I'll just copy this section. I'll just copy from section to section. So which is a block hero section. I'll just copy the section. I'll go to the home.html page. So I'll just paste it here. So once I paste this much, come back and refresh. So you'll be saying, you can see, I'm getting the background image. So now see, there is nothing. Before there was unwanted things and number of things. I just want to keep it simple. I want to just keep this much inside my home page. I don't want to keep any extra things inside my home page. I just want to keep this much. So if they want to go to the other sections, they can go it from here by clicking this section. So here, whatever the stuff is there. So whatever the thing is a designer, developer, freelancer, photographer, this I'll load it dynamically. So we'll load these things dynamically from the database. And here, whatever the image is there, I want to just uh, change whatever I want to change the background image and just change it the background image. We'll see how to change that one. So here I need to go and I need to do the changes. We'll see that one. And uh, we'll see, we'll try to do with the changes now. So now I'll just uh, do it for the same for the about page. So about page is nothing. So what I'll do, so I don't have any anything in my about page. So what I'll do, same thing I'll just copy from here. I'll just copy everything from here. So whichever is there inside the home page. So I'll just copy. Then I'll just go to the about.html page. So what I'll say here is whatever the title name. I want to change the title name to about. I want to change the particular title name to about page. I just want to change the title name to about. Then we have a section. So I don't want this block hero section. But I want to have a block body function. I need to keep a block body function which we have created. Inside the body, it should load what it should say. It will be on H1 tag. I'll just tell about us. Something I'm just telling about us. So same way. I'll just copy this much and I'll just click on the contact.html page. I'll just paste it. Here I'll just change the title name as a contact. And here I'll just keep the block title as a, the block body. I want to just say mention that contact us. So I'll just save everything from here. Now I need to add a URL and I need to run a function for it. So that is very simple. Go to the portfolio, which is we are working for the application. Go to the URLs of here. Add the path. So what will be the path? so three more path i'm adding it so first path will be for what first path will be for about and for the contact i'll just copy this view dot 
about name is equal to about function copy the contact if there is a contact you need to just run the contact function where it will print the contact or function as a url path then we need to write a views for it i'll go to the views i'll just copy everything same as it is three times in my functions so first i need to write a for the contact when it's render when it request i need to return what contact.html page whatever is there inside the contact.html page i need to render it along with that whenever there is a request for about whenever there is a request for about a b o t about i want to render the about.html file for it so then i just save everything so once i save come back here refresh so my website is working now see if i click on the about you can see it is giving me the about as thing when i click on the contact you can see i am getting as a contact so later we will be doing something like this we can do it for other pages then we can start working with the back back end part like login sign up and logout thing portfolio loading data from the database database models and adding the email authentication systems and uh, like your uh, services and all about your resume all those things so uh, we'll be adding it over there so to start the project first we need to do the like in the previous session you have known like how i have been created a project and how i have created the particular uh, application and uh, we have created authentication app all those things and we saw how the particular uh, functions will uh, run also now we need to just add the authentication part all those things so let's see i'll just run the particular uh, terminal so i'll just click on to the new terminal over here so that i can just run the particular server to run the server always you need to write the command python manage.py run server so once you are starting a server so then your project will get um, the project will be working it okay so i can just select it as anything you can just select it as a power shell or command so i'll just select it as a command prompt so now i need to come inside the project directory then i need to run this manage.py file we just uh, start the development server so i'll just tell cd so the project name i had given as what project itself so i'll just give it as a cd project so once I come, I'll just run the server Python manage.py run server or even so you need to give dot .py here dot .py run server. So once you enter this command, your starting development server will be running it here. So we'll see how the authentication system in this today's session. Like sign up, we'll be doing it. We'll be doing a login. Then we'll be the logout functionalities. I'll be showing you how it can be done. So we have created a website in the previous uh, like. I have said you how to get a bootstrap CSS, like how to get the bootstrap theme, all those things I have said you. Let's wait for the server to get started. So any doubts if you have, you can ask me on the spot. So here I am getting like you have 18 unannupright migrations. So to get uh, resolved with this particular error, so what I will do here is I will just uh, stop the server here. If I just press Ctrl C, the Ctrl C if I press the particular server will get stopped. To just get rid of this particular uh, migration stuff, I need to just tell Python manage Python manage dot py migrate. So once I click onto the my this particular command Python manage dot py migrate, all the migrations will apply for this particular project. Like uh, we have a default authentication system in Django, so that we have a default uh, user table. So all that particular things will get applied, and it will just migrate it into our database. So then I can just run the particular server python manage.py run server. So now the server is uh, running at the particular uh, IP that is 127.0.0.1 at uh, port number 8000 that is nothing but in our IP address. If I just press control and click on this link so you can see the server will get open like this. So you can see the website is getting open like this. So till here we have been uh, seen like we have saw till here right like how it can be like how all the stuff will be there so we can add any of the background pictures so we'll be adding that one we'll design a home page later so let's set up the authentication system right now so you can see we have done the day class so if i just click on the contact i'm getting a contact page when i try to click on to the about i'm getting as a about us page right so this thing is i'm getting it so now uh, as i said i want to set up the authentication system so here i need to add something sign up login all those things right so for that one so i'll just uh, say uh, here i'll just go to the templates where the navbar is coming so this is a basic.html page where this particular navbar is been visible so like uh, in all the pages this particular file will get loaded so because in my board see here i said i need to extend the basic.html that means i need to get the basic.html file here so like that 
basic.html file will be fetched in all the other HTML files. So now let's uh, see what else can do. So this is a navbar. So this is a navbar, right? So this is a navbar starting from here to here. So it is ending it. So if I remove anything, I will just uh, get removed from there. Okay. So now, so now see what I need to do here is we have a about here. So it is something like uh, you can see it is looking like login. So this particular symbol is looking like uh, like login, like user. So I can just log in with this particular thing. So I can see I am getting like a. Uh, so these are all the logos I am getting. So these are nothing but icons. So you can see they have given somewhere here. So you can see box box server, and here they have set for the envelope, and they have set for the user. So wherever I use this particular box bx bx uh, user class name, I'll be getting that kind of logo. That is nothing but whichever whichever it is enclosed inside the uh, i tag. Okay. So now. What we do here is we'll uh, just uh, remove unnecessary things and we'll just uh, see what else uh, we need to do. So now, for now, I'll just uh, comment this one. I want to comment this resume. I want to comment this portfolio as well as the services. These three things I need to comment it right now. So if I just go back here, there is a only three pages, right? Fine. So now I will comment this one. To comment, I can just press as a control and slash. So when I press control and slash, the particular report will get commented. So if not commented, I'll just press control slash. You can see the code is got commented. So comments are nothing that uh, we can just neglect uh, that particular uh, lines of code. So once I come here, if I refresh, see here I'm only having home about and contact as. So now what I'll do here is, so here after the contact, so after the contact, I'll create, I need to have one thing. So what the, I'll just tell as control D. So I'll say control D. So here I'll just make it as sign up. S I G L sign up. So this is sign up and one more I'll just keep it as a login. So sorry, sign up or a sign in. So we'll be telling as a sign in. S I G L and sign in. Okay, sign up and sign in. So it means sign up means so if the new user is there, I'll be showing a sign up part to him. If not, I'll just uh, if he is already user, I can just make it as a sign in. So like this, if I, you will, uh, if you don't like this uh, word, you can just keep it as a login itself. If I just say it as a login, you can say I'm getting as a login. Sign up login, as well as I need to have one more, that is a logout. If I just uh, press Control D, and I'll just say here as a logout. So I'll just say it as a logout. So this one, I'll just change it to this user. So Control D, Control D, and uh, sorry, I'll just press Alt. So if I just press Alt, wherever I want to do the changes, I can do like that. So I'll just press Alt and I'll just select here. So first I'll select here and I'll select here and I need to select here. These three places I need to change. So I'll just uh, backspace it and I'll just tell it as a user. So once I say user, so I can see the logo will be getting like this. sign up, login and logout. So later I will be changing. So when the user is uh, login, I won't be showing him sign up page. If the user is not logged in, then I'll be showing only the sign up. These two things I won't be showing it. So this will be applying later. So now what I need to do here is, so we have a home page uh, contact for now we have this many pages so later we'll be changing it now i need to create a login page so whenever i try to click on the login it should go to the login page if i try to click on the sign up it should go to where should go to the sign up page so it is what thing i need to do it now so now for do for do that particular stuff so what i what i need to do here is so i created a separate application for it it is a auth app so this is a folder for only authentication system. I'm just maintaining it, this particular folder. So for this one, I will create one URL. So what I will say here is I'll go to the project URLs.po file. Here I'll just say the URL. Before saying it, I need to, I have created an application that is auth app. So this I need to check whether I have inst added inside the installed app or not. So I have not added it here. So the particular application I have created at the previous class, but I have not added over here. So in my installed app, I need to add the particular authentication app. So what I'll say here is, in my portfolio, I have added. So what is the name of the app? AUTH auth app. So I need to add this also. AUTH auth and uh, app app. So now I have added the application. So now I can use this particular application inside my project. So once I have added, now I need to create one URL for it. Same how I have created for the portfolio. I am creating one more URL part to it. So I'll just say here as a URL dot file. So where I'll send all the URL part to here. So then we'll be take caring of it. So now I need to create an administration. So here see, so this particular URL, this particular URL is coming from here. First it is going to this one. This particular URL is nothing but this one, this particular part. It is taking the portfolio URLs. So portfolio is here. It is taking the portfolio URLs files. Whenever there is a, whenever I get the IP address of like this, 
it goes to the home page if suppose it is going if there is a about for about it will goes to about if there is for contact it will run the contact function same as it is i need to do it for authentication app also so what i'll do i'll just copy all this thing so i'll just copy here i'll just paste it so here what i'll do i'll just remove these two parts so now basically i need to have uh, for sign in so what i'll say here is whenever there is a request for sign in so i'll just say here as a sign in sign so sorry sign up so i have a sign up whenever there is a request for a sign up i need to run the view dot signup sign up function where the function name will be signup sign up function so one for the sign up and same for the login so i'll be having a login page and here i'll be having a logout legout logout so why i am maintaining a separate application is because i am saying you how we can uh, create a number of application in a single project and how we can connect with this uh, project urls so this is how we will be doing it so for this one login i'll be writing something function name i'll just make it as a handle login so this handle login function i'll be creating it where the function name will be handle login exactly and for here i'll just maintain as handle logout function so i'll just say it as a handle logout i'll just save it once i save you will be seeing here once i save this application i'll be getting errors so i'll just save everything so i just save so you might see here the server is started so it has not started because why it is not started means we have not connected till this particular url file i have created and i have added the code but i have not connected it right now to connect it what i need to do so here i need to first i need to connect it what i need to do say i'll just go to the urls i'll say one more application path so what is the path i'll say so here i'll say uh, authentication you can just skip anything over here like uh, authentication you can keep or uh, anything you can just say like uh, here yeah, anything you can just say so what i'll say here is authentication only i'll keep it auth i'll just i'll say it as a auth okay so whenever there is a auth whenever the whenever i click on the url path it's like uh, i mean to select it will be like 127.0.1 port number 8000 slash it will be something like this a u t h auth and if i just put on slash and it will go to this login so that means so before only one url was there now it will be looking something like this one turn auth slash login it will look something like this auth slash login like that okay so it is what i mean to say so which if that whatever the name you are giving it here so you will be you need to give same name over here okay that is one uh, path it will be created so i'll just make a maintain as auth okay so i'll just keep it as auth itself whenever there is a request for auth whenever there is a request for auth so i'll just put a comma so i'll say include my the auth apps url i need to include now is the auth app urls auth app urls sort profile so what all the urls pass is there it should take like this okay so now i'll just go to these uh, urls where is it uh, urls here i'll say you need to add the auth auth app dot urls file you need to authenticate with this particular you are authenticate uh, with this particular application whenever there is a request okay so now see i am getting an error it is saying me module portfolio views has no attribute sign up so i'm getting a uh, portfolio it, it doesn't have the sign up uh, things so basically i need to change here i need to say from my auth app from the particular auth app from this particular auth app folder i need to import this views.pofl where i'll be creating a functions so for this function i need to create it for with the same name so i'll save everything so now see i'll just create a sign up function first so i'll just i have created here right same as it is i'll just copy it i'll just go to the views i'll just paste it here so this time what it will be it will be the sign up function so whenever there is a request for the sign up function whenever there is a request for the sign up what i need to do i need to just tell, run the particular signup sign up dot html file i need to run this for sign up dot html file okay same as it is i need to have three more functions so i need to have three more functions so here i need to have a three more functions so the next function will be for the login so whenever there is a login function i need to perform the function of views the function name will be what handle login function for the login i'll write this particular function what it does means it will return the login.html page okay so which i'll be creating right now same way for the handle logout i created a logout function so whenever there is a request handle logout it will return on handle logout function so i just say whenever there is a handle logout it should uh, return it should not return the logout.html because uh, whenever there is a logout happens i need i need to send back into the login page so i'll say you need to just you can uh, send it back into the login page itself same function so i'll just save everything now so once i save all all the errors will be gone you can see in my terminal all the errors is resolved 
So now next thing, I need to create a folders. So what is the folders here? Sorry, not the folders. So here I'll just close blog as well as I'll just uh, close the portfolio. I'll just keep this uh, one application open which I'm working right now. And along with this, I'll open the template folder. Okay. So here in the template, I'll create a new file. So what the first uh, thing? Sign up dot HTML. It says you need to sign up dot HTML page. Then along with that, I need to create one more uh, file that is a login dot uh, HTML file. So sign up and login. Two things I have created. Okay. So then whatever the stuff is there in the contract, I'll just copy in my sign up dot HTML page because I'll be using same thing. So here I'll just make it as a sign up. SIGNUP sign. I'll just make it like a sign up. Okay. I'll just make it as a sign up. So here I'll just uh, tell like uh, sign in. Sorry, sign up. So I'll just make it as a sign up over here. Okay. So now let's uh, do for the sign up page first. Now let's try whether it is working or not. Come back over here. Now see if I try to click on the login page, it is giving me the empty page. That means empty it is giving why because we don't have anything inside my login page. That is why it is giving empty. Now what I'll do, I'll just uh, write for the same as it is. I'll copy from here and I'll say same thing. I need to put it inside the login. Only what title name will be getting changed and whatever the body, whatever inside the body things it will be there, that will be changed. And whatever the left hand side, the nav bar, everything will be remain same. So here I'll just keep it, this particular uh, thing as a login. Page. So I'll just make it as a login page. I'll just make it as a login. Okay, login. Now if I come back and refresh, you'll be seeing here. You can see I'm getting as a login here. Okay. So now if I just go to the same part, if I just go to the slash uh, sign in, sign up, SIG and UP sign up. If I go to the slash sign up, you can see it is going to the sign up page. If I go to the slash uh, login, it is going into the login page. Even if I just uh, tell the logout, even if I just tell the logout also, it is going to the login page. You can see all the things is working. So now I need to work from here. When I click on to here, it should go to the sign up. When I click on to here, it should go to the login page. Here means logout it should go. So that thing I need to work now. So for that one, very simple. Just go to the basic. So where is here? So here we have the particular stuff. So just I need to say in my href, I need to just add the changes. Whenever there is a logout function, I need to say go to the uh, AUTH auth, go to this auth URL, then go to what? Then you need to go to the logout URL, L O U G, go to logout URL. That's all. So then as it is, you need to say here. That means it will go to the auth and it will go to the slash logout. That means it will take this particular URL path. That means uh, it will just go to this uh, where in my project, where is the project URLs, it will just go to the auth. I, it will go to the slash path. It will take all the URLs of the auth application. It will go to the auth applications of URLs. It will just run this login function and log out if there is a request. Whichever the request the page is getting, that particular function will get run over here. That is only the things will happen. It is very simple. There is no much understanding here. There is no logic also. Just like we are adding a URL path, like how to go to that particular page. Okay, suppose I want to go to Mumbai, so I need to go from where? Suppose I am in Bangalore now. So if I want to go to Mumbai, like how the which path I am taking, but my aim is to go to Mumbai. So here the final aim is to go to where? To the HTML page, that is login.html page. The path how it is transferring is, that is our backend is handling it. Like it is going to that first, uh, it will check for the project URLs. So after the uh, project URLs, it will go to the whichever the application, whichever I have mentioned here, that particular applications URL path it will go. For that particular path, we will be having one particular function. That particular function will just run. So when the function runs, it will return me what? It will return me the destination. That is the HTML page. It will just return us. So it is only the things happens here. So now I need to go to the basic.html page. So here I need to set for the logout I have said. So same for the login. As I said as an auth, go to the auth URL and just go to the login URL path. So whenever there is a sign up, go to the IUTH auth slash SRG then sign sign up okay sign up I think sign up that's all just press ctrl s save everything from here go back now try to reload the page so now if i just go to the home page i am in the home page if i try to go into the about page i am inside the about when i try to click onto the contact i am inside the contact when i mean is when i click onto the sign up it is going me to the sign up path you can see if i try to click onto the login it is going me to the login page when i try to click onto the logout even though it is in the login page itself so like this the url path will be performing it here so now i need to de design the pages now i need to just design the page here first i'll be designing the sign up page so for the front end i need to just design it for this one i'll just go to the getbootstrap.com so here we have a getbootstrap.com go to the documentation 
go to the components so here finally i want the forms here i'll just search for the forms so when i search for the forms we'll be seeing here you can see i'm having a forms here so if i just i'm having this kind of form i'm having like this like this forms is there see when i have like this so whichever you feel good whichever you feel good just you can select that particular form and uh, you can just start using it okay it's completely your choice okay so here now what i'll say is i'll just go to the component so here uh, in the bootstrap file that we had so but here they have been little bit changes so what i'll do here is i'll just click on the forms form control so we have something like this so which is uh fine when i have like this so whichever you like you can just uh go ahead with that one so you can see i'm having like this so even there is something like this for the choosing the files and even you can use for the color pickers and uh, this was a particular uh, we call it this as a data list like suppose um, so whatever the options will be giving it it will just display it here that's all okay you can just select it suppose i'll show you an example if i want to get like this kind of form i'll just copy but i will type it from my own just i'm showing you i'll just go to the sign up so wherever there is a block body i just paste it if i just paste it and save come back here if i refresh see i'm getting a forms over here okay so like this i can just uh, add it but i will be using my own uh, thing so what i'll do here is i'll just remove the sign up page. so here i'll just apply my knowledge so just i have been working for more than many many like uh, two three two years i think with the bootstrap i know so just i'll use the shortcuts so i'll show you how to type it and what all the things you need to remember without going to the bootstrap even you can just remember first at the starting point you can just go like how i have copied how i have pasted you can do it like this also that is your choice so now i'll say one thing our this html pages are right the particular one row will be divided into 12 columns if i just select this particular thing it will divide it into 12 columns i want the particular stuff to come at the center okay i want to get the particular things at the center and for to get the thing inside the center suppose i have a 12 columns I need to I will be leaving four columns from the left hand side, four columns from the right hand side, and middle four it will be used for the sign up page. Okay, I'll keep it as a empty at the both the hand. Then uh, all the things I need to get in the center. So I'll say how to change the colors of the text, how to give the background colors. We will add an image at the top, like this. How we have an image here. So same thing, I'll add it over here, something whichever you like. So then let, let's see how we can be doing it, how we can do that particular stuff now. But if I don't have anything, the complete column is mine here now. So what I'll say, I'll just use the first, I'll say div dot container. So I want to have a container. Okay. So I'm just creating a container. So inside container, I will wrap everything. So inside the container, what I'll do. Uh, so inside the container, I'll just create one row. I'll just say it as a div dot row. So I'll just create one particular row. So inside the particular row, what I'll do, I'll just create a columns. So I'll say div dot, I want a column of the medium size. So column of MD, medium size. I want it, each particular column should be a size of four. And I want three particular columns. I'll multiply with three. If I enter, you can see, these are all the shortcuts you can use it. Rather than typing four times, you can just use this kind of syntax. So I want a div dot column. Whatever you give as a dot after the particular text, it will be taken as your class name. And uh, till here, it will be taken as your class name. And till here, it will be taking your as a class name. And if you want to multiply with three, the three division columns will get multiplied okay if i just give it as a if i just give it as this much also you can see i can if i just tell enter so you can see so many classes it got created within a just two three seconds this many classes got created so like this we can make use of uh, shortcuts okay so now i don't want this many uh, columns i just want three columns i'll just enter it so i'll just save it so for, for your understanding i'll just give it as a numbering here this is first column and this is second column and this is third column of the size four if I just save this much, the command refresh, we'll be seeing here, you can see one, two, three. Three columns will be divided like this. Okay. So like this, I can just uh, give it here. So next, what I need to do here is, um, okay. So I have given as a row, right? So what I'll do, I'll just create one now, margin. From the margin, I want to give four size. From top, I need to give it as a four size. If I refresh, you can see from the top, it has been taken a little bit size. The particular, uh, this thing has been coming over. So what I'll do, first column I'll keep it as a empty and uh, the last column is also I'll just keep it as a empty here. I don't want, I don't want to work with this column. I'll just keep it as a empty space. This particular column also I'll just keep it as a empty space. So for here front end I'll just design the particular page here. So to get the things inside the center. 
So what I'll do here is here I'll just give it as a H3 tag or anything. H3 tag. So in my H3 tag, what I'll do, mm, I'll say the particular sign. So I'll just see it as a sign sign up here. So if I just say it as a sign up here, if I command refresh, you can see I'm getting as a sign up here. That means I can just do the sign up over here. You can give any class own class here. If I want to get the colors, so I'll just give it as a I want the particular text as a uh, green color for the green we have a code that is success when i say text of success if i refresh you can see the color has been getting to green color so we have a bootstrap colors right so where is it in the component if i try to click on the buttons we have this many colors primary secondary success or danger warning and info so whichever you like you can just give it so what i'll do here is i want to get the particular color as a white color so i need to have a text white then whatever the background color bg i want to make it as a dark color and i'll just save it so let's see how it looks if i just save if i command refresh you can see it is looking something like so i'm getting like this uh, as it is okay so what i'll do here now mm, text uh, white and bg is equal to dark then i want the text to get in the center i'll just give the one more bootstrap class that is a text center t c e n t r center so if i just give it as a text center as a class name if i refresh the text will get into the center you can see how i'll be getting like this and you want the particular margin from the top and off so i'll just give the particular padding i want a padding of three if i give the padding of three if i save it you can see the padding of three got created that means like this is got created okay so whichever like however you wish you can just uh, do like that okay then um, so these all the bootstrap classes how i'll, how I'll be using it here. so then got stuck If I just come back oh. okay if i refresh the pages whether it is working it is working here so like this so uh, you can just uh, use a particular sign up here like you can just display one label like this in this particular format whichever you like you can just so everything is a blackish so i'm just using as a black color over here so like this uh, i can now uh, use okay so the next what i need to do here is so now come back to the code so the visual studio code got uh, disconnected so I'll just open again. So this is a folder. I'll just open with the Visual Studio Code. So you see, once your code is start, if I refresh the page, it don't work here. You can see the server is got stopped over here. So for that one, you need to restart the server. So I'll just uh, restart the server again. So I don't know how it got. Uh... So what I'll say here is I'll just select it as a command prompt. Whatever you like, you can just select it. So I'll just go to the CD project and I'll just enter Python manage.py server so once i enter this command the server will get started okay so now if i just come and refresh the server will be running it here you can see like this you can start the project so now i need to create one particular form so for creating a form what i'll do so i need to have the particular robot so i need to have the form control so i'll save you the shortcuts so first after you create like this give one now uh, if i just tell class so i'll say deep dot card <coughs> so i'll just give the uh, deep dot card if i just save it what it will be happen if i refresh so you can see one card is getting created here like this i am getting something like this one mark came so here what i'll say inside the card i'll say div dot uh, card right so then here i'll say one uh, so i need to take the label right so i'll just uh, take the labeling so if you want to take the label you can just take the particular label or else so uh, you can just uh, take by just show it inside the placeholder like that if i say it first i'll give the label here so what will be the label first i'll be taking a username here so i'll be taking a username so i don't want to take n number of things like username first name last name i don't want to make user to put all his details so i'll just take only the email address and i'll just take only the password only two things i'll be taking it okay so later we'll see how to add the first name last name with the particular uh, stuff so here i'll just take only the email so i'll just take the email address so i'll just take the email address I'll just take it as just I'll keep it as an email itself. I don't want to give a number of that. So I'll just keep it as an email. So here input I'll just tell. So before giving this much, I need to say this everything I need to wrap inside one uh, div dot form group F O R M F O R M form G R O U P group. So this is one bootstrap bootstrap class. How they have been created a forms inside one the form group starts here. And inside the form group, we'll be adding a form input box and whatever the label I want to display. So label I have added. So here in the for, I'll just give it as an email. Okay. 
then what else i need to give here i need to give take the input so i'll just tell the input that will be the type text itself fine here i'll give the class the booster class the booster class they have been given as a form control form control and if i just save it only this much okay label on input box and one form group we are just wrapping it here once i come if i just refresh you can see i'm getting an uh, email like this okay i'm getting like this uh, like email i'm getting and it is wrapped inside a card so if i just say inside the card i want to give some match padding i will just give it as a padding of two if i say padding of two if i refresh now you can see it's looking something like this which is fine for me okay uh, okay like done so where i'm having an email here i can just have the particular uh, stuff like this so here if i just give so something we have like email for email you can see i'm having something like logo here so if i want suppose i want to put the logo here something like this so how i can be doing how i can do that particular stuff let's see here i'll go to the basic.html so where is the basic.html is here so for the contact that i've been used this particular i i tag so i'll just copy this i tag from i to i that is a span tag sorry they have been used as a span tag okay so i'll just copy this particular span tag from where is the span is starting here and span is ending here right so i tag is starting here and i is ending here if i just copy the i tag so i'll just copy this particular i tag then i'll just go to the sign up so if i just put this particular i tag here if i just want to put it like this here if i just save it how it's look let me see very fresh you can see i'm getting like this okay so where i'm getting the logo and here i'm getting like this suppose if i want to make it little bit larger so what i can do so rather than giving this uh, label what i'll do i'll just remove the label i'll just put everything inside the span tag span 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 tag so my span tag should end where it should end it here okay and this should be at least uh, h5 if i just give it as a h5 h5 size like we have the header tags right h1 h2 h3 h4 and h5 h5 h6 till h6 tags we have the header tags if i save something like this how it look let me see if i refresh you can see it is looking fine for me so where we have email and here i have something like this okay so now i want to give a little bit space here if i just give the space like this if i refresh you can see the space got created. So now it is fine for me so i'm having an email logo so where i can just take the particular input of the like i can just uh, take the particular email id here okay so then the same thing if i have i want to put it inside the input tag so how i can do that particular stuff so like uh let me see in the bootstrap anywhere so we have something like if i just click on to the forms here f o l m form okay so if i just go to the form so we have something like this forms we have so if i want to get something like this means we need to use the this kinds of stuffs where i'll be having an email over here and the box should be coming in this particular format if i want to get like this so they have been used uh, this kind of syntax here so they have used a class uh, row that is a g3 align column center then uh, call auto they have been used so they have been providing the label over like this then one more column they have been divided and one more column that means they have created three columns for uh, three stuffs so like this we need to do it so even we can uh, try to do like that so let's see let's for now let it be like this itself later on we'll see so now we have a email so next i need to take what i need to take the particular password so this one i just copy control d i'll just do it so here i want to take the particular password yes password so i don't think there is a password uh, thing so if i just give it as a password let me see whether i am getting logo so i am not having any logo for password you can see that uh, i am not having it to get that one i can just use the particular um, tags so what is that means so i think that particular uh, stuff was here something is like api django demo mm, cdn fonts okay cdn.js so if i just go to this website cdn.js.com this is one website so where i can get the particular forms here so cdn links i can just I get it so here i'll just search for the particular what was that font font awesome so font awesome if i just search it i'll be having this one toolkit so where i can have the iconics here so you can see a number of things i have here so what i'll do i'll just go back just i'm trying it i don't know whether it works or not so that was what font awesome right so this one so i'll just uh, copy this particular uh, link tag i'll just copy now this one if i want to use this one i need to add inside where i need to add inside my basic.html inside my basic data so here i have given something like block style css 
if I want to add any of the links, I can just access this block style and I can add it. So that is why I have added given before. I'll come back to the signup.html page. Here I'll just create a book. After the title, I'll say. So I need to create one block that is a style CSS, STY style CSS. So style CSS. Here I want to add this link. So this link I need to add it inside the style CSS. So what it does means it copy it takes this particular link and it goes to the basic.html page. Wherever there's a style CSS, it will just get added over. So like this, it will just say, I'll just save it here. So if I come here, I think the something there is a FA, FA password, something is there. FA and uh, space FA password. I don't know. Let me see. If I just save it like this, if I come back here. If I refresh, I'm not getting it here. If I just tell FA, FA user. Okay, you can see now I am getting like this. So password means you can see I am getting the particular logos like that. So like this we have inside the logos whichever I like I can uh, just uh, get uh, in this particular format in that particular format. So here we have an email here we have a password right. So I am using this kind of symbol whichever you want uh, you can just use it. So if I just say it as a uh, text. So I don't know if it's there or not. I am just uh, writing like this. But it's not there. If I say here icons. So icons, so if I just sell it as icons, enter. So icon fonts, if I just use it. So let's see what is the class name of it. For font as awesome a icons, you can see. So there is a link where you can copy the fonts as awesome, a uh, CDN link. From here, you can just search it like this. So if, if I want to use for the password, which will be the more convenient, you can just uh, select it from here. So if I just search it here, I'll just search here. I'll search for the password. See, I'm getting this there. That is nothing but a key. Okay, so if they have something key. So now if I want to get this one, if I just click on to that, so what it is, uh, what will is the class name? You can see FA, FA and key. So I need to use this FA, FAS, FA key. So I need to use this kind of class. So I'll just tell FAS, FA key. So FAS and uh, FA, that is key. I'll just save it. So once I save, come back here. If I refresh, we'll be seeing like this password. Okay. So like this, we can uh, get the particular stuff. Like I got the email particular logo and even I got the particular password logo also. Okay, so like this, we can just uh, use your uh, stuff like uh, like a number of uh, CDN links and we can start building uh, this kind of pages. So then what else I need to have? I need to have one more tag that is a confirm password. So I obviously the type will be what password here. So type will be the password. I'll just save it. So here I'll need to have one more stuff that is a confirm password. So I need to confirm the particular password to store the data. So here also I'll just have a FA key. So here I'll use something different. So if I just see here FA key we have, if I just select it like this. Okay, so if I just go back. So for the password, if I want to confirm the particular password, I, I'll just use it as a lock also here. Whichever you can just you have, you can just use so this kind. If I just click onto that link. So here I need to do the FAS FA lock. So I need to use Elmo CK lock. Just save it once i say come back to the sign up page back if i refresh you can see i'm getting confirm password so like this we can uh, you can just start using it like that okay i'll just uh, give one line space here so once i say come back here to the page so if i refresh it you can see it is the uh, stuff has been created so it's fine for me if i have a sign up page i created like this email i created a password and i created this one so by using this kind of stuff you can start building your website easily so like uh, no need of taking much tension about the front end part just whichever the tools we have and uh, we have inside the website in the internet we can use such kinds of sites and we can build our pages in a very relevant manner so now what i'll do i'll just give the pacing here so what i'll do i'll just select it here 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 so i need to have the control i'll just select it uh, so i'll just select it here alt 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 so I want this particular input box. Below the particular input box, I need to have a bar, uh, margin from the bottom. I'll give it as a three. From three size, the margin bottom should get created. If I come and refresh, you can see little bit spacing I have created. I got the little bit spacing from the email as this one, as this one. Now it is looking perfectly. So now I need to have a button. So I'll just search for the buttons. So I have such kinds of button here. So see, I have a buttons here like this. So I have a large buttons, I have a small buttons like this. So whichever you like and i have a block level buttons so i want this block level button to be enabled so let's copy this one come back this one after this particular forms ends so see this is a forms where it is being started before the card ends so this is a container so this is one thing and this is one thing it is finished and here it is getting finished so once i need to have a button to click 
to button to click i have copied the code from the bootstrap so where we have a class of a grid that is a gap to the hackman i want just a single button i just want a single button i'll just save it here i'll just I'll, as a sign sign up i'll just tell it as a sign up here okay i'll just tell it as a sign up here so once i say it as a sign up it will get the sign up will be successful so here i need to just keep the particular color of the button should be dark color i don't want a black color itself so i'm just using as a black so if i just save it you can see i'm getting a sign up button over here you can see sign up sign up class i got type is equal to button but here i'll just tell type is equal to submit so whenever the and i click onto this the form should get submitted okay so this is one form so now everything i will wrap inside one particular form from here to here i'll just want to wrap everything with the form i'll right click and format document so if i just format the document all the code will be getting in, the, in this particular fashion no bugs like like no like indentations will be get created so what i'll do here is sign up is here fine card has been here so inside my card what i need to view i need to create one form i want to create this as a form of a post request this is one form where i'm collecting the data when i click on the button it should be a method it should be a post method okay so for each and every form i will just close this particular form i'll cut this form and i'll just close right after it here. so after this inside the button after the button i'm just closing the form okay like this so here i'll just mention csrf token csrf token is something which will be taken by what our uh, django forms when you are submitting a post request forms it will be taking you the csrf tokens so you, whenever you are using a method is equal to post for the forms it's mandatory to mention csrf token to it it takes the token and it will just uh, uh, form the particular uh, forms like that okay so come back and refresh now you can see i am having a syntax error so did you forward to register or load this particular tag okay so what happens means i did like this right so because of this it is giving me the error so once I click on it, so just save it, error will get resolved. So again, I'm getting the end log video for uh, forward to register or load. Where I'm getting, okay. <clears throat> okay, what happened here is uh, so here uh, something is happening. Okay, here it is been happened. So I'll just uh, put everything inside a single line. If I just give the space, now it is fine. Block CSS and block CSS is there, and I want to just block the body here. And where is the block body is here. Okay, just see the indentation sometimes uh, i'll be getting these kinds of error so if i just save it if i refresh the error is gone now okay so now you can see i'm having a sign up here everything is working fine got it so now suppose i want to get this particular box exactly at the center what i can do so for that what i can do here is uh, where is it um see we have a card right we have a container and we have a row and we have uh, inside a row what i have uh, created means so uh, i have created the particular uh, card inside the card i am having this is a card whichever the stuff is having sign up here so the sign up here starts from here exactly so here i have given class is equal to text white and that is inside the class column md4 so where exactly i am having like this right so what i'll do here is for this particular uh, complete this one i'll just uh, i can just keep the margin top also and i can just keep the margin top and i can get so i need to add some of the css for it so to add the CSS, I need to make the particular uh, class display is equal to block and uh, margin is equal to auto. When I do, the things will get into the center. If I just want to do, I can just uh, do in that particular fashion. So let's try. I don't, I'm not sure that it will work. So it is there right now like this. So what I'll do. So we have this uh, stuff, that we have a container. So container means everything container is starting. So for the container only, I'll just give it. So if I see, if I just uh, see here, if I right click and inspect, I'll just right click and inspect it. Okay, so once I inspect in the mobile, it will look some, it will look something like this. So we have uh, like this, and I click on to here, it will be like this. In the mobile, it will look something like this. Okay, so which is you can see it is very amazing, which is it's looking nice. So now I'll just select it as a responsive. I'll just select this particular sorry. I'll just select this as in this particular fashion. I'll just make it like this. I'll just use the arrow function. Now I want to select this complete. Uh, uh, complete box so i have see i have selected the complete box that is for the row, row it has it has selected for the row so now if i want to select it for the container so where is the container is here so so i'll give a little bit margin from the top i'll just give the padding i'll give the padding of two so once i give it the padding of two if i refresh so you can see it will be uh, it is coming like this so now let's see whether i can select it or not if i just see it is the arrow function 
you can just select it which particular component you want to select you can just select it okay so let me see what i have done so in the container i have created a row right okay so basically i need to select it for this particular this one itself for this particular uh, this one this particular stuff so what i'll do for this one i'll just uh, for the row i can so i have selected row right so let's try for the row so i'll just select it for this particular row i'll just select it for the row so where i have this one so if i just give something like if i just tell display i want to make it as a block so i'll just make the display is equal to block if i give the margin to auto so even if i give nothing is been uh, if i just have given these two stuffs then i want to give the margin top so margin auto i have given right if i just tell from the margin top so from the margin to the top so where is it so margin top if i just give around 100 pixel so it's work so if i any to just cancel this one to run to work with this one so it is working so it is not working so what i can do here is um, margin top right so for the particular margin from the top so margin margin top so margin top uh, so this is not working because somewhere there is some inline extra css you would have taken so it is taking in this particular format so what i'll do here is i'll just create one id for it so i'll just uh, for this particular uh, stuff where i have a particular form i'll just give one id so we have a class i'll just give the id is equal to uh, my form i'll just give the particular id is equal to my form so i'll just save it so this will be the id so i'll just save it so once i say if i refresh it so the new css will be taking so now what i'll do i'll just select it again i'll just select uh, this particular uh, id so see here i have the particular id form so i can select it here also i can just select in this particular fashion so my form i have selected so where i have the see we have a card position is relative display is equal to flex and uh, the particular background color everything they have been given the bootstrap thing they have given if i click on to this uh, particular background color i can change the number of things if i want to add the particular border to it i can just add it so if i want to change the particular background color i can just select it from here you can see the background color will get changed here so it is not like you cannot change the css of the particular uh, stuff so you can change it also according to your way you can just uh, you can even you can just uh, do the changes here okay so just a second hello ah uh, yes yeah yeah uh, no sir i am not looking for a job right now okay thank you okay sorry so here you can see you can just select in this kind of fashion you can just select like card for relative all those things you can just do it okay so this is one thing so if i want to give the css for id is equal to form so what i'll do here is i'll just give the display on uh, block so here if i just give the margin so margin auto if i just give the margin auto for this particular form uh, whether it has been came to center or not if i refresh even though you can see it is not came to the center because i am just selecting the complete row right so because of it it is not applying that particular css so better than if you want to give get the particular thing inside the center so just uh, you need to you should not use the container and row as well as column uh, concept because uh, they are given their own css inside the bootstrap if you want to change we need to remove that particular css from the css files then we need to give it on so when you are creating just directly just if you give the directly uh, card is equal to if you give the class name directly own like my form and for that you can just apply that css property display block and margin auto the things will get into the center with only the two lines of css okay so like this we can do for now what we'll do we'll just uh, put one uh, bi tax over here to get the particular lines uh, so here it is starting right so here so i'll just tell br tax so i'll just give some uh, four br tax that means one line single space if i refresh it so you can see from the top it created this line it came to the center so like this you can uh, start creating you can just uh, do it for like this so now it's fine for me the sign up here uh, is working fine so it is not working just the front end part has been designed so, so same as it is i'll just uh, copy everything from here i'll just copy Control c i'll just save it i'll go to the login page i'll just paste it so here i need to have only two things that is what i need to have the email id then i need to take the email i need to take the password and here i need to tell it as a login just i need to change the login to login here then here i'll just tell as a i'll just tell it as a login just i'll just tell here login i'll just save it 
but along with that i need to do the changes of here title name i need to change i'll just change the particular title name to hello gin login i'll just save it so here i'll just remove one br tag from here i'll just save so once i save till here so see here if i just go up i refresh it i'm having a sign up page if i try to click on the login i'm going to the login page okay login as well as sign up so you can see very in a simple manner we can uh, start uh, building our website we can see we have created a sign up page we have created a login page here okay so now what i need to do here is in my login i'll say something here after the in this before the form i'll just tell so if he's not a user i'll just tell not a user or else i'll just tell new user if he's a new user i'll just put a question mark and i'll just use the anchor tag when i need to just send him to the sign up page here sign up so i'll just tell it as a sign up if he's a new user i need to just send him back to the sign up page so here it will take the url path that is a auth slash um, or slash it will take the sign up url whenever i try to click on it once i save if i come back and refresh you can see i'm having here if he's a new user i can just click on to the sign up page it will be going to the sign up here page same here i'll just give one br tag from here enter same as it is i'll just uh, copy if he's a if he's already a user if i just come back here suppose if he came uh, to this particular sign up page if he is already a user, if he is already a user, what I need to do? So after the form, I'll just put it. So if he is already a user, I need to just send him to the login page. So here I'll just uh, make it as a login. So already user or new user, so already a login. So already a user. So if I just uh, refresh, so it will be looking something. So already a user. If he is already a user, he can go to the login page. If he is new to the, if he is a new user, he can just go to the sign up page. So like this we can uh, just uh, put it so if i just put it this thing inside the i can just put this particular stuff inside the form also so let's try how it will look so let's copy this much and let's put inside this particular form if i if i just put it inside this particular card this it will be looking like this so it is fine for me it is uh, fine so same as it is i'll uh, go to the login page so inside my login page i'll just uh, cut this much and i'll just put it here okay i'll just save it here so once i say very fresh so i'm in the login if i go to the login it will go to the login page where if he's a new user he can do the sign up if he's already a user he can just do the login page okay so like this uh, we can now uh, start building our pages okay so if you start uh, the project first thing what you need to do you need to just click on to the terminal so once you click on to the terminal so you need to just uh, run the particular server so i'll just uh, select this particular server as a command prompt so inside the command prompt first i need to just come inside the particular project directory so as i come inside the project directory i need to just uh, tell python manage.py run server so once i run this particular server the particular server will get started then uh, we can just uh, see the website inside our uh, local host okay so then in today's session we need to just uh, focus on the backend part like uh, we'll see what else uh, we need to do so how to create a database uh, tables first uh, i need to handle the sign up function then i need to handle the login function then i need to handle the logout function so just i have done the routing part so i have not uh, added any logic till right now so if i just uh, save everything from here i'll just close everything from the right hand side so only whichever the files i need i'll just open it so here so first time we need to set up the sign up .html page so i need to just set up the sign up .html page so here in the sign up .html page what i what i need to do here is so we have set here something like a form so this is a particular form right so what we have in the form we have a method and uh, we have the action so method is the post and uh, action is empty right now so here i need to collect the email address i need to collect the password uh, the two things I need to do it from here and even I need to collect the confirm password so I need to take a three input from the user so all the three inputs I need to just submit that uh, all the three inputs to my views here I need to just send and I need to perform some function here so before returning me the sign up .html page so if I just open the chrome so if I just uh, open this uh, particular chrome here so I'll just open from here so here okay just a second mm. okay 
So here what I need to do, here I need to just open 127.port uh, number 8000. My website will uh, start loading with this particular, you can see this is the stuff which we have done. So if I click on to the sign up page, the sign up page is uh, like this which we have uh, created in the last class. So now I need to just start, uh, I need to just uh, make use, uh, I need to just submit this particular form. Then I need to display some of the messages here. So what I need to do, when I click on to this button, when I click on to the sign up, I am returning a route that is uh, auth dot sign up, right? So this is the URL path which is uh, taking. So I'll just copy this URL path. So you'll just copy this particular URL. So that means it it is going to my auth app. It is going to this URL. It is just uh, going to the slash uh, sign up and it is running the sign up function. That is what it is happening, right? So I need to go my sign up. HTML, I need to say whenever I submit this particular form by filling email, by filling the password, by filling the confirm password. When I'm filling this particular form, the action it should perform what? The action it should perform this one. It should go to the slash auth URL application. And in that particular URL, we have what? We have this uh, sign up uh, path, the design up. It, this particular function should run. So I need to handle it here then. So first I need to collect the particular data. I need to collect email, I need to collect the password, I need to collect the confirm password. So here I'll just give one attribute. So what I'll give, first I'll say, until and unless uh, we are not submitting the form, like until and unless the input is not given to it, the form should not get submitted. To avoid that conditions, I can just uh, use the required functions here. So in the input, I can just give it as a required at the end. So and one more attribute I need to give, the name is equal to. So whatever the email is been, whatever the email I'll be giving it here. Suppose if I just give yak here at uh, gmail.com, if I just give this email, when I'm submitting the form, this particular email should save in one variable. So that particular variable name, I'll just keep it inside this uh, name attribute inside my input tag. So I'll just give the name is equal to email itself. I want to store the particular email it here. Then here also I'll just uh, give same attribute. So I'll just uh, give, even this should be a required. Okay. Then I need to give one more attribute here is equal to name is equal to. So here I'll just give it as a pass one. So here I'll just give it as a pass one. So the pass one in the pass one, the password will get stored. Even the confirm password also. So I'll just uh, copy this much and I'll just uh, save it here. I'll just save it. So here I'll just give it as a pass two. Okay. So even I'll just give it as here as a pass two. So then after giving as a pass two here, that means here uh, the password one will get stored into this pass one variable and the password two will get uh, stored inside this variable that is pass two. And the rest all the things will be same and the type is equal to submit and sign up here. So now as I have passed the value attributes and I have passed the action also and what is the method also I have given and a CSRF token I have mentioned it. So these are all the important things you need to notice inside the each and every form. So I'll just save everything over here. So once I save, so now let's uh, try with this one. So now see what will happen here is, so once I submit the particular sign up button, what it takes, it takes this variable email pass one as well as a pass two, whatever the value I'm passing it, it takes all the value and it will perform an action. It goes to this particular URL path that is the auth slash sign up path and the method is a post method over here. Okay. So I'll go to the views. So here I need to just uh, specify the particular method. I need to just check whether what is the particular uh, method I need to just uh, give it here. So here, first I need to just check with the, what is the particular, uh, whether it is a request, post request or a get request. So I'll say, whenever I'll use a if condition, I'll just tell if the particular request dot method. So whenever the request dot method is equal to is equal to, whenever I get the particular request of what, whenever I get the particular request of post method, what I need to do, I need to just get all the attributes. First, I need to get the particular email address. So I'll just tell, uh, I need to just get the email. So I'll just tell, I need to get the particular email. Then I need to get the particular uh, password of it. Then along with that, I need to get what? I need to just tell the get the confirm password. So anything you can give. Okay, so anything you can variable, whatever you want, you can just uh, name to your variable names, okay? But it should not be the particular, like, uh, you cannot give this uh, render as your variable name, okay? It should not be the keyword. So I'll say, when I, whenever there is a request dot method post, I need to grab all the values of it. I need to take the email value, I need to take the pass one, I need to take the pass two value here. So I'll just uh, say here, so when I need to get the all the value, right? To get the values, I need to just tell, so from this particular request, whichever the request we have got, I need to get a post and I need to get the particular value. Okay. So from here, I need to get the what? Email. From request.post.get, I need to get the particular email address of it. So I'll just say, uh, what is this email? 
I have specified this is nothing but it is coming from here. So where it is coming from the name is equal to map. So name same as it is for the past one and past two I need to get it. So I'll just go to the views pack. So I'll just uh, copy this one and I'll just uh, paste it and I'll just paste it here also. So I'll remove the double equals. So here I need to get what? Here I need to get the past one. Here I need to get what the confirm password is a variable that is stored into a past two variable. So password is nothing but this is the past one. So which is a valid waiting for. Then same way, what is this past two? The past two is also what? The which is the value is been uh, getting uh, passed over here. That is past. Whatever the value will be passing it here, that will just uh, get it from here and it will just store it here. So let's print and see whether the values are coming or not inside the front end part. So I'll just use the print. I'll just tell uh, get email. So I need to print all the values. So I need to just uh, print the get email. And I need to just uh, sorry. So I need to get this particular get confirm password also. Okay, so I need to get this particular value also. So now I'll save. So after getting save, I'll just uh, refresh the page. Sorry, sorry. So I need to just uh, refresh the page. So then I need to just well let's try one now particular email. I'll just tell Anis at gmail dot com. Then see if I try to click on to the sign up, it is asking me please uh, fill out this particular field. I'll just give the name. I just give the name here. If I just click on to the sign up, you can see the form got submitted. Okay, the form got submitted. Whether the value has been coming inside my terminal, you can see the value has been coming over here because I have printed the statement. So whenever there is a request method post, then only this particular it will go inside this particular block, and you see the indentation. In Python, the indentations are mandatory. So you can see automatic. If I just click after the colon enter, automatic the four spaces has been created from the line it is getting started. Okay, for this particular def function also, if I just enter it here. See one, two, three, four. The four line spaces is called as an indentation. If suppose I am just removing one indentation space also, see it is giving me the error. See here in the terminal, I will be getting a error here. See indentation error expected a indent indent block. So you need to make sure that is your indentations are correctly inside your uh, Python code. Okay. So indentations matters a lot here. Save. So now we are getting the all the values. So I am getting an email address from the front end part as well as in the uh, from the front from the front end to the back end. I am just uh, getting it all. So what I will do here is so now I need to just uh, pass them. I need to first check whether the password is not equal to whether this one. If this password is equal to this one, uh, whatever the password I am filling here, as in the here as well as in the confirm password. So that is inside my sign up. So I'll just uh, say type is equal to password here. I don't want to show the password to the users. So I'll just give type is equal to password. Then whatever I'll be typing it here, it will be uh, not visible. So if I just refresh it, now see if I just tell whatever anything, it is not uh, visible to anyone. Okay. So like this, uh, we can uh, just do it. So now come back to the views dot viewable. So let's uh, write all the code now. So now what is the thing I need to take here is first I need to check whether uh, first I'll remove this uh, print statement. I don't want. It. So what I'll say. First, I'll just check whether if the password is not equal to pass one or pass two. So I'll just tell whatever the get password. So whatever the get password is there, whichever I am getting it. If it's not equal to get confirm password, get confirm password. So I have installed some of the extensions, so it is giving. So what you need to do means you need to just write exclamatory and you need to do like this equal. This is only the two things which I have pressed. So these two things is uh, converted into that particular symbol in my laptop. Okay, so don't get confused in that. So I'll just check whether if this particular conditions apply. If the two conditions, if this particular condition apply, whatever the value is here and whatever the value is here, if it's not equal, then what I'll say, I will just uh, send him the messages. I'll say messages. So I'll just import the messages later. First, I'll just like like this. So message info. So I'll just use the info color. So that is a blue color. So I'll just tell what is that. First argument, it will be a request. Second, I'll just tell here in the what message I need to pass. It over here that I will just display. So I'll say uh, messages dot info. So first it is a request it is checking, and here I'll say the password is not matching. The password is not matching. Okay. So I'll say something like this. The password is not matching. So here I will be getting like this. So if this particular condition is like this here, then what I'll say I'll just return. I'll just redirect him. So I'll just uh, redirect the particular thing. So I'm just importing the redirect. You can see. It automatically it imported the redirect here. So I'll redirect him where I need to redirect him to this particular page. So which is the page here? So this is the page I need to redirect him. So auth dot slash login. So sorry, not this one. This is the page I need to redirect to him. 
I want the particular user that is uh, what I need to do means if this particular condition is passing I don't want to get, take a data of the user I need to display an error message that is password is not matching and I where I need to send back to him I need to just send back to him to the same page here itself so by this particular message whatever I have written in, as a second argument so this is one thing so then so then I will just check once again so I'll just check whether the email is present already in my database or not so if the email is already present I need to say the email is already taken please use the different email so here what I'll say so I'll just uh, try one condition what will be the try condition here so I'll just try if the particular user if the particular users dot objects dot get so I'll just get the particular username so first I'll just check with the username if this particular username is equal to first I need to just pass this particular get email so whatever the email is there I'm using as a username in my uh, for the sign up purpose so if I'm just checking one condition so what is this particular user so we need to import some of the stuff at the top the user is a inbuilt module in uh, Django so where uh, we have a default uh, model of the user where we can uh, keep the data of the authentications like whoever have done sign up the data I can just store it inside this uh, user table so first I need to import it so I need to just tell import from Django dot country dot auth dot model so in this particular this one I need to import the particular user stuff so this is only I need to import it same as it is I'll import some of the stuff still so I'll just tell from Django dot country dot auth so from this particular auth I need to just import uh, sorry I need to just import the authenticate so I need to authenticate this I need to import then I need to import the login function then along with that I need to import the allowed stuff also these are all the inbuilt functions of the uh, Django so with this particular library we can just uh, make use of uh, all this the same thing I need to import messages also so for the messages I need to just tell from Django dot contrib so from the django dot contrib i need to just import what i need to just import the messages so from this messages i need to import it so these many stuffs i need to import it first before using this one so after i i import it now i'll see this is the user is nothing but this user i have imported this message is nothing but this is the messages which i am be using it here so i'm just checking with this uh, first condition here so after uh, so my, i need to just uh, pass this one condition so here I will say if this particular condition is failed, passes, so I need to just uh, say in the warning method. So I will just give one warning with the same request which I am getting it. So I will just tell here is email is taken. Email is taken. Okay. Something you can, whichever you may want to message, you want to pass the message, you can just pass it over here. So this is one condition. So after that same, uh, I, mean, I need to return him to where? I need to just uh, return him to I need to just return him to redirect to this or the last sign up page okay so then if this condition passes this will happen except I need to just pass one condition so try and accept conditions will be there inside the Python right so we have a try and catch in the Java so in the Python we have try and accept condition so exception as identifier I'll just pass it as an identifier so then I'll just start and pass okay so I'll just pass it so this is only one the condition I'm just taking it okay so the condition is what if the already username is there if already the with the same email if someone else have been logged in i no need to use the same email because already it has been used that is a something like a division error one divided by zero error to overcome of that particular error so i am using here and a try and accept condition okay so that can be handled only using try and accept condition okay so this is one condition is there so this is one thing i need to check it so when all the thing is perfect when uh, the, this is also not getting this also this condition passes means it not go to this function again if this particular condition is true that means it will just uh, give me the error password is not matching if this condition is false it will check for this particular condition so if suppose this condition is getting true the so whatever the message i am passing that will display to the user and it not run, it will just neglect all other uh, lines of code so if this condition is also false this condition is also false what I need to do I need to just save the particular user information inside my database so I'll just say it here as a my user is equal to I'll just say it as a user from the whatever the object is there so object dot create user I want to just create the particular user so I want to just create so user dot object dot create user so I want to create a user 
So first here I need to pass what is the email address. So whatever the email I'm getting, I'll just pass the particular email as a username. Then same as it is second attribute is if this first attribute is a user, username. Second attribute is a email ID. Third attribute is a password. So what I am doing for the username as well as for the email attribute, the same value I am keeping it. Okay, the same thing I am keeping. So username will also be the email and email address also will be the email itself. So the value will be same inside the database. So third one, third argument, I need to just pass the password. So any password, I just pass it. So I'll just pass the get password, whatever the, the value it has been stored from the form which I am getting it, just I am just passing it over here. So once it has been done, so what I'll just say is I'll just tell my user dot save. I'll just save the particular username here. So I'll just save the username. So with the saving, what I'll say, I'll just tell messages dot success message I'll say. So success message means green color it will be. So first it will take the request. Second, I'll just tell it as a user is, user is P-R-E-A-T-E-T-D created. Please log in. Please log in. So, okay, so I'll just tell message dot uh, please log in. So this message I'll display. So now I'll return him to where I'll return uh, redirect him to. So I not I don't want to redirect him to where I don't want to redirect him to the sign up page. So with this particular message, I want to redirect him to where I need to redirect him to the login page. So I just want to redirect him to the login page. So this is what the code is been uh, running it here. I hope you have understood this uh, code. What I have been typed here. It takes an email and it will check check for the password then it check for the username if the both the condition is false this whatever the it just create a user and it redirect to me to the login page okay so it is what things is happen so here one thing i need to first uh, do it i'll let's go to the get bootstrap.com to display the messages i need to have a front end uh, thing so what i'll do i'll just go to the alert messages here see this is an alert message which i need to use it here so we have something like a uh, dismissible level alert so this is a dismissible alert so it is with the icons so dismissible alert you can see this kind of alert messages so whatever the message i am passing password is not matching user is not being created it should something it should display over here like this with this particular condition so i'll just copy this uh, code so i need to use this particular code so i'll say here i'll just go to my um, uh, template so where is the particular uh, uh, the particular message i need to exactly where i need to pass just pass the particular message so what i'll do here is I'll just uh, go to this particular uh, basic.html tool. Okay. So what I'll say, if any messages are there, so if any messages are there, you can just display to this uh, on the top of the body. So what I'll say here is uh, I want to display the messages inside the sign up page. So here I need to just display the message here. So below here I need to just display the uh, below the sign up here. Below this particular uh, stuff I need to display the message message. So what I'll say, I'll just uh, paste the code here. I'll just paste the particular code. So here, what I'll say, here I need to just uh, apply a for loop here. So see, if I just save it this much, I'll just save this much, and if I just save it, so how it's look, you can see. If I refresh the pages, so you can see here, sorry, if I just go to the sign up page, you can see I'm getting a message over here. So if I click on to this, it is just getting evaporated. So whenever there is a message, just only at that time it should uh, display. So now it is not uh, working like that. If I refresh also, it is whenever I open the page, whenever I open the sign up page, the messages are coming. In. It's a default uh, message. Now I want to make it uh, this as a dynamic. To make it dynamic, I need to apply the particular uh, for loop here. So I'll just tell for. So I'll just tell for message. So for the particular message in messages, M E S S A G S messages. So for the message in messages, I need to just display the particular. Uh, I need to just run this particular for loop. So here I need to just see warning is there. So here I need to just pass the color name. So something I have given here. So what is here? Message dot dot info dot warning I have given, right? So dot warning and dot info is what? So this is nothing but it is just a color names I have just passed. So that particular uh, thing I need to just pass it as a dynamically here. So first I need to just tell what is this message tag? M E S S A G message dot tax. So whatever the message talks, the whatever the message is there, that dot tax. Tax is nothing but it will just take this particular uh, tag, whatever the things I have been passing, that will just take it over there. So message tax, and here I don't want to display this holy glucoman, okay? And what and what is the default message? I don't want to display. Here I just want to display the message which I'm getting from the backend. So I'll just uh, use it as like this. I'll just say it as a message. Whatever the message you are getting, just throw the message over here, and whatever the message colors are is been there, you need to just display it over there. So just save it like this. So same for loop, I'll just copy and uh, I'll just put it inside the login also. So 
so below the login page i'll just below the login now tag history tag i am just pasting the same for loop just i'm adding a for loop here then i'm just changing the message tag and here i'm just passing the message which i'm getting from the packet so i will save everything then what else you need to do here is you need to just go to your settings.pf file you need to just go to the settings.pf file and you need to import some of the stuffs so here you need to import some of the things here so first what i need to import here is i need to just tell uh, from the particular django dot django dot country from the django dot country dot messages i want to import the particular constants as messages okay e s s a g e s messages so i want to import this constant as messages this one thing you need to do then what last you need to do here is you need to add the particular message tags here so at the bottom i am just adding the message tag so i am using something like message tag right so that is just to pass a dynamic things so i need to just pass the particular message tag so i'll just say whenever i am using something so because of error message it doesn't take the red color so i'll just change the particular error thing to danger here so whenever i am using a dot danger it should take a color that is dot error so dot error is nothing but this particular error so see this is a error message so we have a dot danger so whenever i am using it so if i am just use a danger means it is not uh, taking in the django so what i am taking so rather than taking a danger color i will be using a message dot error okay so at that time it will take the red color inside the whenever i am displaying the error messages so this is only one thing you need to do so just save it so i hope everything uh, is clear so let's try with the uh, so creating this one so i'll refresh the pages everything is working so user is created please log in so you can see i'm getting user is created please log in so i refreshed right so it got created so now let's uh, create one more user i'll just tell erk pro coder at uh, gmail.com so i want to display wrong password now first i want to just check whether condition is working or if i click on the sign up you can see password is not matching okay password is not matching i am getting it here so now if i just give it the right password i'll just give my name and i'll just give the my name here if i try to sign up you can see the user is been created please log in so you can see they are saying me the user is created please log in to me so now let's uh, see where is the data is getting stored so i want to see where is the data is getting stored right whatever the data i am passing where is the data is getting stored so for that one you need to go to this 127.admin you need to go so this is a port number 8000 you need to go to the slash admin administration if i enter it here you can see i am getting a django default administration this is the beauty of django so we have a default administration panel in django so where i can log in as a super user so here i am if i just tell slash admin it is going to this condition page so now if i try to log in with the username i will just tell rk pro quarter at uh, gmail.com i'll just give the password so it is the saying me uh, please enter the correct username and the password for a staff account i not both the field must be case sensitive that means this is only for the administration the person who is doing sign up here they cannot log in with their credentials inside your administration so this is a something like only for the admin administration only for the super user so here to create this credentials i need to create i need to go to the terminal new terminal i need to create the particular super user uh, here so i'll just uh, go first inside i'll just tell cd project i'll just go inside the project directory now here i need to create a super user to create a super user we have a command python python manage dot py create super user so this is a command to create a super user so it is asking me the username so i'll just give the username as erk i'll just tell erk at uh, gmail.com so i'll just give the password erk and erk enter and press y and enter it so the super user got created successfully so just the password won't give won't be get visible just type and press enter it okay so it is saying me it is similar to the username i don't have any problem so i have given as a by and i entered the so super user is created now so once it is created so same uh, username and password you need to give it here so once i logged in you can see it is logged in inside my administration okay so this is a, this particular website administration is been done here so if i just click on to the here user so here something i was importing so what i was getting imported here is uh, so this is something i was imported user so this is user is nothing but this particular database table i was imported here so once i click on to here you can see all the data here so 
so first one was ARK procoder at gmail.com so i have ARK procoder and anis at gmail.com and ARK so as ARK is a super user it has given me inside the green signal so rest all the users are a normal users okay so they, they, they don't have any access to enter into this database administration if you want to give them access you need to open their account you can see the password is also been encrypted so you need to just make it as a staff user as well as a super user and then you just press all the save so once you are giving the privileges to the normal user to enter inside your dash dashboard so you need to enable these two buttons and you need to click on to the same okay so this all permission that per particular default permissions also you can give it to the user so this all comes um, defaultly inside the django so we have a cred functionality cred is a create update delete functionality so whenever you like you can delete the particular user so i'll just delete the particular user from here so you can see i'll just delete the two users means i'll just uh, select it if i just click on to go if i just delete this one you can see the user got deleted over here so now i can just uh, create one more user i'll just tell erk gmail.com and i'll just tell ANES, ANES, sign up so you can see csr verification fail so a n e s so a n e e s if i just click on to enter so you can see user is got created if i come back and refresh so you can see i'm getting the uh, particular the data has been getting stored over in my dashboard so if i try to create with the same uh, if i try to just create with the same username the same email id if i just give any password so if i just see password is not matching so if i just try to give it the same username i'll just tell a a and a a if i try to click on to sign up you can see email is already taken that means it is going to this particular condition this particular condition is getting passed so it is giving me the message that is email has been taken so like this uh, the particular uh, data has been passing it over here so same as it is i need to do it for the login now so here is the login is here so login for the login i have this form so i have a particular form is starting where it is just uh, starting uh here so it is just starting it here the form is getting started in here it is taking an email address and it is taking a password so i need to just tell same uh as it is i need to just tell the particular action should be auth and login so as it is i need to give it here type is equal to email i need to just give it the type should be a email here input and here also i'll just give the name is equal to so name is equal to email i'll just save it then i need to just tell it as a required so i'll just say it as a required over here same as it is here also i'll just give the name is equal to pass one then even i want this particular thing should be uh, required this particular field should be also required okay this should also be required so login is been done so whenever i try to click on this button it takes the email address it takes a password of it and it will go to the action uh, that is that is all slash login so if i just save everything it will just go to the uh, views.po file it will just run this particular function here so here also same thing i need to just tell same i'll just copy these two lines of code i need to just uh, paste it so same thing i'm saying if the request is a post request first i need to get the particular email then i need to get the particular password so the email will be getting from the email will get stored here and it's just getting the email and the password the value it will be stored in the password variable it is just uh, passing to the views by the name password and it is getting stored inside the get password over here so now i need to just uh, handle the particular uh, request so here simple so just i need to authenticate it here so i need to just authenticate the particular uh, password so here i'll say whatever the my user whatever the my new user will be there i'll say whatever the authenticate which i have imported above this authenticate is nothing but this i have imported so when i am authenticating it then i will give the login privileges so first i need to authenticate so here i'll just authenticate the first first i will authenticate with the username so the username should be equal to the get email whichever i am getting it then comma then i need to just tell a password so this password should be what this password should be equal to this particular pa get password so whatever the get password value will be there i need to just match with this get password or this one so now i'll just check one condition i'll just tell if the particular my user whichever the my user i is not no so when this particular condition is there if the particular if it is a true value if i am getting some of the output for it then what i'll give if there is a if there is a, after authenticating if there is a user i'll give him a login privileges so i'll just give the login access to him i'll just tell login so for whom i need to give the login so i need to take a request first 
then second argument for this particular my user i need to give a login privileges so i'll just give the login privileges to the my users then i'll say messages dot success message i'll just give the messages dot success so i'll just tell take a request topic so after taking a request i'll just tell login success login success i'll just tell it as a login success then i'll just uh, return him to so where i need to return return redirect him to where i'll just redirect him to the home page okay so i'll just redirect him to the home page itself so then if this condition is there fine else i'll use a else condition also so wherever your if condition is getting started there only you need to use the else statement if you are writing a if con else condition for this particular main function if you need to write it here if you are writing else condition for this particular statement you need to write it here so this is all the python basics you need to know it so if the kind if the if there is a if the, the particular authentication is not happened so i need to just display the error message i'll just say message dot error so i want to just display the message error that is a uh, take a request as a first argument then i'll just tell as a invalid credentials invalid invalid uh, credentials i'll just tell it as a invalid credentials that's all so here i just save it here till here so let's say whether it is working or not i'll just save everything so now the messages i want to display in the home page also so i'll just copy these uh, messages stuff from here they're coming in the home html page so here also i'll just display after the block hero function so we have a block body function so yeah block b o d y body so block body is there right so we have a block body also so instead of block body function what i'll display so where is it home home function is here right so instead of block body i need to just uh, display the message if there is a message it will display or else it doesn't display it over here so after login success it is redirecting to the home page right to display the messages we need to have this for loop with the alert messages uh, front end code including it so i'll just save everything after saving everything come back here let's try with the user if i click on the login now if i tell ark at uh, gmail.com so if i just give as password as a ark if i try to click on the login you can see invalid credentials i'm getting it here if i give the perfect password so ark pro code at gmail.com then if i give the password of that particular uh, thing if i log in so you can see it has been logged in you can see i'm getting as a login success to my dad home page that means the login has been done and it is redirecting to the home page that means sign up is also working and uh, the login is also working so next we need to display with the logout function so for the logout it is very simple so no need of any tension taking any tension of it so for the logout what we have given here is we have a url here it is a logout stuff url we have so that will take care of the handle logout function right so what here i need to do here is inside the basic so it is a basic whenever i try to click on to the logout it is taking this path so i'll just say good go to the views so we have a handle logout function so here just i need to just with the same request i need to use the inbuilt function of the logout i'll just pass the whichever the request i'm getting i'll just pass the request so what i'll just tell before doing this i'll just tell messages dot success so i'll just tell message dot success i'll with this particular request i'll just tell logout success logout success and it should go to the login dot html page so i'll just save this much so once i save this much so see here if i try to click on to the logout function you can see logout is been success and it is going to the login page so now what i'll do i'll just uh, check i know i want to i want to get to know right whether i am logged in or not logged in to understand that particular part of a uh, thing i need to just uh, make some of the changes it here like if the login is done i want to show the welcome username wherever there is a alex smith i want to display welcome username i want to just display the welcome the particular username and i need to show only a logout button to him i don't want to show him a sign up button and even i don't want to show him a login button also so that thing i need to just uh, do it uh, now so see how i'll be doing that one i just save all i just close all the pages from here only open your uh, basic.html page where you are getting this the uh, particular uh, stuff so here i am getting the alex smith right so if there is here i don't want to display the alex smith uh, all those uh, things over here so i want to display what is the username of it so i want to just display what is the particular uh, username i am to display here so i'll just tell rather than showing alex smith 
I'll just display the username here. So I'll just tell welcome. I'll just use that as welcome. So here I need to just pass the one thing. I'll just uh, pass like this. So I'll just tell if the user is authenticated, it will be that user dot username. Okay, I'll just tell user dot username. I want to display it here. Okay, with the rather than displaying the so we, we are not taking a first name and last name right now, right? So I'll just display the email it down over there. So it will display something like this. So images we'll see later how to deal with the images. So now it will display like this user dot username. So if I come back here, if I refresh, see I'm having only welcome. I am not having any username uh, here. Okay. So once I logged in, the username will get show over here. So that and along with that, I need to just uh, take care of this particular stuff. So I'll just check one condition. So what is the condition here? So I'll just check whether the user is authenticated or uh, not. Okay. So for that, I'll just use this condition. So here I'll just tell if if not user is authenticated. I'll just tell if not request dot user dot is authenticated. Okay, if user is not authenticated. Suppose if the user is not authenticated, I want to show him the sign up and login page. I want to just show him the sign up and login page. I'll just cut it and I'll just uh, paste it over here. Okay, if the user is authenticated, I'll just show him the logout page. That means if the user is already logged in, I not to show. I don't want to show this particular two lines of code. Just I want to show him the logout. So I'll just save all. So this is only the logic um, behind that one. Okay, just very simple one. If the user is not authenticated, that means the user is not signed in. The user is not logged in. I want to show him these two buttons. If the user is logged in, I want to just show him a logout button. So that's all I need to do it here. If I refresh, see there is a no logout button here. There is no logout button. So once I logged in, if I once I logged in, once I just logged in, a r k t r o c o d e r at uh, gmail dot com. E n e yes. Once I logged in, you can see I am getting welcome a r k pro coder at gmail dot com, and you can see I am only displaying what I am just uh, only displayed with the logout name only. Only I am just displaying the logout here. Okay. So like this, uh, you can uh, just uh, display some of the stuffs over here. Okay. So even you can uh, display little stuffs over also here. So I think we need to use uh, the username. I need to use something truncate like that. So only that we'll see later. Like uh, only little, like if I want to just show only the few characters. Only I want to just show the few character this much. I can show that also over here. Okay. So now here I'll just make it as a welcome user dot first name. So I'll just say it here as uh, something like mm, I'll just show something like uh, okay let's keep it as a welcome itself for right now or let it be new no problem so later we can just change it so I'll just have like this and I'll just keep it like that okay so you can see welcome this stuff is getting and logout button is showing if I logged out so now all the thing is getting the username is not visible so even I can just do the new sign up here so I'll just tell um, uh, I'll just tell test art test at uh, gmail.com test at gmail.com so where is it so so test at gmail.com so here i'll just get as a test then test so just sign in sign up so once you see the user uh, is created please log in so if i just tell test test at uh, gmail.com and uh, test test if i logged in so you can see i'm getting welcome test at gmail.com and i'm getting a logout button you can see the login success has been displayed over here so like this we can uh, just uh, see the authentication system back end understood any doubts we are here so if i refresh the page you can see it is giving me the authorization see you are logged in as a test at gmail.com but not authorized as this particular step so what i'll do i'll just log in with the uh, Authentication. I'll just log in with this particular credential. Once I log in with that one, you can see welcome ERK. Even the particular ERK as well as the ERK as the email address is there. Right? I can log in with this particular credentials also inside my home page. Okay, you can see welcome ERK. I'm getting it here. Understood? Any doubts still here? <coughs> so any doubts, guys? Understood? Right? How to sign in? How to sign up? And how to log out? It is a very simple uh, thing okay so just we need to write this logic for the login and this is a logic for the sign up function and uh, this is a logic for the handle logout function okay very simple one any doubt still here <laughs> any 
Any doubts, guys? <clears throat> Any doubts? So no one is replying. Why? I can see inside. See, I can just see it. Your code it over here. I have the two laptops over here. So don't uh, think I am not seeing the chat thing. Okay, fine. <laughs> Okay, fine. Now I'll say you how to create a database tables. So now I want to create one contact as table. So whatever the contact is there, right? So I want to take a data of the contacts from the user. Then I need to store it inside my own database table. So here, see here, we don't have any like that. So if I go to the home page, I don't have any database table so that if anyone try to contact me, if anyone try to contact me uh, with the so submitting the particular form to store the data, we need to have a model start pure file one particular uh, database files i need to have right so one database table i need to have it so to that one i need to just create one uh, table here so that one i'll just create inside the um, project itself so this is only for the authentication app so i'll just keep only this much stuff inside my build so for only this one so now one application has been completed so the authentication app is completed now we'll focus on the portfolio that uh, like uh, we'll focus on creating a database table for the models so what i'll say so here in the models so i'll say something like uh, i'll just create the class so i'll just create a particular class so in the dbms you would have created a class table create table table name and you were giving the attribute name the where care of 30 character email of email character or 40 character like that so in this uh, thing it is different so we need to just tell class and the table name i need to make whatever the class name i am just giving that will be the table name so here it will take a attributes that is a model stored model it will take this attribute and it will return something first it will be have i want to have a name then i need to have an email address to be get stored then i need to have a phone number to be taken from the user then i need to get the description of the user so i just tell description of the user here so for the name i need to make it as a character field so here i'll just tell model stored care field so here maximum length i will giving here so the maximum length i will give it as a 25 letter can be a character field that is the maximum length of the name can be there so same as it is so model stored email field for this particular email i want to just store it so here i am just giving as a model stored emails field then i'll just give the phone number so here i'll just tell model stored uh, even you can give it as an integer field so it's your choice so i'll be giving as a character field itself so here the maximum length can be 10 character okay so the because the 10 phone number right so i'm just keeping as a character field and one you can give it as an integer field also so for the description obviously the description will be more so here i'll just give it as a model start text oh, sorry model dot text field so i want to keep it this as a text field over here so i'll just keep it as a text field here so each and every function uh, suppose i want to return um, any like who is the name of this so what i'll create here is so now i don't want to create anything I'll just uh, keep this much itself so that I'll show with an example once I am started. So now I have created a class contact. So the table name here we have a name, email, and phone number, and we have a description also. So now once it is created, now I need to do migrations and migrate it here. So I created a table name that is a contact with the four attributes. Now I need to just uh, save this inside my database administration. So for that one, what I need to do, I need to run the migrations here. So what is the migrations command? I need to just tell pydh1 python manage.py make migrations i want to enter this command python manage.py make make m i g r a t i o n s migrations enter it you can see for the migrations for the portfolio has been applied and the created the particular contact table has been created it has been showing it here so then i need to enter one more command python manage.py migrate so once i enter this migrate command you can see the migrate will apply for the contact table that is a pyth one python space manage manage dot py manage dot py space m i g r a t migrate okay so this is what the thing i need to run 
So once I enter the command, if I come back here, if I refresh, so even though you can see the thing is not getting uh, the contact table is not visible here. So now for to get visible, I need to go to my administration of the portfolio. First, I need to import it. I'll just tell from star import. Uh, sorry, I need to just tell from dot models. I need to so, sorry, uh, like uh, the network is uh, lagging. Okay, so now it is proper. So, so from the dot models, I need to import what? I need to just import star. I can just tell import everything. I want to from the models. I want to import star. I want to import everything. So yeah, I'll just tell admin dot site dot register. So I want to register the model. So which is the model? Contact model into register. I'll just copy the model name and I'll just go to the administration and need to just register the contact table. So once I register, if I come back refresh, you can see the portfolio and the contact is been visible. If I open, you can see I'm having nothing here. So whatever whoever contacts me, the data will get. I want to store it over here. So even I can add the data manually name email phone number as well as description and you can save it manually also as uh, the database uh, the django will provide the django database will provide as the correct functionality create update delete and view functionality but i don't want to perform the operation from here the person who is trying to contact me from here that particular data i want to just store it over here and along with that i want to send the email authentication for them if anyone try to contact me, I need to get uh, for my email ID. I need to get the particular data. Whatever the data is getting stored inside my administration, I need to get the particular information to my email ID. As I am the owner of this website, if anyone try to contact me, the data should be stored here also, and the data should one copy of the data should get to me, and one copy of the email uh, like thanks email or like thanks response, it should go to the person who is uh, contacting me. So that particular thing we'll see in the next class. So we'll see like how that can be done. So now we have created, just we have created a database table for the contact here. Okay, so this is how we can just create a contact table database over here, like that. Okay. Understood till here. <clears throat> Understood, right? So I'll just uh, log out from here. If I log out, if I just go to the home page, so I'll be getting this kind of page. So still a number of things we need to do. So we need to see about the block pages and we'll see how it can be changed, how can the images can be changed, how to add the images dynamically, how to send the email authentication. So all those things we'll see in the next class. So now I am inside where I'm inside the portfolio dynamic website. So to run the project, I need to just come inside this uh, parent directory of the project folder. Then I need to run this uh, manage.py file. So I'll just come inside the project directory. So I'll just tell as a cd project. Then I need to run the server python manage.py run server. So once I run this command, the server will get started. So let's see what all the things we have done in the previous session. So in this session, we'll complete about the contact uh, and uh, we'll say, I'll see how to load the particular images in the website and uh, how to create a block pages and all so i think i have completed the authentication system so it's very long time which uh, we have done so let's see so here is the contact us table right so we need to take information from the front end then we need to save the particular data inside our back end so we need to create a particular form over here so we'll uh, create a form so let's the uh, what is happening okay so let's the server starts so here we need to just create a contact as table right so where i am getting uh, this kind of stuff so for what i will do here is in the contact as so same as it is how there was in the login page so login.html page so everything i'll copy same uh, here like uh, whatever the things is there i'll just copy everything same as it is i'll just copy i'll come back to the contact.html file I'll just save it. I'll just uh, paste the same thing over here. So for here, so here I have the title name. I need to just change it as a contact. Then uh, let the same everything let's be the same. So here what I need to do. So rather than uh, having a login here, I'll just tell as a contact as. Okay. So I'll just show it uh, in, as a contact as thing. Then we have a messages to display the messages uh, for loop. Then we have this card. 
so where uh, I have email as well as the password and login things so we'll see what all the things we need to change it here so here I don't want to uh, create a new user here I don't want this one sign up so I'll just remove from here to here okay then uh, we need to have a contact button like I need to have a submit button here so I'll just make it as a submit I'll just save it then along with that what all the things you need to take it here so in the previous class we have uh, I have said you how to uh, create a models so this was the models which we have created a database table where we have a name where we have an email and a phone number as well as description so where I can uh, just have these four fields so we have created a database table then uh, we need to store the front end data whichever the person is uh, contacting us inside this particular table that is nothing but a contact table okay so let's see so our server is being started i'll just press control and click on to this link you can see the website has been uh, started it is just running so this is a website which it is uh, running right so where i have the lx may something i am getting it here so whichever the photo is there i can change later so we have created all the from the left hand side so here we have a social media links we can add it later and here i am getting as a welcome so now i'll just click on to the login so if i click on to the login you can see i am getting the login page which we have uh, created later so here i don't know what is the password what is the thing i'll just click this one ark at uh, gmail.com so just tap ERK. so if i try to log in it so invalid credentials I don't know what is the thing I've been so let's check with this email ANES at uh, gmail.com then A N W -E S. So if I log in, even it is getting invalid credentials. So if I just tell ARK proporter at gmail.com and ARK, I'll just copy this uh, email. So even I am getting this as invalid, so I'll just check. A N W -E S okay so i think this is works okay so uh, this is the particular uh, i am just logged in as a super user okay, right so logout is working sign up sign in and all always uh, that login also working everything is working now comes under the contact page which we need to work on it so we have a contact page here so here i have email and i have a password so i don't need to so i need to take a name i need to take an email and phone number as well as a description right so these four things i need to take it so what i do I'll go to the contact.html page. So first I need to take the name. So I'll just, uh, so what I'll do, I'll duplicate this one. So from here to here, I'll just duplicate. Okay. And I need one more, I'll just duplicate again. And password I don't need. So see, let's see here. First I need to have an email, right? So sorry, the name. So I'll just take it as a name here. So I want to just tell a name. So I need to take the person name. So I'll just take it, tell it as a name over here then here the type is equal to text so i'll just keep it the type is equal to text here so i'll just keep the particular type is equal to text and same form control will be same and here to take the name i'll just uh, make the attribute name is equal to name itself anything you can do but it should be unique over here and i'll set as a required so here i have the box box envelope right so let it be so what is this envelope so we have been used the uh, okay so here we have uh, if a okay we have given the particular class so let's see the class i will give here we have used as a key right so i'll just copy this one so we have a span tag so here i'll just uh, give the particular class name as fas fa and user so let's see whether i'll get the name so i'll just save it name i'll have the name and i have the email i need to take the email address also of the person who is contacting me then we have a phone number so i'll just um, mention as number i just mentioned a phone number so here here i have this one right so box box envelopes let's see whether i will get or not i'll just tell fas fa number i will give so if i am having let's see whether it is there or not or else we'll see in the particular logos uh, sheet what is the name of it what is the name of the class because we have inserted something what we have inserted this particular cdn link so where i can get the fonts and as well as i can get the particular logos icon so because of that i can use these uh, particular class names so here the phone number is a number type we have so i'll just mention type is equal to number so where only the whenever i am typing inside the input box it should accept only the numbers 
okay then here i'll just mention uh, name is equal to num okay so i'll just make as the name is equal to num where i can get so we have a name email as well as a number so last one is what description i will mention as a description or else i'll just tell how can i help you okay how can i help you so i'll just mention like this how can i help you so then here what i'll say here is so here i need to have this faa so faa i'll just mention as a text text let's see what is the logo it will be getting so then uh, what i'll say here is the type so here we no need to get a input so if i take a input only it will be what it will be like box type if i refresh this one so you can see i'll be having only like uh, i'll be having only a box type here i don't want like this box i want to uh, have something like big particular box so for that one we need to say it as a text area so i'll mention as a text area text e r a text area okay so i'll mention as a text area so here what i'll say i'll just close like this and uh, i'll just mention name is equal to the esp description it will be the description and type will be what the type will be text and after closing like this i'll just close the particular text area here i'll just uh, say text text area so we have this html tag if i just say this much so what will happen if i refresh so so you can see the text area the box became big so i can just drag it and i can just how much ever i can i can just fill the particular data over here okay so i have a name i can take i can take the email address and i can take only the number over here you can see i can just type only number i cannot type the particular text even if i type it won't going to take why why because we have mentioned type is equal to number over here so that is the reason then uh, this is one not working right so the particular class names are not working so i am getting a name and uh, as well as i am getting what uh, email phone number logo is not there and description logo is not there so if i just tell as a fonts so what is the uh, fonts right font awesome so if i just go it like this so if i just click on to the first link so let's see what is the logo so you can just uh, find all the logos from here so I'm getting this kind of stuff. Okay, so if I just click on to the icons here, so you can see I have a number of icons. So whichever icon you can just see it here. So suppose I want to search for the particular number. If I just mention as a number, so you can see I'm having this one. So I want something like this logo. So I can have like this or like this, whichever I also this one I'll just choose it. If I click on to this logo, so what is the logo name is here? so the logo name is uh, somewhere here it will be there so where is it start using this icon so you can see i have here so fas fa phone alt i have this one so i'll just copy this much so once i copy this much i will come here and here i'll just uh, paste somewhere okay then i need to just copy this much i need to get this much and i'll remove this one then here i'll just paste the particular class name so i'll just paste the particular class name fas fa phone and alt alt so once i save it come back refresh you can see i'm getting a logo of the phone number over here so why you are using like this uh, like uh, front end it will be good so because of that uh, we are using this one logos and text for the text let's see what we can use so if i just say it as something like text text so if i just say it, text is i am getting like so i'll just mention uh, what i can just mention is uh, um, so query if i just see what is the query so let's see so query is in there if i just mention as a question so i can just mention this like this how can i help you so the question mark right so i can just uh, use any of this symbol i'll just use this one so if i just uh, load this one it is a this is the particular html of it i'll just come back here and i'll just uh, paste below then i'll just copy the particular class name and i'll paste it over here okay then i'll just repo this uh, below html thing and i'll just save this much so once i save come back and refresh so you can say i'm getting how can i help you okay so last question mark i'll remove it from here so there so here i'll just remove it so once i save it so here i can uh, have like something okay how can i help you so now our form is getting popped so we have the form so where i can enter the name email address and submit so here i have an email address already once the user is logged in I want something like the email should automatic it's automatic the email should take from here so that how i can do here is 
so here what i'll do mm, so i think i need to just tell value here so value v-a-l-u-e value is equal to so what i'll say here is i'll just mention so in the value what i'll do mm, i think we need to use like this so user dot username so if i just say user dot username let's see i don't know the user dot username if i just mention like if i refresh so you can see automatic the email is taking because i have logged in i have logged in right so the value is automatic it is taking over here okay so here type i'll just mention now uh, so what i can say type is equal to um, i think disabled is there so no so i'll just mention type is equal to text so we have some one attribute so what is that attribute is disabled so if i just mention as disabled so you can see the particular box is disabled okay so i am not able to enter any of the email over here so but the email is showing to me okay so like these are the attributes we need to remember like our default attributes so i don't want the person should change the email id and until i analyze is not logged in i'm not going uh, to give the authentication to the person to contact me i'm not giving that particular right okay so that he can contact me so like this we can uh, apply some of the inbuilt functions like say disabled if i use so you can just see he's not able to enter anything just he can see but he cannot type it okay but he can type the name he can type the phone number he can type any of this thing okay so like this so uh, we can uh, try so next so next i need to accept the data and i need to store it into where i need to store it this particular data into my database so i'll just close this one so if i just tell 127 slash admin so if i just if i want to go to the admin means i need to go to this url 127.0.08000 port number slash admin if i try to click on to this law, law admin so you can see it is telling me you are authenticated as arkprocorder.gmail.com but you are not authorized to access this page would you like to log into a different account so if i just tell ark and ark so this is my administration so where i have been now used as a like this is the super user where i am getting the go thing so what i want here is if i refresh so you can see it is getting a welcome to ERK. i am getting only welcome here okay so what i will do i'll just go to my users so as i am the super user so i'll just take the email so better than using a username so here why i am getting as a ERK? why i am getting here as a ERK? because i am using the username i am using this particular username i am not using the email address so what i need to do i need to go to my here i'll just tell user.email i want to access the user.email so this will be the more convenient one user.email so if i just save it come back here refresh now see it is taking me the ark at gmail.com okay so like this uh, we can just take okay. so then now uh, fine we have taken the uh, so all the things is done so what is my next stop this thing is here so we have in the previous session i have created this portfolio contacts table so where we have the context database table so this is created by models.pofl by using this particular class table name class table name and we have the attributes name email phone number description so name is of the 25 line character email is email field character field of a phone number even we can use an integer field also there is no thing so you can see this is many stuff we have i can use a none and i can use a unique boolean value so many things are there over here okay so let's now uh, see only the important one so here i have said a description it will be the text field okay so i have used as a this will be the text field okay so here you can see you can see anything this many stuff we have with this particular uh, things so now what i need to do i need to accept the data from the form first i need to accept the particular data from the form then i need to store the data inside my database so here what i'll do so we have a form over here so what i'll do here is so where is the models here so it's here so inside the portfolio right so this is a database table portfolio so let me see inside my project urls so we have auth and we have not added yet the portfolio one so what i'll do first i'll create a path so what is the path so path i'll mention whenever there is a request for uh, portfolio okay i'll just mention as a uh, port port fo uh, fo lio okay whenever i request for this particular link whenever there is a request for this particular url so whenever there is a request for this particular url 
I need to include the one more application. So what is the application name is? The application name is the portfolio URLs dot PO file. So I'll just mention as a POT port works F O L I O portfolio dot URLs dot URLS. Okay. So I'll mention like this and I'll just save this particular uh, thing, one line. So you can say I'm not getting any error. So I'm not getting any error over here. So I have included this application URL. So I think you have completed all the videos I, ex I expect from you guys. So I think I have done the six classes for so last previous one. So you would have uh, seen and you would have uh, done in your laptops. Even I have showed you the code I think. So it won't be any difficulty to understand this one. These are all the things which we have created in my previous sessions which I have been taught you. Okay. So <clears throat> next. So I have included the portfolio.urls. So now what I need to do here is I need to go to the urls.po file here. So where I have the about and we have a contact as also everything we have, right? So, okay, once again, so what I have done here. So this is a portfolio. I have added this uh, about contact everything. Then uh, if I go to these urls, so what is this? Oh, already I have added here. So no need of adding like this. So because I have added with the local host, whenever I'm having a path, I'm including the portfolio URLs, right? So again, no need of adding like this. So I'll just remove this line. There is no need of this one. So just directly already I have added. So let's come back to this URL. So whenever there is a path for the contactor, that means whenever I'm clicking onto the contactors, it is returning me the contact page. That means it is returning this particular page. So before returning it, so I'll see what is the function is written. So this is the function it has been written. So whenever there is a contact function, it is returning me the contact.html page. So what I'll do, whenever this particular form is submitted, whenever anyone try to click on to the submit, when they are clicking on to the submit, type is equal to submit, it should take the URL what? It should take the URL that is slash contact. Okay, it should take the particular URL that is a contact. It should take the particular URL of the slash contact. Or else I can just give it as a slash uh, contact. I'll just tell it as a slash contact or anything like this. So if I just say here as a slash contact, it's also fine. So whenever there is a so anyone try to submit this uh, page, it should be the method post request. And we are mentioning the CSRF token for the form. And we need to take the data that is the name. I need to take the number. I need to take the particular email. Then I need to take the particular description of it. So as how we have created already one authentication views. So you see, you see here. So normally, whenever try to click, anyone, anyone try to click onto the sign up page or logout. So anyone try to click onto the sign up page, it will just return the sign up dot HTML page, as I have said in the previous uh, classes. When anyone try to sign up, that means they are providing the email address, they are providing the password and the confirm password. Then they are hitting the submit button. Then what it will be? It will be the post request. Why? Why it is the post request? Because I have said here whenever I click to try to click on to the submit button the method it should be what post request so when the method is equal to post request this particular date this particular uh, things will get executed right so same way I need to say here also so what is the first I'll copy first one so I'll just come back to the portfolio stuffs so I'll just zoom it so I'll say here again so whenever there is a request is method that is a post request Whenever I am getting a post request, I need to execute the below code. Okay, that is what the thing I need to exit. So we have indentation here. You need to make sure that you know indentation. So see after colon, when I enter the new line, I am getting a four spaces extra. It is not simply it is getting it here. Okay. So see if I just select, you can see there is a four dots. You can see there is a one, two, three, four dot. It is nothing but a four spaces. Okay. So that is a mandatory one. If I just remove the indentation spaces, that means if I just say like this, if I just say like this, the particular code is wrong over here. Okay, so that thing you need to make sure. So don't uh, do that silly mistakes. Okay, so now first I need to get what? So from the form, I need to get what? I need to get the particular name. I'll just say it as a name here itself. So I need to get the name. So how I'll be getting the name? Anyone try to fill this particular form? Anyone gives me the input as a name that will store into a variable. The name is equal to name. So same name I'll copy and I'll just go to the views. So here I'll just say it as a name. Okay, so name is getting. Then again I'm storing the particular value from the form to one variable that is name. 
so same as it is next i need to store what i need to get the email that particular email i'll just store it into the email email field then again what i need to store i need to get the phone number right so i'll just mention as a phone number so inside the phone number again i'll just tell request dot post request dot post dot get i need to get what the phone number so for the phone number i have given what the name is equal to num num i have given as a variable name so i'll just copy this variable name and i'll just reflect him to this particular request on the post request then last we need to get the description i'll just mention a description so what is the description now add given here name is equal to desc so i'll just copy this desc and i'll just uh, put it over here so i'll get the description from here so let's see whether i am uh, able to get the data so i'll just use a print statement so all i need to print it i'll just print the name then i need to print the email then i need to print the phone number then what the last is at the description so i need to print the description so once it is uh, done so i will just uh, return him back to where i'll just uh, return again him to where i'll just tell uh, return so yeah i'll just use the one more inbuilt function that is redirect so redirect okay so i'll be using one more function that is a redirect so i'll just tell return redirect so redirect will take only one attribute like this so return redirect i'll just tell it as him uh, i want to return him to the slash contact page that's all okay i want to redirect him to the slash contact that's it so now i'll just uh, save everything save all so i save all the stuffs so if i come back if i refresh if i just say here enter so that means i have been like this so again i want to display the message okay so what is the next i need to display the messages i need to just display the messages here so how i was uh, displaying the messages inside this particular authentication stuff like you can see messages info and uh, after again i was redirecting him so what i'll do i'll just copy this same stuff info before that i need to import what i need to import the messages so from the django dot contrib dot contrib i need to import messages so i'll just copy this first line of the code same thing i'll put it inside the portfolio of views so where i am writing my contact function i go over here okay the message is got imported now i'll say here to display so here i'll just tell message this dot info okay message dot info so rather than uh, i'll just tell message dot info so i'll say i want to uh, what uh, first it will take the request right request comma so what is the next thing it will take so the next thing it will take uh, the particular uh, url so, so sorry the message it will be taking it so you can see first it will take the request the second it will take the string the value the password is not matching email is taken like this some message it will be taking it so now what i'll do now where is it here what all the data he's typing it same data i'll show it i'll just uh, make him to show you so what i'll say here is i'll use the concept of f strings so f strings is something like i can type the text also then uh, even i can just display the particular uh, values also so f string it is a one uh, python concept very easy one so i'll say uh, the name is the name is i'll just mention i'll use this flower brackets so i can grab the values from here to here i can just pass the values when i'm using like this the name will get passed over okay so i'll just uh, remove the print statement i don't want to print it so i'll show you the data at the front end itself so the name is name then i'll just say it i'll just say then again the i'll just say the name and uh, email is uh, i'll just mention like uh, whatever the value he is giving i'll just pass the value over here okay same way then again what is the uh, your number is something like this i'll just for your understanding i'm just showing this one okay the phone number i just remove the and here i'll just put a comma then at the last i'll just done and uh, your query is something that is description i'll just mention that your query is this particular description enter okay so let's see whether it will display or not so this is what i have entered as the info right so i'll just save everything so now come back to the page so here i'll say i'll just mention my name i have the email i'll just mention my number then i'll just uh, say hey how are you this website is awesome something like this 
submit so you can see i have entered this it is showing me the name is anis the email is none i am getting none here why i am getting none because the value is not getting uh, passed over so i am getting none value here so this is one uh, query then your number entered is uh, 786453 and your uh, query is uh, something whatever the things i have added it is getting like this right so i am getting none over here so how to get that um, so what i have given as a request.post.get email then uh, i'm back to the contact so here uh, name is equal to this one is right fine i need to just pass this particular user dot email same as it is i need to pass here also at the place of name okay user dot email i'll just pass the name is equal to user dot email so let's try now so once i say done so what i'll do i'll just go back again so same data i'll just submit again now i am getting so again i'm not getting it okay let's type something okay okay the again the name i'm getting as in none over here so for this one i'll just remove this disable let's see Okay, I'll just give the name over here. Then I'll just give the phone number. I'll just something. I'll just type it. I'll just, I'll just submit. Okay, again I am getting as a none. Why I'm getting as a none? What is the issue is here? Um, type is equal to text. Value is equal to this much. And the class also I given. Name also I given. The again it is not giving me. It is not taking the particular email, right? So let's see what is the issues over there. <laughs> If I go to the views.pofn, so I have taken as an email, and uh, here what I am passing, I am passing email itself. So there is no thing; it should get right. So even though it is not getting it, okay, fine. <coughs> so we'll see what is the issue. So now what I'll do here is I'll remove this value stuff. So I'll just remove this value. Then I'll just make the particular uh, name is equal to. Okay, one second. So value is there right i'll just mention here uh, name is equal to email okay so then now type text is there right so i on it this particular text is equal to email itself it should be the email value and here i have given as the email user dot email the value will be taking it now it should be important one i'll just save it now so coming back to the views so this is not the views this is the views so here i am getting the email and i am just passing the email fine so let's see whether i will be getting or not i'll just save everything so once i save so i'll just click on to the contact page so then i'll write something so now it is getting okay so you can see i'm getting the stuff now so the name the email is here so because of the disabled button so it was not working it fine so now i'm getting all the values over here so i'm getting all the values so you can see the values is been displaying in the front end now what i need to do i need to just submit the data submit the particular data inside my database okay so database name is what the contact table so it is very simple so i'll import first i'll say from the particular uh, portfolio portfolio dot from this particular models i want to import the database table the database table name is what the contact so it is a database table that is nothing but a contact table so i'm just importing it so once i import it next what i need to do here is so i have the uh, stuff like this so what i'll do mm, fine so here i need to just store the data inside this particular database table right so what i'll say before message before the message i'll say the query so i'll just query is equal to i'll just import the contact so i'm just uh, using this contact table so inside my contact table what all the attributes we have we have a name email phone number and description right so same i'll write here i'll say i have the name then i have the email in the in the particular database table then what else we have we have the phone number phone number we have then we have the description so we have a phone number and we have the description so same thing you need to name email so i need to use phone number itself here so i'll just go back here i'll just close this one admin and i'll just uh, close all the other files i'll just open these three files so i have to use the phone number itself so then name email phone number then description we have last field i'll just copy the description and i'll just paste it over description over here so 
So these are all the attributes we have inside my database table that is nothing but a contact. Now what I'll do, so what I'll do, whatever the values I'm getting it, I'll just pass it over here. So I'll just tell name is equal to name. So whatever the name, so I'll just tell as a F name here, I'll just mention as a form. These are all the form things which I'm getting it, right? So I'll just mention like everything it is getting from the form. So I'll just remove this much. So I'll say whatever the name is there in the name attribute, I want to store the value which I'm getting from the form. I'll just pass the value to the name. Then for the email, I'll just put equals. Then whatever the email I'm getting from the form, that particular value I'm just going to put it inside my database table. Then a phone number. So for the phone number, I need to store the value that is the phone number value. Then for a description, I need to store the particular value which I'm getting from the form that is nothing but a description. So I'll just enter it here. So once I enter, now I need to save the particular query. So I'll just say, sorry, so I'll just tell query dot save so i want to just save the particular query over here so something happened here. okay let's delete it so fine so now i'm just saving the particular query inside the database so i'm just running this particular query that what is the query i'm taking a contact for the attributes i'm just passing the names which are i'm getting from the form so once i save i'll just say messages dot success or any other thing you can just mention so i'll use a success i'll just take as a request argument i'll just say uh we will get back uh, i'll just say something like um success message i need to say what the things i need to say we'll get back you soon okay i'll just mention now uh, i'll just say uh, thanks for contacting okay we will get back you so something like this i'll just say like this okay so now after this one i need to redirect him to the database so sorry the contact table so it is only the logic we are writing inside my backend so i'll just save everything so once it is saved all so now come back here now let's try with one now thing so now i'll just mention my name over here so email is there so i'll just mention the phone number i'll say i need a help uh, contact okay contact me so I'll just say something, I'll just click onto the submit. So once I submit, you can see, thanks for contacting us, we'll get back you soon. So I'm getting a success data. So now I need to come back to the this one, if I refresh, so you can see one object got created, okay? So that is only the concept of inheritance, that is object-oriented programming. So we have created a class contact. For this class, for a single class, I can make hundreds of objects or millions of objects or a number of con con objects, you can make it. So we have only one class, from this one class, 100 people can contact me, 100 people can contact me and 100 objects I can create it. So you can see contact of the object that is first object is created. So if I click here, you can see all the data has been saved over here. Okay, name is there, email is there, phone number is there as well as the description is there. So now, now admin can see who have contacted and what is the query inside like this. Okay, so like this uh, we can see now if I want to say, I want to don't want to return the contact object here. So for that I can return something. I'll just say def. I want to return one str. So what is this str? It will return means. So I'll remove this much. So I want to return what? I want to return uh, self. So I'll just mention as a self dot. So I want to return the particular person name. Or I'll just mention as self dot name or email. So I'll just mention as a self dot name. So once I save, I save like this. If I come and refresh, you can see the name has been uh, returning. It, it is returning me the name. So if I click on the name, I can see his particular data, his name, what all the things I want, I can just see. If I want to contact again, so I'll just tell, I'll just say again. So I'll just tell, um, we need to talk soon. So if I just submit again, so one more object is got created, data has been submitted. If I come and refresh inside my administration, you can see again, one more data has been created. So you can see we need to talk soon. So all the, whoever the person is contacting me, their particular data i can just uh, see it inside my administration so inside a table that is a portfolio contact table okay i hope you have understood uh, this particular context any doubts here understood guys any doubts you have with this like how forms form is got submitted and how the data went inside the back end and how it got saved inside the database understood yes bro understood bro okay so like this uh, the things will be there so now let's see about the block page 
So now I need to have a blog page where I can display all the blog. I can add the data. Suppose I am the administrator, I am the owner of this website. So I want to keep keep one blog page. So where I can post the title, I can post the images, then what else? I can post the timestamp. So when is the when I have posted? So these are all things I need to just I want to just tell you about that. So let's see how that can be created. Okay. So here first thing what you need to install for the creating images. So I need to install one module. So what is that module name here is so I'll just come CD project directory. <clears throat> so I need to install one module that is a pillow module tip install P I L L W pillow. So this pillow is what it does means it will handle our images. Okay. So once I install this particular pillow model, so I can you can see I have required already satisfied. Uh, have already I have already this particular module. So in, you need you need to install this particular module that is pip install pillow. Okay, this is one module you need to install it. So now come back here. Okay, I have a blog. Uh, I think we have one more uh, section. That is a block section. So I don't want to go inside this uh, block section. I'll delete it. So I'll just delete. I'll work with this portfolio itself. Okay. So in this only I'll just work it. So if I just go to this URL, I have the no. I don't have so no problem. So go back to these models. So here I need to create the particular uh, model. So what is the model? I need to create a blog model over here. So I need to create first database. I need to create. Okay. First, I need to create a database table. Then I can push the data inside it. Then I can render all the value inside my HTML files. That's all. That is only the three steps. To create, same as it is, I need to tell class. So the table name. So what is the table name I need to keep? I'll keep the table name as blocks. Okay. So here I'll just tell model start model okay so it will take this attribute models dot models then here i need to create one uh, i need to take what i need to first i need to have one title so where i can post the title then i can have the description of the title so about the what is about the post description then i need to have the, the author name then i need to have the image so there i can just post the particular image then what else so i need to have the timestamp so where i can uh, say when is the when is the particular uh, post is the uh, posted okay so this is all the four things i need to have so the title description author name as well as image as well as the timestamp so now what i'll do here is i need to have the model so for the title obviously it is a character field so i'll just mention models sorry i'll just mention as a model start car field i'll just mention as a max length so the max length will be what 60 i am giving it over here so then for the text fields i'll just tell you as a model start sorry text field so models dot text field i'll say so again i'll just tell as a models dot care field so i'll just say model dot text field is there the text field is there and model dot character field is there so for this one i'll just mention as a maximum length so author name maximum length i'll just mention it as a 15 length of the name then coming back to the images now so the images so we need to handle very carefully the images part so the images things is very important inside this django to this is very complicated one you need to do this uh, thing so i cannot uh, say anything else so i'll say model start image field so obviously it will be the image field so image field is there so now we need to upload the image so this database is only to store the content and only the text it is it is like a file it is a file okay database is like a file file okay the file is nothing but you know right the normal file so if you open also it is like one database file itself so to handle the images we can just store the what is the path of the image to store the image we need to create one separate folder so what is the folder name i'll create here is so we have a static folder right so static is nothing but a data which is already there and we are rendering it i'll create one more uh, file the file uh, the particular folder so folder name i'll just mention as a media so it is a media folder so whenever in if i try to upload the image the image should store inside this particular folder that is a media folder so from this media folder i will render the image inside my website okay so it is the way so that is what i'll say so i'll say image field and i need to say upload to one there is one attribute that is upload upload to so upload to 
So I will just whenever I am uploading the images, I want to upload to one blog. So that is a, it will create one folder automatically block folder inside this media directory. Then the image will get stored inside this folder that is block folder. Okay, so it is what it will happen. So then I need to say blank. So I'll just tell bl blank blank is equal to true. So I'll say if the image is not uploaded, also fine. I can just mention. I can uh, even if I try to submit without uploading image, even it should take it. Okay, it is optional. So I can just tell null. It can be null value also. That means uh, there can be nothing. I'll just tell blank is equal to true. Null is equal to true. I can just mention like this. Next comes another timestamp. So I want something like the date should automatically it should add. So we have a date time field. Model start date time field. Okay, we have one more attribute. It is date time field. So here there is one attribute auto now add. Auto now add. That is means automatically the date will get added. Automatically the date will get uh, taken. So let's say auto dot auto now add is equal to true. That means uh, the date whatever the date is present, that particular date automatically it will add. Okay, so it is the timestamp I am just using it. So then again, I'll just mention blank is equal to true. I can just tell blank is equal to true also. If you want, you can use or you can just keep it. Okay, your choice. So then this particular block, it should return something. I just tell def. It should return what? It should return something. It should return the str. It will take a self as argument. Then uh, it will return something. I'll just tell return the particular self dot the i want to return the particular title name of it so that means nothing like it will return the thing inside the database so once i save i'll save everything so let me see any errors so error is there here i'll just tell cancel this one i'll just cancel so you can see no error is there here okay so the server is running properly so as i do any changes inside the models that is nothing but a in the portfolio and the models i have created one Stuff. so that is nothing but this is the thing i have created so before i have created a contact table now i have created a block table so once you do any changes beside your blocks so first i need to go to cd project so this is very important stuff so what i need to run i need to migrate inside the database to migrate it we have a two command so first command is what python manage dot py make mek make migrations make migrations enter so python manage.py make migrations without space so this is what uh, the command so you can see it is telling me created a model that is block okay you are saying okay done the block uh, is been created the database table block is created so once it is done again i need to run one more command python manage.py migrate so once i enter you can see the migrations has been applied these are the only two things you need to do it whenever you do any change with your content suppose if you are removing a description also any day or you are adding any other attribute extra you need to run these two commands python manage.py make migrations python manage.py migrate so once it is done i need to come back to the admin so same i need to register it so i need to just tell again so that is admin dot site dot register i want to register the table name that is nothing but a blocks table so i want to registers the table that is blocks table save it so once i save done if i refresh here you can see one more table is i got created that is a blocks table is got created now i can add the particular title i can enter description and i can add the author name and i can choose the file and i can save it so one thing i need to do for the handle the media directory i need to do some of the settings so what is the first setting you need to do here is i need to go to this uh, project settings here i need to add some of the data so first i need to add what i need to say that is a media url i will just tell to handle the media url this is mandatory you need to do it i will say i have created what media directory so i have created the media directory done so next i need to say media root directory so what is the root root of the media so i will just tell as a media root so the for handle the media root i will just say i will just tell os dot path dot join I need to join it as a base directory so whatever the content is there inside the media i want to get it so i just mention as a small letter media so as a base directory i want to get the content of the media inside my media root so i'll just save this much so once i save i need to go to the urls so i need to pass some of the stuffs over here also so here what i need, I need to say here is mm, i need to import few things here so first thing i need to import the settings so i'll just tell from django 
dot configurations i want to import the settings so this is one thing again i need to import the static directory so i'll start from the django dot con so from django dot com dot urls dot static i want to import this static as one thing so the ones after i import it now i need to attach it so i need to attach as a static so i'll just tell it as a static sorry static so let's tell it, attach the static so from the settings so in the settings just now i added what i added a media url so i added what media url right so let's tell m e r d i a media mm, sorry media so that is the url i have added u r l okay so from the settings i want to get this particular media url then i need to get the document of it that means i need to get the particular file so to get the particular file i need to get the particular document of the particular root so i'll say document root okay i need to get the particular document root so this particular document root from where it get even it will be getting from where settings so from settings dot so one more i have added it is nothing but a media root m e d i a media r o o t root that's all this is only few things we need to do it so once i save this much now what i can do i can add any of the data over here so see here so inside the blog i'll add one blog here so i'll just tell as a django first blog is my about the django okay and let's tell django dj mm, is an amazing framework i loved it okay then author name is myself i'll just give the author name and now i need to select the image so let's select the particular image here so once i select any of this thing you can select it i'll just go to the downloads so here i'll just select it as a django is there anything you want whichever you want you can just select it mm, i'll just select this first image okay or i'll just select it the second image i'll just select this go.png image i'll just save it so once i save you can see the date is added now if i open you can see if i click on to the image you see here how it is taking the url it is going to the media it is going to the block folder then the image is getting loaded over here so like this it is uh been now uh, working it so see here even in the file see here we have created a media directory we created an empty one so whatever i created it created one block folder and the image is getting saved over here like this we can add okay so one more i'll add so i'll just add the python so i'll add one more block python i'll say python is an programming language i am used to it okay and then i'll just add the author name so this time author name i'll just add as a archit then i'll select the image again so for this time i'll just select one more image another image so this image i'll just choose it so once i select i'll just save it i have the two two blocks now so i have now you can see i have created a database now i'm able to post a particular box so obviously the blocks will be posted by whom the admin only will be posted now i need to show the particular data i need to show all the data where i need to show all the data inside my website so i need to show all these blocks inside my website here i need to show it here so what i'll do i'll just create one block table so inside my templates as i said whenever i want to add any of the stuff so i'll just create one thing so here i'll say here i'll say it okay mm, i'll just remove everything from here so i need to have the user about we have home here right below the home i'll just create one block page so i'll just press control d that means i have created one so here i need to whenever there is a request for this it should go to the slash block page so it should be what it should be mm, the particular block blog blog it should be so blog it should be and uh, fine so i'll just say control z i'll do so i'll remove something right so this time i'll just uh, uncomment this one let's see what is this one whichever the logo i want i will just take it from here i'll just save this much so uh, after saving it if i refresh you will be seeing all those things so resume we have a portfolio right so fine i'll just mention as a blog over here i'll use this one second one the portfolio one so here i'll just uh, remove this first resume one then here i'll just remove the second one that is a services one then here the for portfolio i'll just mention as a blog over here so here whenever there is a whenever anyone try to click on to it it should go to the what slash blog page okay so that's all
it should go to the blog page over here so next i need to create one blog.html file so i'll just mention as a handle blog.html file i'm just creating one handle blog.html file so here i don't want resume i'll just delete it then what else we have we have uh, services so let's delete the services page so now i have the retrieve something okay retrieve file so here we have a blog.html file right so here we had something so first we'll come here uh what is this whatever the thing is there inside the contact i'll just copy everything and i'll just put everything inside my handle blog.html file sorry so it not copied control a control c control v so here everything i'll remove i don't want anything from here i'll just remove the particular cards everything mm, okay i'll remove everything from here so here first i need to give what i need to just tell the title name that is nothing but a block page so we have I need to have a block body so i need to i have removed that also so for that one i need to just copy this line i need to say it is my block body so let's see the block body is getting started i'll just tell h1 tag i'll mention as a block okay so let's see whether it is working or not then i will go to the portfolio of the url first here i'll mention the path so what is the path i need to mention i need to mention the path as a block so whenever anyone try to click onto the block page i need to create one function that is a handle block function so i'll just mention as a hndl handle dot fun uh, block function where the function name should be what handle block okay so now i'll go back to the views so here i'll just create one block function so i'll just tell i need to create a function name that is a handle block so i have created a function name as a handle block i will create it as a handle block so whenever it is returning it is it should return what handle block dot html file so i'll just say that's all so i have first i need to say href then i need to create a one url for it so for the same url what i need to do i need to create one now uh, function that is i have created here and it whenever it runs it will return the blog.html file just it a html file so i'll save everything so once i save if i try to click on to refresh now if i try to click on to the blog it is returning with a blog page okay home page is there about means it is returning to the about us blog is returning blog content is returning here and if i do the about it will go to the sign up page come back to the blog page here so now for this one let's see what i what i need to do so i'll just go to the retrieve.html file where i can see any section so <clears throat> about section is there i don't want about section uh if you want this about section what you can do here is uh, i'll just copy this full section about section section to section i'll just copy this about section go to the about.html file here i'll just put it this section okay so once i put wherever you want you can just uh, do the modification okay i'm getting static expected end block do you forget to load or expect it so i'll just tell as a load static load load static so now i'll be getting rid of that particular error so refresh now you can see i'm getting refresh of this so you can see something about me so if you want to add about yourself here and uh, whatever your age whatever the things it's there just uh, uh, modify it over here just modify from here all the data will get reflected over here so your about kit is created you no need to create any tension for the front end part already we have inside this template so for coming back to the blog so let me see what is the for what i which for which i can use the blog skill sections i have i don't want skills so resume section then where is the blog section services section i have testimonials we have where is the blog one the contact section i don't need thing we don't have okay so this much we have so now let me see what uh, what i can take it so where i can uh, just use which is the best one i can use it so here we have this one then okay about section skill sections we have so what is the skill section i don't know how it looks so fine so resume section we have i am getting like uh, okay i don't want resume also services section we have right so let's see how this services section looks so let's copy this services section then come back to my blog.html i'm just checking it how it looks then later we'll modify it so after this blog i'll just mention and i'll save it come back to the blog page how it's looking so it's coming like this okay so if you want you can just keep like this or what i can do so what i'll do 
let's read uh, let's remove this blog whatever the section i'll let mention as a uh, welcome to my blog page welcome to my blog okay and whatever the things is there whatever you want you can just add it over here how about you or something or else donate of this one itself i'll remove this much okay and just save it here so we have a row here so what we have we have the rows here so where i have this one and i have this all the stuffs so what i do we have a row right so that is nothing but we have a row so this is one we have and i'll just we have something like this so six and icon box fed up everything we have so what i'll do i'll remove everything from here though see how i'll just uh, modify so from here to here okay it's perfect i think i'll remove it so now what do we have we have this much right i have this particular stuff so what i'll so i will loop this so i'll use a for loop for this particular code then i will get all the data from the database just see how i'll be doing it so now i'll just say this much here i'll just say load static after loading the static let's keep as it is first come back to my view file where i am handling the block so here what i need to do first i need to get all the data from the database to get what is the data we have i'll just tell post is equal to so whatever is there inside the block table so in the portfolio model i have imported a contact so now i need to import the blocks also so let's go to the views i'll just put a comma i'll just mention blocks so i want to get all the data from the blocks so here i'll just say from the blocks whatever the data is there i need to get so from the blocks i need to get all the objects dot all okay so i want to get all the objects on the block page so after getting the blocks data i just pass everything as a dictionary so i'll just mention the dictionary name variable name is context so whatever the data is there in the form of a post i want to get it i'll just get it in the form of a key and value so post so this particular context what i'll do i'll just pass to my html page so whatever the data is getting from the data database it is storing here then i am passing this particular data as a dictionary in the context then this context i am passing to my handle block dot html page so now come back to this handle block dot html page so here i am getting the data now data will be getting over here so i will apply a for loop here what i will apply i will apply one for loop here so i will just tell for loop so i'll just end this particular for loop here whenever i when how many data is there i need to end it over here so i'll just start the for loop here and i'll end the for loop here so now here i'll mention so what is there for i in post life so i'll just tell for post post in so what is the name i given so post in posts posts so you know for loop for it so for i in a particular uh, list like that same as it is it will work so that is nothing for post in post so i'm getting all the post from here so particular each one 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 item i can uh, access it and i can pass the data to it so it runs until all the data comes and it will run the loop so first what i'll say here we have a loop lorem ipsum right so i'll remove this uh, lorem ipsum i'll just close this much so see here so i need to just tell lower i'll just remove this data so here data here i'll just pass the description okay so i'm passing a data here and i'm here i'm passing the description so what i'll pass here in the uh, first i need to get past the this one i don't need uh, i don't need this uh, href also okay i don't okay let it be uh or else you can remove this hsr for it let it be fine so what i'll do i'll just tell i'll use the like this two flower brackets okay here i'll say from this particular post from this particular post i need to get the title name i need to get the title title that is what i have given right in my models so <clears throat> so that is what i have given right in the model so if i just click on to the models so you can see i had given same title only i have given model so next i need to get the description i'll copy the description then i'll go back to my handle block again i'll say in the description i want to pass the description over here whatever the description is written so from this particular post so i'll just tell post post dot description so i'll just save this much i'll show you the results if i can refresh this one see here django and a python it is an amazing framework and the, the, the particular python is a programming language i am using it so you can see how i am uh, getting the particular data from the database so that means how much ever data i will be posting it that particular data will get reflected over here automatically okay so that is why uh, that is how we can just easily get all those things so now comes uh, to what what is this so now i got the description and all these things so again i want to have one more thing so here i will just tell description itself 
So let's remove all this uh, class. I let me mention the particular um, what I can say. I just uh, remove this class name. I'll mention here as it now posted on okay a little posted on here I'll just use a bold tag again I'll just close one more uh, bold tag over here plus B then here I want to mention the timestamp I'll just tell post dot timestamp TEMP time HTMP stamp okay this is on post name and I want to mention one author name so here I'll just use the h6 tag here also I'll use the h6 tag here I'll say posted by I mentioned posted by so here I want to get auth name so what is the name I had given inside my database so in the models I had given the auth name you can see timestamp I am posting then I need to image I will see so I want to post who is the author name also so I will just go back to this handle block I will mention posted by this particular post or auth name so it will run how many posts are there it will run the for loop and same uh, logic will apply and it will just display the names over if I come back here now in the blog page so see here I'm getting posted by Anis and posted on the October 2021 and 11 so I'm getting like this okay so I'm getting all the data over here take line getting and all those things I'm getting here so now comes the what now it comes about the image so now it comes about the image right so for the image what I can do here is uh, so we have a title after the title I want to put the image over here so if I click on the blog page Sorry, the about page so you can see i'm having image like this right so i want something to get like this image so let's see what is the thing they have used in the about if i come here where is the image attribute is here okay we have a fade right and something like this so i'll just copy full complete path over here i'll just copy this path for the image i'll copy it so once i copy i'll go to the block page so here so first i'll say at the so here i'll just mention it okay so let's see how it will be so let's paste the same thing over here so now i don't want to load like this image i don't want to load the static image now i want to load the dynamic image which i'm getting from the database so alt i'll just tell no image font okay no image so when there is no image it should be like no image and uh, i'll say in the src i need to say what so same as it is i need to do i'll just tell pohd post so let's post dot what is the attribute name attribute name is img i need to tell one more dot url i want to pass the url of it over here so once i save this much you can see the image will be loading over here now so if i come back to my blog page so you can see the image is coming django python the image i'm getting it like this okay so the but it is not looking good let's see how i can now uh, if i can just maintain so what i'll do mm, so it got stuck okay so you can see it is coming like this now so image is getting and all the python is also getting if i refresh and if i just uh, inspect it in mobile how it looks so let's see if i inspect it okay now i'll just see in my iphone or uh, galaxy so see it will be i'll just maintain like this so like this it will look inside mobile it will look like this so which is fine okay so the, you can see it is looking fine and a little bit here it has been getting that so what i'll do here is i'll just create one vr tag online space i'll just save it if i refresh so you can see one line but so you can see now it is coming like this so image is there and the title is coming the image is coming up and it is getting posted banners and posted on like this so it is the second one is also i'm getting like this okay like this it will be done so now like this it will be visible so nice uh, <coughs> close like this <coughs> close like okay let's fine so it is fine for me so if you want any changes you can just do it uh, by your choice so i'll just mention one more i'll just try one more working or not okay so i'll just save like this so now come back and refresh you can see it will be got uh, changed so okay now it is working welcome to my blog so now i want to add one more uh, blog page so what is i'll just tell one more i need to blog i'll just tell 127 dot admin i'll just go to the administration so i want to add one more block to me so i'll just click one more one so this time i'll just as node.js i'll just tell node.js is a javascript framework i'll just tell this time i'll just mention as a 
yeah okay something now let's uh, choose the particular file so this time i'll just choose uh, this first folder something like this i'll just save it so once i save the data has been saved if i come and refresh my website so you can see the node.js has been added over here now i want something so whatever i am adding it it should come first okay the old port should go at the last and new port should come at the beginning so for that i can just use one more attribute reverse here so whenever i have re v e r s e d reverse so when i am using a reverse in my for loop the for loop will be reversed so if i refresh you can see the uh, first the whichever the latest is added it is coming over here and you can see the date is also been now uh, old like it is uh five hours ahead from the time so it is also like this okay so like this we can add a number of posts whenever you are adding b it will be keep on adding downwards and you can see in my web in the mobile also i can be able to see like this which is amazing so i can see in the mobile it will look something if i go to the about page if i just click on the about page mm, sorry so you can see it will be looking like this and if i click on the blog page it will be going like this if i am going to the contact page the contact will look something like this and if i just click on the logout page so you can see the logout is success we have a login sign up page and if i click on the sign up i can do the particular sign up i can do the login from here and i can just go to the home page almost all the things has been done over here now comes under the how to change this background image so how i can change the particular background image over here and how i can change this particular image uh, whatever you want you can add it this particular uh, stuffs according to you so coming back to that uh, handling the background image so if it is a basic dot html page where I, where is the image is loading over here so first what you need to do you need to select your picture so where is your picture i don't know so i'll just select one of my picture i'll just see in the okay so i'll see one image over here so i'll just uh, see so i have this images for folder so i'll copy any of the image over here so i'll just copy this uh, what is it i'll just copy this first image i'll right click it's getting a little stuck okay so i'll just what i'll do i'll just copy this much i'll go to the project directory so the project directory is here right so where is it so in my f drive portfolio dynamic website in my project i will go to the static directory so where all the images are there so here all the images which is the images been there here it is there so i'll just paste this particular image over here so i'll just paste my image so i got i pasted the irk.jpg image in my static folder so i don't want this two also i'll just remove this one the unnecessary images no need of keeping it inferior so i'll delete it this one so for this one i'll use this one and for the background image so for the background image i'll just see one more image so where i can now uh, whichever i will see which i will get i'll just use that one okay so i think <clears throat> okay i have some more images over here let's go to the desktop so let's go to the images so we have this kind of image whichever you want you can just use it so what i'll do i'll just choose uh, this web, this particular image as for the background okay or else uh, okay i'll just choose one more image i have i'll just go to the editor and uh, i'll just go to the full stack sorry okay where is it if i go to the static here if i just see in the images okay fine i'll just choose something one image i'll just paste that one itself okay so let's go to the downloads so i'll just choose uh, this particular image so let's uh, copy this image or else i'll just uh, copy one more image where is it this one okay so the first image i'll just copy introduction to the javascript something is like i'll just copy for your example i'm just showing it i'll just copy this one i'll go to the e drive and where is the pro sorry in the f drive so where is my project directory the project directory is somewhere here portfolio one i'll just go to the project static and assets and images here i'll just paste it okay i'll just paste this particular image over here so once i post this image sorry once i use this image so i'll just uh, rename it here so what i'll just rename so i'll just rename it to uh, i'll just rename it to ar.png okay 
So you dot png and ark dot jpg two images I have. I want to load this image now. Just come back here. So here I'll just tell at the place of this one I want to load my ark dot png or sorry ark dot jpg. So you need to see what is the extension here. So if I just right click and click on the properties, you will be able to see the what is the type of the image. Okay. So you can see here it is a ark dot png jpg file it is. Okay. So you can just get the extension like that. Yeah, okay, .jpg. I'll just save it. So once I save, if I come back to my website, if I just come back to my website, if I refresh it, you can see I'm able to see the particular image over here. So you can see my image is coming over here. Okay. So whichever image you want, you can just uh, post your image like this. So it's your completely, it's your choice. So one more thing is that the background image. So this is a background image. I want to see if I want to change it. So that particular thing how i can change means it is now i cannot change it from here see here i am not able to change it from here so what i'll do i'll just go to the static directory so static directory where is my css file it will be somewhere here so here i'll just press ctrl f i'll say dot png i think or jpg jpg image so here you see so it is a image here it is loading from here so what i'll say i'll just tell ERK, ERK, dot jpg image okay so here i need to change that. in the css and you need to go to the chain here over here so for the background image so i'll just save it so once i come back if i refresh so you can see the page is not getting come for this one i need to press Control shift r Control shift r means the old css will go and the new css will be coming over here so you can see like this uh, the image is not fine but it is i can change the image like this also okay so i can go to the about page and i can you can just do it by yourself this one and the blog page is completed you can see all the blogs page i can do contact page sign up page and login page home page and whatever your social media links are there so whatever your social media links are there please you can update it over here go to your uh, basic.html page so i'll show suppose i want to add the linkedin so where is the linkedin here so linkedin not at twitter is there right so for here i'll just add one social media link so here we have in this is a linkedin right so if i just open my linkedin account if i just tell linkedin of uh, so i just open my linkedin account okay so if you don't have just make your linkedin account it is very important for your jobs and all okay if i just open like this uh, it will open like this so you can see it is like this so i'll just do what i'll just uh, copy this particular so whatever the url if you want you can just copy this particular url from here so i'll just copy this particular url from here so after copying it I need to go where it is a LinkedIn stuff. So wherever there is a href, so just remove that hash and paste the URL link of it. Okay, it will just uh, add it over here. And for the Instagram, same I can just say. So if I just tell Instagram, if I just tell Instagram something like if I just open the Instagram, so this is like this. You can just uh, do it like this. So let's cancel. So let's tell Instagram. Uh, I don't know why it is getting stuck. I'll just tell you, okay. So if I just see, this is like uh, Instagram. I can open. So to my add to my add my profile, I can just uh, see what is your username. I'll just copy like this. So after I'll copy, I'll just go to my this Instagram and I can just put the href as this one. So I have shown you too how to add later rest all the things you can add it by yourself. So now after adding it like this, so now come back here to the website. I'll just close this one. So refresh it so once after refreshing now if i try to click on to the instagram so you can see uh, the particular instagram page will get open like this okay now see one bug is what here is whenever i am trying to click it is opening inside the same page it is opening over here itself so i don't want this particular page should open inside the same link so for that one art i can do here is so whatever is there in the anchor tag i'll say target i'll just tell target is equal to blank so underscore b l a n k blank to underscore blank whenever you are giving it so what it happens I mean it will open inside the uh, one more page now see if i just go back so i'll say everything target is equal to underscore blank whenever you're giving like this now if i try to click on to this uh, okay it is not working still so i need to refresh it's sorry so <laughs> little bit okay now it's coming right so now it is coming 
So again, I will now if I try to click on the Instagram, you can see it is opening into the new tab. It is not opening inside the same page. It is opening inside the new tab. So like this, you can just do it. Same as it is, I will say, oh, now I'm, I want to open any of the page. Inside it, I want to give target is equal to blank over here inside your anchor tab. So target is equal to blank, target is equal to blank. So I'll just save it. So once I save, come back here. Now if I try to refresh, so if I try to click on to the LinkedIn, you can see it is opening into the new tab. Okay. It is opening my particular account. So just what you need to do, you need to copy the URL of it. After copying URL, you need to paste it inside your HR. It is only the almost all the things. So all the things are working, blog page is there, contact, sign up, everything is there. So you can just edit your own stuff, whichever I am not doing. If you add to one, one services pages, same as it is create one services pages, like how I have created a blog page, add what all the services. So if you want to make everything dynamic, like a complete website, if you want to make the dynamic website, what you need to do, you need to just uh, create a database table like this and uh, register your database table inside your administration. Then inside your views, create a function, load the data inside your database. So it's your choice, okay? So whatever the correct functionality is there, it is provided by our administration. It is created by our administration. So it is our administration, only I can access it. In your thing you can access it so i have said you also how to create a database administration so just it is an inbuilt one just you need to create a credentials you need to create your uh, super username so that's all you need to do it okay that is what you need to do so let's see in the next session like uh, tomorrow session so i'll say you how to host this website so here i'm getting alex smith i am designer all those things so what you can do here is uh put your basic.html page here only it will be somewhere at the bottom so here only it is there right so where it is uh loading that particular uh stuff uh i think in the home.html page okay in the home.html page that the things is coming so i am getting like this so i can just mention my name and whatever about you are there you can just put it uh the things over here designer developer freelancer photographer whatever you want we just put it uh the stuff over here and your name you can just put it over here so i don't want to mention it's your choice so about you you can just mention it over here okay so like this so uh, see it's very simple to create a website no need of taking full uh, headache and uh, create front end and uh, create back and everything so when we are having a free sources we can use the free sources like as a bootstrap it's completely bootstrap itself use the bootstrap and they start creating your website okay that's it okay so once i run the server so once i run the server you can say i'll be getting a link of here so which we have been developed so this is a website which we have uh, developed in my all in the sort of things so we have home page and we have a social media links and i can show up my picture over here and blog content everything is working fine so now what i'll do here is i want to create one particular form so this is for your reference so i'll just create one particular form so we'll just go to the basic.html file here so i'll just go to the basic.html file then uh, here i i don't want to add the particular link okay so i'll just uh, i don't want to show up the particular link here so what I'll do, I'll just uh, create directly the particular uh, URL here. So here the URL will be what here is the URL. I want to take one new path here. So this particular path will uh, be like I want to what I can give here is um, internship. I'll just make it as an internship details. Okay, so I'll just make it as an internship details as my URL. So it should be like internship detail. So where it should run the particular function that should be a views dot internship details and the particular name should be internship details itself here okay so now i'll just come back to the views so i'll create a function for it so as we create a url we need to create a same function name of like whatever we have been used here so i want to use as an internship details so where you guys will be filling out the form when you are filling out the form and when you are submitting the post request this particular function will be running inside our backend okay so it will be a live one so here what i'll do is i'll just uh, say internship.html page so whenever i am rendering the url this particular uh, html page it should render it so i'll save everything here then i'll just go back to the template i'll create the particular html file name as internship.html page so i'll just uh, say so the spelling is mistake here so i'll just make it intern intern intern.html file fine so i'll say intern.html file i'll just create it here so I'll just select it as template folder. So make sure 
all your html file should be in the one particular folder so that is inside your template folder you should not miss math so inside a template i will mention intern intern dot html enter it so here this particular uh, thing should uh, it should work here so if i come back to my website if i just come back to the website so if i just go to the slash internship details okay if i just uh, mention the slash internship details you can see the website is loading but i don't have anything it is showing me the empty stuff so as you know so we don't have anything in this particular page right now so what i'll do i'll copy everything from the this particular page i'll copy each and everything <coughs> sorry not from here i'll just copy from the sign up dot html or contact i'll copy from here okay i'll just copy everything from the contact dot html page and i'll just paste everything inside my intern dot html i'll just save it so here i'll just change the particular uh, title to i want to just make it as an internship details so i'll maintain as an internship details uh, as my title name so then what else i need to change so here i'll just remove this br tags then here i have a con contact with i'll just mention please fill out the form please uh, fill out your details carefully okay i'll just save it like this so here if i just save it so what i'll be there here if i just come back here and if i refresh the page now so you can see i'm getting like this so everything i have been copied the particular uh, the template so here it will be something like please uh, fill out your details carefully so here what are the things i wanted so i'll just uh, say what all the if i left any attributes please tell me now itself okay so now let's keep like as it is here itself now what i need to do here is i want to first create a database table so the people you are filling out your data you will be filling name usn what is your internship start date and uh, what is about your internship or report status and uh, how many classes you have attended so all those i'll be adding this particular forms okay so before adding before creating a form first we need to create a tables first we need to create a particular data or database tables here so we'll just create here i'll just open google dot it c o o g g l e so if i just open this particular website so i'll open i'll just create one diagram here okay so i'll just create one ref diagram so that what else i need to take uh, i'll just maintain i'll just create the table name as the internship table okay so the data table name it will be the internship so what will be the first attribute i need to take so first attribute i need to take what first i'll be taking your uh, first name i'll just take a full name itself okay so i don't want to uh like whatever your full name will be there whatever you will be giving as input same name will be printed on your certificates so i'll just mention now uh, this attribute name as a full name so i'll be taking your full name then along with that next so next what will be your attribute so next attribute will be what the usn number okay i'll be taking your usn number so whatever the usn number or your uh, roll number will be there that will be printed on your certificates so next is what next come importance about your uh, what is your college name so i'll just mention as a college name here c o l l e g college name so i'll be taking your college name so what is your college name please provide fully everything should be proper so then i'll be taking your email address so that i can track your status so what the email address when you are filling out the forms for your email address i'll be met i'll be just uh, so what our hr will be doing it here they will be focusing on your uh, administration part so whatever your data is there so it is our administration so one second it is not opening it so why it is not opening on um, just a second okay i'll just check out later so what we'll be doing we have administration whatever the database is there i uh, will be checking with our administration part okay so that i'll just see what is i forgot the password i don't remember so full name usn and college name as well as email so this is all the four attributes so uh, i need so 
So next what is uh, the thing I am just taking. So I'll just tell here offer letter. So offer letter. Sorry. So I'll just mention as a offer letter. So if you have people received your offer letter, you need to tick mark it as a yes. If it is yes, will be uh, will be not giving again. So if it's no, will if you want again the offer letter will be sharing by seeing the details. Okay. So then uh, this is one high priority stuff. So which you need to submit for your colleges also, right? So this is one thing. So what else? So suggest me in the comment box what else uh, the thing you needed in the certificates extra things. So next comes the start date, right? S T R T start start date. So any what what is your start date and what will be your end date? And make sure that don't put uh, your start date as uh, uh, October and don't put it here as a December and all. There is no two month and three month stops. Only four weeks we are providing it. So whatever you will be giving as a start date, so they will be seeing like what is your end date automatically it will be uh perfectly like respectively one month it will be suppose if you are giving today's date is 11 as 10 as your start date so then it will be 11 11 to 2021 20, like that only one month so before that the just you people will give properly while submitting the while selecting the particular dates so whichever the dates you want it should be only one month uh, stuff okay don't put it as a two month three months like that okay so it is not like we don't have your data your details i have we have your details everything we have so just we don't want to like they don't want to send you certificate again you request for the changes and all those things so if you have any internship we can provide edit details in the your student details itself suppose if i just go back to your administration so if i just see here i'll just log in i don't know so here there is one student account so if something like there is a student account something there is a we have a student accounts okay so for that if you just go back and uh, check out your uh, student details here so and i'll just log in once again so i'll just log in with any email address so see so we have something like where once you are logged in there will be something like a database or that particular uh, tab student account if you open this particular link you can see your all your registered details here itself okay so you can provide edit option here also but uh, i can we can do it but uh, just uh, i don't want to do all the stuff now so I just uh, it will be like it will be like teaching for you guys also so i am just i have planned to do something like this okay so full name start date end date email college name us number offer letter so these all these all the important things you need to fill it out so next one uh, come back to the what we uh, payment status details the payment uh, details will be checking in our website itself okay so they will be checking in our website so if you have done the payments it would have uh, updated over there so based on the payment details they will be giving you the certificates like if you have unpaid means so, so some other people come sign fill out this particular form if you share the links to your friends don't think that they will be getting the certificates and all okay so there will be a cross check for your uh, whatever the data has been filled that is one uh, thing i wanted to say you so then uh, next to what is the attribute here is about the this one internship internship uh, internship project so it is about the internship project so if you people wants to do the internship project by self you can do it if you want to if you can't able to the okay offer letter i have added right here i have added the offer letter if you people want any people if anyone wants your the particular project all as well as internship project plus report okay if you want from the company side they will be providing but it will be one paid one okay so if you don't want you can just uh, do it by yourself if you don't want this but is an optional one okay and it is plus optional so it is optional one if you people want the internship project as well as the report you guys can uh, request it if you want me okay if you if you like if you are i don't know i don't i personally say don't do this particular stuff if you are not capable of doing the project means you can request for this particular you can just select it as a yes or else you can select it as a no so this is one particular optional i have added for the or else you like see whatever the project and uh, reports you people will be doing it it is not for our sake it's not for my sake and it is not for the anyone's sake also it you need to submit for your college and make don't copy something from the internet and uh, paste it and do, uh, don't make that particular uh, stuff because uh, they will catch you later and it will be a problem for you so now itself when you are doing an internship project or any if you are selecting any project and doing modification think something it should be unique thing okay so unique thing it should be there 
i know colleges will be expecting like uh, more than anything they will expect so much uh, from the students which is not going to happen so no one uh, can what in one month uh, internship nothing can be done okay so i personally joined in infosys what i am having now i am having training itself so even if you are professional nothing they will start from the basic itself they will start from the print hello world itself okay so i think most of the things i have taught you so most of the like more than enough i have taught you so basically they will be asking you what is the outcome of your internship like what you have learned so what you have learned means what you have learned you have learned the django technology then you have uh, learned how to create a websites and uh, you know how to and, and what else you have learned you have learned how to create the how to create a structure of the website before starting it anything so these are all the things which we have learned it okay so then this is one thing is optional you can just select it so i think uh, all the things i have uh, added here so anything is left here from your side so which should be mentioned in the certificate so i think it is not uh, left okay so i think this is the stuff so if, if anything if anything is left you can just comment it out later we'll add it so now what i'll do so now you people will be filling this particular details in my website in the particular website which we are going to host right now then we need to create this database table first right so we need to create a database table for it so what i'll do i'll just go back to the model store where i can where i will be creating the database tables so here i'll just create one database table so i'll just tell class so i'll just create a class so i'll just give the class name as a internship over here okay so this will be the uh, database table of name so this will be the database table the database table name is what the database table name is internship so here same thing i'll just copy model start model then so what is the same so we have created the uh, particular uh, overview of it so what the contain what is the attributes i need to put it so we have this one use uh, file full name usn college name of letter all those things so i'll say full name first so i'll just uh, come back here i want the full name of the person i'll just tell the full name so this one full name i need to get it then what else i need to get full name then uh, usn number i need to get from the student then i need to get the particular email address of the student then uh, i need to take the particular uh, email usn and the college name i'll just mention as a college name college name of the person then uh, i need to take what is the particular offer letter offer status so what is the offer letter status i need to get it So I'll just maintain small letter itself. So I need to get this one. Then what else I need to get? I need to have the start date. Start date. Start date. I need to get. Then I need to have the end date. Then I need to take about the. I'll just mention for the internship. So I'll just maintain as a period. Okay. So I'll just just make it as a project report. Project plus report. So if they want that particular data will be stored inside this particular attribute. So anything is left. One two three four five six seven eight. So one two three four five six seven eight. So all the things has been done. So last one, I'll just take this particular timestamp. When you people have the when you have filled the particular form, I'll be taking the timestamp. So when is your when you have uh, the added here. So what is offer letter means? Um, like you people received offer letter, right? Anyone, if you have not received the offer letter, you can just submit it as a no. So we'll be sharing the offer letter for that particular email ID, which has been now uh, filled out in the particular database. Okay, if you have received, just select like uh, you have received it. So we'll create the particular template. So first we are just uh, creating this uh, particular what we are creating. Just we are creating a database mm -hmm. table over here. So just we are creating a database table. So now here, uh, so everything I'll keep it as a character field itself. I don't want to take any stuffs. So I'll just copy here. the full name i'll just make it as a char field usn number as a character field and the email is also a character field college name is also a character field here i'll just give the 100 as the size of the college then offer letter also the character field start date so this also character field character field character field everything i'll make it as a character field but in the form i'll just do the changes so here i'll just return the uh, particular database stuff here so what i'll be returning i'll be returning the usn of your so what will be the usn so don't think like you can fill a 100 times so you can submit the form and all those things so i'll uh, make a validation for it also like once you have filled the form again you should not able to fill the form like that it will be there so here i'll just save everything so once i save 
so once i save the particular uh, this one so it is done so now i need to do what so as you know we have created a two tables before the contact table and as well as a block table so once we do any database table any creation of the database table we need to run the migrations so i'll just select it as a plus i'll come inside the project directory cd project now i need to run the migrations so command is python py thon python python manage dot py make migration make make migrations so once the migration is done so you can see database is being created then our last command is python manage dot py migrate mig rat migrate so migration is been applied done that's all so once the migration is applied now i can um, use this particular form to fill out the data so next coming back i'll just save everything from here and i'll close all the files from right hand side so once it is closed i'll open only the intern.html page so now i'll design the particular uh, thing so what i need to design it so i need to just design the front end part right so where i can where the user can fill out the field so here i am just taking what full name so full name is one attribute so i'll just tell enter your full name full name is been there here so here uh, it should the action should be what it action should be the slash internship details save it so what is this action internship details so once ever whenever i submit the form the method is a post request and it will be taking a CSR, csrf token so your internship detail is what it will be going to the urls so here we have added the internship url internship detail url so it will run the internship detail function where the function name is the internship details so now come back to this intern.html files for action i have provided that means the routing part when i submit the form which function i need to run that i have provided now then so here full name i am taking it then i am just taking the email address also let it let i am just okay fine i am taking the email address then what else i need to take the so phone number so phone number uh, is required or not i think there is no requirement of the phone number uh, we are not mentioning anything inside the, your phone number fine no problem so then what else uh, i need to have i'll open these views here or not the views i'll open the um, models.pfi so full name usn i need to take right so i'll take the particular usn here so email has been taken right so full name i'll copy same as it is form group 2 this particular div tag i'll just copy i'll copy down so here i'll mention as a usn so i need to take the usn university role number right usn university serial number i think so here i am taking the university serial number so here name i'll make it as a usn okay type should be text itself even it should be text and it is a required attribute next email is there email already is there so then coming back to what mm, what is the next thing uh, college name so i need to take the particular college name so here i'll take the college name so here i'll be taking the college name here i'll take it here itself so where is i'll just uh, close this much i'll just remove this much so whatever the college name is there i'll provide here so enter your college name inside this particular big box so i'll just tell college name c o l l e g college mm, okay so college name i'll be taking it here the type will be text and here the name should be a c name i'll just grab it with the name that is c name it will be a college name then it will be the required attribute so once the college name is done so then what else i need to take i'll just copy above particular one form group so here i'll just mention it here so whatever the next is there so next i need to take the particular what is your uh, offer status offer letter status so i'll just mention did you receive offer letter okay I'll mention like this did you receive offer letter so then here i'll just mention like this did you so here uh okay i'll just uh, use this particular class name so i'll use this particular did you receive the offer letter okay so here it will be the yes or no add yes or no thing so whatever yes is there means yes you can type it or else you can type it as a no so here i'll just mention it as a offer letter Okay, so I'll make it as the offer itself here. and type should be a text here. Either uh, whatever yes or no, you can just uh, type it. So even you can use the radio buttons. So no, I cannot uh, go and I cannot uh, take that one. So let it be the text itself. Okay, so this is one thing. So what is the next one? 
So next one is what the dates one. So dates we have the special attributes. I can copy this one. So the next template uh, attribute is what about the start date. So whatever you want the start date, just uh, select the particular start date. Okay, start date. Here the type will be what date. So the type will be date. Automatically will be selecting the date here. So I'll just make it as a start start date. The name attribute name. So same along with that, I'll mentor, I'll mention one more thing that you will be the end date. So which end date you need to have. So end date I'll just mention it as um date itself and here it will be end end date end end d a t e date. That's all. So once again I'll just uh, put the attendance. So here uh, the end date is done, start date is done. So what is the next uh, thing? So here I need to get one more attribute that is a college name is done here, right? So here I'll just copy one more thing. I'll just uh, end date college name. So after before the college name, I'll just use this one. So please fill out the form carefully, okay? Do you want uh, project and report? So if you people need, you can just uh, say it yes or else you can just mention as a no so here then what i'll say here i'll just make it as a proj proj report okay so then we'll be mentioning as a proj report so these are all the things i have done i'll just save everything so once i save how our form will be looking here let's see so if i come back and refresh the page so something it will be looking like this so you can see full name usn email and did you receive offer letter you need to tell yes or no okay so i'll mention one placeholder here so if you are getting that much confusion also you can we can just mention here do you oh, where is it here so i'll just mention one placeholder so i'll just mention the particular placeholder here so i'll just tell placeholder plec place holder holder so what this particular attribute is means it will just provide you the suggestions so i'll just tell yes or no so i'll just save as it is so i'll just uh, copy same thing here also i'll just mention it here I mentioned here also. I'll just save everything. So once I save, refresh it. So what I'm having, so here I'm having what uh, full name you need to mention here, USN number, and here is the, your email address. And here you need to mention what did you receive your offer letter, yes or no. Start date you can just select your. If you just click here, you can select the particular date. Okay. Then uh, select the respective end date. And if you want project and report, if you want, you can just tell as. And here you need to tell your college name. Okay. So this many you need to have and you need to submit the particular form okay so if once you are submitting again it is not editable i am saying now itself when you are submitting the details uh, please fill properly and here you need to provide your usn full name email address make sure you are providing the email address when you whichever you have enrolled for your internship so you have visited the website right aeropotica.in website so where you have you have filled out your details so there what which you, which email you are using it use the same email here itself okay if you forget no problem try to use the same email address in this particular box while fill out will filling out this particular form okay i think everything we have uh, added anything left anything left tell yes or no in comment okay fine so then now we have uh, used uh, we have created the particular form now just i need to do what i need to just connect with this particular database that's all so what I need to do, I need to just kind of whatever the data has been there, whenever they are submitting the form, what it should be doing, it will take the data here and it will be going to this action that is internship details where the method is a post, it will go to the URL, it will see what is the URL path for it, that is internship details, it will run the functions of the views, it will just go to the views.python file, here it will just run the same function. So whatever the stuff is there, I'll copy everything from here. So name is there. So I'll just copy these two things. I'll say again, same thing here. If the request dot method is the post request, if the form is a post request, I need to get the particular full name. I need to get the F name. I need to get the email address. 
then what else i need to get so then uh, i need to get the usn i'll just make it as a fusn from the form i need to get so here i'll just copy and here i'll just paste it i'll just uh, make it as a empty here so i need to get the fusn number email i am getting i am getting the f name so what is the full name i have given? I have given as a name itself for the full name whatever you are giving it it will be going to my views here i'll be saving the full name of us and here email address will be stored inside the email usn will be stored inside the usn next what is it so next i need to store the offer letter of you what is the offer status so offer i'll be storing it then uh, i'll be taking your uh, start date f h t r d start date then same as it is i'll be taking your f e n d end start date as well as the end date then same as it is i'll be taking your uh, college number sorry the college name c o l l e g college and what else i need to take i need to just take one more attribute that is the internship project you need you need to get or not i'll just make it as a f proj report okay so these are all the things i need to take from the form <coughs> so i need to take the name email so i'll just see what is the name i have given. i have given as a name here i have given as a usn so whatever the usn you are filling it it will store here then the particular usn will be getting stored uh, to the views and it will just uh, get it from this particular uh, action it will store into the variable that is fusn then as it is i need to go for what email i already have done so here there is an offer you have received the offer letter or not so that thing i'll just store it inside the offer letter uh, so that is i'll be storing into over here then same as it is i need to store it what the start date i'll just copy the start date i'll just come back to the views so where is the start date is here i'll just paste it same as it is then i need to have the end date i'll copy whatever i have given here then i'll just store it inside the end date then what is the last two two so do you want the project and the report so project if you want you can just make it as a yes that will be paid one first only i'm saying it then next what you need to have last one is what the college name so let's say the c name i have given to grab the values so i'll go back to the views here i'll just mention it as a c name that is a college name so now i have stored it like this so let's see so now i'm getting all the data from here so once i'm getting all the data now i need to store the data where i need to store the data data inside the internship here so i'll just copy the internship so i'll just go back to the views over here so inside my views what i'll do here is uh, i need to load the first particular i need to just load this internship database table from the portfolio i need to just uh, load the particular uh, thing inside my portfolio right so once i get the particular uh, thing once when i am getting all the uh, data from the particular uh, sorry from the internship uh, database table once i am loading inside the views now i can store the particular details now what i'll do i'll just save it everything over here so, okay i'll just uh, store everything so now what i'll do i'll just check first i'll see what is the uh, first i'll I need to put some validation here so if the email is present and if the usn is already present and when the when the two things i will match for the two things if these two things are present already in my database table i am not giving him or uh, anyone else to give that particular access to store the particular details again so that i need to just check it uh, inside the uh, internship database table so what i'll do i'll just uh, say internship i'll just load all the data from uh, here okay first i'll load everything so once i load everything uh, from uh, the particular data so what, what i'll do here is i need to check whether uh, it is storing in the data or not so first i'll store everything i'll just say here as a query query is equal to so i'll say the internship uh, whatever the table name is uh, just put the table name so here in the table name what are all the things you have in the table name i have this all the stuff full name is there i'll just copy full name and i'll just uh, paste it here for the full name i want to store whatever the full name i'm getting from the form that i need to store it here okay that i'll be storing it so then what else i need to have in my models we have uh, the usn usn email college name so i'll go back to the views i'll close this one so i'll just put a comma for the usn i need to store what i need to store the fusn which i'm getting for the form and whatever the email is there for the email i need to just store the email address and for the college name so for the college name in my database table i need to just store the college name from the form what is the f college i'll just pass the data to the college name then uh, we have the f of a letter right so then here 
the model so college name and you need to see the offer status so i'll copy this one i'll paste it here so for the offer status i need to just store the value of whatever the offer letter uh, data i'm getting i need to store it over here then i'll just put a comma then what else i need to have i need to have the start date so for the start date i'll just store the data in the start date over here i'll just uh, maintain start date is equal to so whatever the f start date is there i'll just store put the particular f start date over here then uh, same for the end date so here uh, in the models i have given as an end date so you need to use same thing here okay don't uh, change whatever the names you have given it here use the same name over here or else you'll be not getting the results so this is how we can just uh, create one simple form and uh, store into the database rather than creating a google forms you can use this particular professional method for taking a collecting it details why i'm teaching you because means if any day if anyone says you I want, there are uh, thousands of hundred people i'm conducting one event i want to collect the details simple you can create one normal website easily without paying anything you can create and you can host it and you can share the links to all the people where they can fill out the forms and uh, even you can access the particular details so it will be very helpful over there even in the colleges also many times so it will be i uh, will be getting very helpful over here so i have used this particular tricks many times uh, in our college so then project report so i'll just create a project report is equal to so what is the model sag one here as a project report i'll just copy this project report uh here i'll just save it okay so everything i have been saved now once i collect the data what i'll do i'll just uh, select everything so i'll just uh, save it so i'll just tell query query dot save okay so i need to just run this particular query dot save then i need to run one message like uh, your data has been built successfully i'll just show this particular data, message dot success thanks for the uh, i'll just maintain uh, your data has been filled successfully something like it i'll tell uh, form is su submitted Sub OCC. okay something like this i'll just uh, say then here it will be in the form of a green color okay then i'll return uh, redirect him to where i'll just redirect you back to the home page okay so i'll just redirect back to the home page or else i'll be redirecting you back for the same uh, internship page itself internship details page so i can just uh, redirect back you to the internship details page so now i need to put some validations here so whatever the name you are providing it i'll convert that particular name into a capital letters okay i'll just convert the particular uh, letter into the capital letter to do that one what is the thing i need to do so i think f name is equal to to convert the particular name whatever the thing you are passing the name to convert into the capital letter i can just tell f name dot upper so what is the two upper case something is there right inbuilt function what is the inbuilt function to convert the uh, i don't know i'll just uh, see inside the google here now forward i'll say uh, convert to upper case in python so we are in build by inbuilt uh, function so we need to use the upper method so you can see we have a upper uh, method so when i am using upper uh, method the whatever the data will be there it will be converted into the capital letter so something will be there so here my name is string so somewhere it will be there see here only so you can see dot upper you need to just run the particular dot upper function that's all so i'll just uh, use that particular thing i'll just tell dot upper upper i'll just run this particular function so whatever the name you will be providing here that will be converted and uh, the uh, the new name will be getting stored over here so name i need to convert to the upper letter same thing what i need to make it for the usn so usn uh, also i'll just try to do it so i'll just tell whatever the f u s n is there i want to convert to the upper dot upper upper letter so then next what is the validation i need to provide for the college name also so i'll say whatever the college name is there whatever the college name you are providing i'll just mention i'll just convert the particular to the upper uppercase character then that's all so when i can do it for the report also whatever the is there sorry the f report 
so whatever you are providing it i'll just convert that particular uh, thing to the upper and same for the offer letter also f offer so now once it has been done so all the data whatever the data will be providing it will convert to the uppercase character then the whatever the uppercase what here i'll just tell it is to uh, converting converting to uppercase okay so control slash comment okay so converting to the uppercase this will be the uh, query so here i need to just check one condition so what is the condition uh, i need to check first i will uh, fill out one particular details so i'll just uh, fill out one details now so before doing that one so let's see everything is perfectly done or not i don't know so if we have any errors we'll check it okay now come back to the form and uh, we'll start submitting the data so here is the right so here is the data i'll just enter it here so here i'll just enter the full name over here i'll just give normal here so i'll just give I'll just give my USN number here, one ve one seven C S zero one two. I'll give the email address. So one more thing is important here. So what is that important thing is until and unless I'm not logged in, and until and unless I have not done the sign up or login, I'm not giving him access to the uh, accessing the database here. So I'm not giving him access to login it. Okay. So what I'll do? So to apply that particular condition, so there is only one uh, inbuilt function uh, inside our uh, uh, whatever inside our uh, Django. So where I can just check whether the user is uh, logged in or not. So if the user is uh, authenticated, I can uh, just uh, make sure I'll just give him the access to the pages. If the user user is not authenticated, I'll be saying uh, please log in. Uh, please log in. Then uh, you can uh, just open it. I'll just see what is that uh, inbuilt function. Just a second. Okay. So here is it. So here I will just check what what is the condition that I will just check whether the user is authenticated or not. So where I need to check here is I, first of all I will check it when the user is opening the page. At that time I will check whether the user is authenticated or not. I will just check if not. I am checking if the user is not authenticated. So I will just check the particular request dot user dot is authenticated is a u t h e n authenticated. If the user is not authenticated, if the user is uh, authenticated, if the user is not authenticated, then I'll say, please log in and use our website. Message dot. I'll just give the warning message. I'll give the request to him. I'll just tell request, please log in. Please log in to access this page. Okay, please log in to access this particular page. I'll just stop. Uh, provide this particular information then i'll redirect him i'll just send it him back to where i'll just return redirect i'll just redirect him to the somewhere i'll just redirect him to the login page or logout page somewhere so what is the login url here so the login url is uh, somewhere here i'll just see so i'll just go back to this uh, auth app here i'll just check back to the views here is the url i want to send back him to the authentic particular login page right so this is a redirect URL for the login slash auth slash login page. So I'll go back to my views here. I'll just uh, where is it here, right? So I'll just say like this. So if the user is not authenticated, I want I want to send him back to the login page. That's all I'll just do. I'll just save everything. So once I say if I just refresh the page now, see it is telling me because I am not logged in here. It is telling please log in to access this particular page. If I am logged in, then only it is giving me access to that particular. See, if I just open again, slash internship details, see it is giving me, please log in to access this particular page. So now I have not done the, so I need to do the sign up, right? So one thing I'll just uh, debug the particular error. So what is the error is, so now see, I have, uh, once I done the sign up, again, it will take me to the login page. So without, and once I, if I just do the sign up, it should automatically it should take the data and it should fill out inside this form and automatically i need to redirect to the home page login successful like it also i can do so how that can be done so it is very simple just use your mind how i can i how we can do that one is um where is it in the authentication app it is here right so what is the thing for my login request so this is the code which is uh, working for the sign up right so for the login 
so i'll copy everything from here i'll just copy everything from here i'll just press control c then here is the sign of where i am doing it when these two conditions are false okay when the email is taken when this condition is failed uh, when the all the conditions are passing it so i'll be creating a database table here i'll give the save save status right the i am take i am just uh, making the user to store the data uh, whatever the data they are providing it i am storing into my database after storing it as i store i'll pro i'll put this particular data so i'll say i'll authenticate that user so i'll get the i'll authenticate that particular user so what is here so i'll get the particular email of it then i'll uh, get the particular password of the particular user whatever they are providing it so by using this particular data after saving it is done the data has been stored now same data which i am getting from the form that is email as well as the password i'll pass to authenticate the user so same thing i'm just passing here then i'll say my user is not done i'll give the login access then i'll say login success i will redirect him back to the home page that's all okay so that is what i'll be doing it here so this is the uh, one thing i can uh, just do it so let me see whether the indentations are proper yeah everything is fine now what it will be doing here is automatically it will uh, create the user and it will redirect him me to the uh, uh, I, I don't want to return this two stuff i'll remove it okay i don't want to remove uh, use this one i'll just remove it mm, fine so what i'll do once a user is not done i'll redirect him to the login side by the request is user user created and login success i'll say user user created and login success i'll say this one let's see whether uh, it will work or not so i just open this thing everything is working fine i'll save everything now come back here now let me if i just come back to the home page it is like this if i click on the sign up i am getting the sign up page now so i'll provide one uh, email address i'll just tell mm, so i'll just provide the particular email address valid one i'll give the password and i'll just give the password now see if i click on to the sign up see user got created automatically it redirect me to the home page without asking me to the login so now see i have a only logout button so there is no need of again sign uping again providing the details and login it okay so you can see how easily we can uh, edit this one so now now i have logged in so after logged in now i can access the particular page if i just tell internship details you can see i can able to access this particular page so it is was the one thing very important stuff so i have added here so it is an internship detail i'll just copy this url i'll just mention it here in my basic.html page so where if you forward the link i'll just mention it over here so where i can mention it here i'll just mention the below content i'll copy this one i'll say whenever there is a i'll just tell this is as one no, internship internship detail so the internship form i'll mention the url name as internship form and as all the things are same i'll just save it like this so once i save now come back here now if i refresh the page you can see i'm getting internship form if i click on to the internship form you can see it is the uh, page is getting loaded you can able to access the page from here so now you can see email is already taken i'll provide the name now i'll just give anish uh, one over here and i'll just give the usa number when we one seven cs zero one two i'll just tell yes i'll just select the date so whichever date i'll just select it some other date i'll select it so here also i'll just select any other date then i'll just tell uh, no and i'll just tell uh, shri venkateshwara uh, college of engineering okay i'll just select and i'll just click on to the submit so once i click on to the submit you can see form is submitted so the form is submitted successfully now i need to check whether the data has been stored or not for that i need to register the database table inside my web inside my administration panel so i'll say admin dot site dot register so i want to register what i want to register the internship database table i'll save it so once i say i'll just go back to the administration here i'll just uh, i don't know what is the thing i have provided so it is one uh, thing now i'll just tell erk uh, pro folder at uh, gmail.com and i'll just tell nes a login yeah okay so here at gmail.com i'll just give i don't know why i'll forget this password okay fine what i'll do here is i'll just create one now super user if you are if you are getting that kind of stuff even you can change the password also or else you can just create the news i'll just tell python 
manage dot py create the super super user i'll create one new super user sorry super python manage uh, dot py okay spelling is mr c r e a t create s u p e r super user enter so here it is asking the i'll just give a a so i'll just tell a at uh, gmail.com and i'll just give a a and i'll just tell what okay done so once it is done so i'll come back here i'll just give a a and i'll log in it is logged in if i come back to the internship table now you can see i got the data has been stored so you can see name is been came into inside the capital letter usn also converted to capital as well as the college name as well as the offer letter date has been coming so everything i can easily i can grab it inside my stuff okay so like this uh, i can uh, do something so what i'll do i want to check something i want to filter it i want to just check one thing i want to apply the filter here so if here see if i just uh, go back where is it okay and so let's go back here itself back So I'll just go back to this one. I'll just go back to the internship form. Now, if I provide the same name, so if I just provide the same uh, USN as the same email, what it will do means it will uh, just uh, it will just store the data. So I don't want this to happen. I put one condition here. So what is the condition means? If the data is already present, I don't want to uh, give him the access. So come back to here. So I'll just uh, I'm converting the data to the uppercase character here, right? so next i want to check one condition here i want to check one condition what is the condition here i'll just check i'll just say here i want to do one checking here i want to do check check is equal to i'll just tell this is my checking one so what is i want to checking here i want to check here is i'll say get grab all the data from the internship i'll say internship dot object from the all the objects i want to apply one filtering i'll tell filter i want to filter the database table so where i'll just con i'll just check here so what i'll check i'll check the usn number of the data so i'll just tell usn is equal to so whatever the usn so i want to check if whether if if the usn is present or not if the usn whatever they are providing it if it's ma if it's matching in my database table so whatever the usn they are providing it so it will be storing inside the fusn right i'll just check with the fusn if the usn is there okay if the usn is there i want to just say so it is one check i want to filter if the usn is there it will be true and one more check i'll do i'll just make it as a this is my checking too so in my internship database table i want to filter it for the uh, what i need to email so i need to filter it for the email address so email as well as your usn so this email i want to check with this particular email id which they are providing it i'll just check with all i'll check two the uh, i'll check two conditions here one is for the email and one is for the usn i'll check the or operation here. i'll just check if any one thing is present in my database i am not going to run this particular query below i am not going to store his or her details so for that one i'll just say if condition if there is a check one if check one or if the check one or check two if anyone is true if anyone is true i'll just give him warning i'll just tell messages dot warning i'll just take the request of it or request i'll say and um, your i'll just mention as i say your details are present i say your details are already your details are present or your details are stored already something i'll say your details are stored already then i'll return return redirect him to where i'll just redirect him to the slash internship details space so i'll just uh, return him back to the slash internship details page so there's one thing i'll just check if this particular condition is not satisfied then only if it's true it is not going to run this uh, below function if it's true it will return redirect you back to the redirect to the page and this particular code is not going to execute okay so this is one important condition i have been added i'll just save now so now once you've been saying now i'll just check whether i'll just check whether it is working or not I'll say same. I'll just give A N E S Rahman here. I'll give the U S N number one V E one seven C S zero one two, and the email was what before. Mm. So I need you already. It's in at gmail dot com. I think this is only the email. 
I'll just tell it as yes, start data, I'll select something. And see if you just click on the submit, you need to submit all the data, all the boxes. That also validation is been added. Yes, we see. If I see, if I try to click on the submit, see your details are already stored. That means this particular code is being executed. If I try to show you in my administration, you can see there the data has not been saved here. Only one data has been saved here. You can see only the data has been saved here. Okay. So this is one thing you can uh, make sure it up here. So now see same email. If I just remove one more thing, if I just go back here, I just click on the back. Now I'll just uh, the USN I'll uh, so sorry, not the email address. So even if I just uh, rechange the email, I'll just make it true three. Okay, now I have this USN not present, but the email is present of the with the same thing. If I try to submit now, even it is being your details are already stored because I applied a validation for the email as well as the usm got it understood guys how the things works so i can able to see from one more screen reply first everyone should reply understood what all the thing you need to fill out how to fill everything yes bro. okay interesting right this is cdm js So let's search for the fonts awesome so inside the font awesome i'll want to see what is the logo for the <laughs> icons i want to see one icon for the date so i'll just search for the date so it is not the dating okay it is normal date so here we have a date so we have a clock here you have a table here so to select the uh, date uh, which is the better one i'm not getting calendar check mm. Fine, I'll just uh, use this one. I'll just open uh, <coughs> this link. So here there is a calendar ready. FAFA, I'll just copy this content and I'll just uh, put back inside my internship page. Here. So I'll just paste it. Here I'll just copy the class name. I'll remove. So where is the date here? This date is here. I'll just uh, change the class name here for the date. Paste it here. Also, I'll just change here. Now the things will be fine. Okay. Now all the validations has been done. Everything is uh, coming properly. Okay. Now you can see the date. It has been changed. Calendar symbol has been coming over here. And one more thing is what here in the database. One thing is what here is uh, if I just go back to my database administration um, in the internship here I want to see the data in the row as I want to see properly here I cannot able to see the data nightly right I need to click here to see all the details something I can do that I can display the in the row fashion I can do it and I can apply the searching for field searching function a number of things I can do with this uh, data so what I'll do here is I'll just see uh, I'll say in my administration thing I'll say in the like how I need to display the particular uh, data so that I can just uh, do it here. So what I'll say here is uh, come back to the administration here. Where is it here? It, it is right. This is on the page. This is where the, I have I registered the particular administration tables. So here what I'll do, I'll uh, create one uh, class. So I'll just create one class. I'll just create one class. I'll just tell here as a internship internship admin okay so it will take accept admin so admin admin dot model admin admin dot model admin it will take it will be taking like this i want to display how i want to display there is one uh, field i'll just tell list display so if i want to display with the list so here i want to display what i want to display in this particular fashion what i'll do i'll copy everything from here I'll copy everything from here. I'll go back to my administration. Here I'll paste it. Okay. Here I'll just I'll just say I'll just press Alt here 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 as well as here. Sorry, I I need to remove this much. So I'll just uh, remove this much. I want all these attributes. I'll just uh, so I'm just I want to display in this particular fashion. For like what all the attributes you want to display you can display like this so i'll just show you it's very simple there is no any logic and all so here see. 
So I'm saying I want to display the full name in the row wise. I'll just paste this uh, full name over here. Done. Then here I need to just uh, I'll just see. I want to put everything inside the this one. So I'll just cut this one and I'll just paste it here itself. So I want to uh, store. I want to put it everything inside the single quotes. I'll just press Alt and I'll just select uh, multi cursor lines. I'll just put it as like this. Okay. Then same as it is. I'll just put again Alt. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so i'll just put again this one i'll just put one comma over here okay so this all thing i'll just call cut it and simply i'll just paste it over here okay so i'll just save it like this so once i save so if i just see any errors no errors so i'll just save okay no errors okay so like this i want to display so i want to display the full name then i want to display the usn everything so like this i want if i just click on the format document so like this it has been done fine so like this i want to display the particular data so then what i need to do here is i need to uh, register it here so i'll just say so what i need to do i'll just cut like this i'll say i want to register this particular class so i want to register this particular class as even i want i'll just pass this particular attribute in the right hand side internship admin that's all once i save now come back to your page if I refresh the page you will be able to see everything inside the row wise you can see so is right i can see everything in the row address i can why i have added the if i want to have put the one search box over here so that is also very easy if i want to search with the usn number or else if i want to search with the name either you want to search with the full name i can do that also same things in the in this same particular class i'll create one more uh, i'll just create one more uh, attribute so i'll just mention the particular attributes name as a search field so what are all the search fields you need to get i need to search with the full name even i can search with the full name then even if i want to search with the usn i can able to search it with the usn number then again i want to search with the particular uh, things inside my email okay i want to just search with this email this one i need to uh, i want to display like i'll just save it if i save come back here refresh you can see i got the search button over here i can search you can just tell one ve if i just tell one sorry one ve 17 cs 012 want to search even you can see the search has been coming here only there is a one record if you have 100 records also easily you can search it over here and i can do filtering also like if you have the yes or no status all this i can do the filtering so for that particular filtering i can do one more thing i'll just say uh i think the filter is okay list filter i need to use the list filter over here list filter so i want to filter with the timestamp i want to filter with what so i'll just filter with filter everything with the college name. i want to filter with the college name i want to filter with the college name then i want to filter with the particular uh, project report yes or no based on the yes or no things i want to filter with that i want to filter my particular database table with the offer letter status this one i need to filter it so this all the filters i'll be providing it if i just save everything come back if i refresh you can able to see here somewhere so you can see filter i got i can filter with the sri venkateshwara college so now according to data it will be coming over here if there is some other college the college name will be displayed here if there is a one or yes or no here yes or no things will be coming if i just select s how many people have selected as a yes only those data will be getting it to see here if i want to open this data personally i can just click on to here and i can easily i can uh, open like this and i can uh, see the details of it understood right understood guys any doubts no bro okay so only two three people are replying what about 20 other peoples who are there in the session any doubt understood right how you can so this this, this is overall uh, in this session overall i have uh, covered template how to create database table how to register in the administrations of the backend post request works easily it is right but you know very very simple no need of batting anything okay so now like this i'll be able to see your data so now the time is to host the website okay so i'll just host the website cut off it just uh, see how i'll be doing it so here i have one now uh, so this is a website this is the same website i'll be hosting it okay the same website i'll try to host i'll host it so here anything if you want to change so i'll just change uh, the basic.html page there is something like copyright it is there 
Where, where it is i portfolio is there right copyright i'll just spell a r k p r o c o d r this is one thing then uh, i need to change uh, one more stuff that is inside my home.html page i'll just provide the my name over here so why should i give some other's name i'll just tell anis okay done designer developer freelancer and not photographer i'll just remove it i'll just save it so i think this is more than enough very fresh you can see i'm having like md everything is coming perfect if i want to put one uh, good background uh, image i can do it that also i'll just try to put one now uh, good uh, background image mm, i'll just go back to the downloads here i'll just see any background image or else i'll just put one now uh, okay i'll just put this image okay so there is a less copy i'll just tell here in my project i'll go so <laughs> is inside the drive or where mm. so let's put it everything over here i'll just remove this support i portfolio folder because i don't want now so i'll just remove and let's go to the static assets images so here i have these images so i'll just i'll remove this fab icon also i'll remove this these two people law pictures and i'll just paste it so here i'll rename i'll just make it as bg okay bg.jpg okay so here i'll just uh, go back to my code here i'll just go back to my code so where i need to do the changes inside my static css style.css here where is the images there is the bg i have given bg.jpg i'll save it so once i save come back if i control shift r you can able to see the image is coming over here okay so the particular image is coming like this so i can see the about page is there and the blog page is also working everything is fine content also working internship form page also they have been created and logout functionality everything is there okay there is no other changes right now so now i want to host this particular website so how to host and how to share the link for you guys so i'll just go to the desktop i'll just go to the do here somewhere is there so not here here there is something <coughs> dj important how to log in with the google accounts is there so i'll share you the video okay if you want uh, i'll just share you the playlist if you want to access the playlist you can go up see here that i have not taught so if you want to learn that particular stuff also go to the channel so there is a complete one uh, django playlist only it is there okay there where i have not uh, taught you how to create like this website it is a very normal website so in the playlist i have the playlist over here so see we have like this so here i have taught you see this is all like normal website where i have taught you like how to host a website like normal how to from the starting whatever i have taught you everything i have added here but it is not like this but the 90 80 percent information has been provided everything over here from the starting from the installation part to, to how to create a website how to create the bootstrap how to use i have, I have not used any forms everything has been uh, created from the scratch you can access this playlist okay so see here somewhere it is there how to log in with the google account see here it is django social logins like 23 minutes video is there you can see this one and you can add a button how to log in with the google accounts okay i think the okay let's uh, this is the method list ramon dot h e r o k u hero to app dot com i'm not wrong if it, this is only the website okay so now you know people now you people will be hosting right website so you're also you'll be something like heroku app logged on you can see this is the website which i have taught you so in that particular complete like even we have a blog page over here like how to log in how to put like how to create like this uh fun sign up pages there you can see i have one button login with google account this is one extra things which i have been taught you okay one more thing is there how to send a dynamic emails if anyone try to contact you if anyone try to contact you where we'll provide a name email phone number if it submit automatically the thanks message will go to this email and uh, for the admin of your website will be getting a email like whatever they have been queried so it is one two extra things which is there inside this playlist you can access it so now i am going to teach you the free hosting part so hosting is here also is their hosting see installation hiraku here also i have host the website even you can see this here also and you can host your website you can deploy your website but the original hosting is here how to host your and the digital oceans using apache servers and with the free ssl certificate 
if you want to host your website professionally like uh, with your domain name like there is a binod singh is there if you want his website in the name of binod singh.com like binod singh.tech or binod singh.in like that without having a heroku and all here see it is a free one we are having a heroku app it will it will come inside middle so it is one demerit for us but no problem we can uh, use like this also for right now in future i am saying if you are creating any for your friends you are making website if they say you they want to host a website for you at that time you can uh, see this video and you can host the particular website professionally it is very completely difficult yeah, it is very difficult to think you can see here and you can uh, same as it is i have taught you you can just host it like that so now i'll host this website normal website so which we have been created like this one okay this one i'll just host it now so what i'll do i need to have two things here install so first i need to download heroku so download h e r o k u heroku so heroku you need to download this heroku this one thing mandatory so there is something like for the mac you can i don't know how you will install for the mac but the windows i know you have 64 or 32 bit click on to the buttons and uh, download your uh, this one website so sorry this particular application and normal installation you people know how to install any of the software like how you are uh, installing vjs code like that only you need to install it and this is one thing you need to install it heroku then you need to download git git version control git download git click on the first link for here if you click on the windows you automatic your uh, link with the particular uh, git will start downloading it that's it okay you can easily you can download the git and you can normal installation so once it is done open your command prompt cmd software installation just check whether it is installed or not so if i just uh, open my command prompt here it is so i'll just tell uh, hichi or okay, heroku iphone iphone version you can see i'll be getting a heroku version like this i'm getting heroku version like this if i want i can just tell git you can see git also working these two things should work heroku version and git also should be work. it will obviously it will work okay and if you have not uh, if you don't have any github account just open git github.com so i'll just tell uh, github i'll just click down to this one so here uh, you need to sign in if you don't if you do have not ever used github just uh, click on to the create your new account and you can uh, use you can just tell i'll just tell you yeah, okay e r o c o d yeah. and password i don't know don't know why i'll forget the password <laughs> okay so you can i don't know a little we'll see so you need to log in in your github account also okay just log in so it later we'll see now now i'll rest so these two things you need to install i'll show you this file also i'll just open i'll just pass this uh, i'll open here i'll just open this particular file here okay so just a second so here i'll just open it so these are all the commands i need to run okay so these are all the commands i need to run uh before for hosting my website so here i need to first of all i need to do i need to just uh, go back here so this is my project directory right so this is the project directory of mine so this is my project directory so where is my project this is the project directory so what i need to do i need to open this particular project directory see where is your manage.pf file leave this particular folder go back one folder you will be getting this folder click on to this tab and enter cmd once you enter the command prompt uh, the particular uh, this particular folder will open inside my command prompt terminal you can see it has been open inside the command prompt terminal so now simple what i need to do i need to run all this command that's all my website will get hosted very easy so i'll say pip install gunicorn pip install pip me then pip install virtual environment already i have the i have run this command in my laptop there is no i am not running running again so now what you need to do you need to create one heroku account you need to create one account so i'll just go back to the heroku account h r o k u heroku heroku app account so here i need to log in with my account 
see this is one thing i have already account you need to click on the sign up create your first name give your last name email address give the company name here robotica anything as a role as a professional uh, sorry student you can just give it uh, role entry primary development language select it as a python okay python and uh, click on the i am not a robot click on your create a free account now log in with your account so now i al already have an account i log in with my account i'll just log in with my account so as you know i forgot my password i'll reset the password first double five six seven at gmail.com okay let's reset the account password uh, i'll just uh, check with my account here So it is very easy to create a free account okay you can just uh, try creating your account so once i click on to this uh, you can see i got the link i'll reset the password now he's asking me provide the new password let's give okay i'll just click on to the save password so uh, my password has been saved now i can log in it okay and double five six seven at gmail.com so I'll let's log in it here okay I'll let's log in with my account so same way you can uh, easily you can uh, so I'll just give later here Sorry. you can see I have been uh, logged into my dashboard so you can able to host five websites okay minimum of five websites you can host it so you can see I have already this many websites I have hosted it here so coding thunder ARK coding thunder something and all so i'll just delete one website from here i'll just click on to this uh, coding thunder i'll go to the settings i'll delete it here i'll just copy this uh, sorry where i can delete means here i can delete delete the particular app i'll just uh, see oh n d i n g coding coding thunder it is t h u n d e r Okay, I'll just delete the application. I can delete the application also here. Now, what I'll do, I have created, I have deleted, now I have logged in here. So, you can say I have logged in in one application. Inside my Heroku, I have logged in. Now, come back to your command prompt. Just mention H E R O K U Heroku login. Just enter Heroku login and you need to press any key to log in it. So, I'll just press EA. That's all. It has been logged into this account. I'll just click on to this login button. So once I click on the you can see it is giving me the login access done. So you can see you are logged in as an Israema 955 Done. I have logged in. Now I need to activate this entire application, entire folder as a virtual environment. So that is virtual environment is one concept in Python. So like uh, it is like one everything you are packing into one container, which is not relatable to any other thing. So I need to run all this command. I'll say virtual env virtual environment. So before using virtual environment, you people need to run this command pip install g unicorn, pip install ppnv, pip install install uh, virtual env. All these three commands you need to enter it here and enter it. Okay, I am not entering that because already I have installed. So I'll just tell virtual env space dot enter. So once I click on to the virtual env dot, see here automatic some folders will get created here. You can see some you can see i got scripts lips a number of stuffs i got created here okay so like this things works so once it has been created wait for that time little time so it will work it so now we have to download hiraku i need to log in inside my hiraku i have done then i need to run this command now i need to activate my folder to activate your folder you need to run this command dot slash script slash activate i'll copy this command come back here here and let's say enter so here i'll just right click it is not copied i'll just uh, control c i'll come back here i'll right click you can see if i enter you can see before see how i was acting i was not having anything you can see i'm having like this uh, the passion of my cmd command prompt now it is uh, coming something like this that means if you are it is it is nothing but your portfolio dynamic website folder has been activated okay so once it is activated now i need to go inside the folder I'll just a cd project now here you need to again you need to install django everything you need to install so i need to install django i need to install request all those things so i'll say 
uh, first I need to install what I need to just tell pip install install Django so as I said it is a new container now I need to install all the things all the packages whatever you have installed it so I have installed the Django then I'll just install it it will install the Django over here then I need to install request I need to install pillow module so you remember or not I don't know for the handling the images we had installed pillow module right so that particular pillow model I need to install it only these three things I need to install it so it is collecting the Django so once it is installed so I think in five minutes we can host the website okay so after I'll leave you So then what I need to do I need to install this uh, request also I'll just tell pip install request don't give 3.0.5 just enter pip install Django and all okay then I'll just uh, so what I'll do I'll just uh, stop the server from here I'll just stop the server from here both the side okay I'll save everything from here I'll close all the files from right hand side let's keep a normal like just keep simply like this now in my sublime Mm, where it is I need to install request right I'll just uh, right click copy and here right click enter so your request will be installed here so once your request has been installed I need to install the G unicorn I'll just copy I'll just uh, enter pip install G unicorn so G unicorn is used for some uh, website stuff so for your handling so I need to install pip install uh, Django Heroku I need to install this Django Heroku because we are uh, hosting our website inside my Django Heroku I'll just enter and it is installed then what else I need to install then everything I will freeze, freeze everything inside the requirement.txt file I'll say whatever the modules I have installed I want to freeze it in one file that is requirements.txt file so same thing you need to give like this and enter if I just enter you can see all the here there will be requirement.txt file you can see these all the modules we installed all it has been freezed and it has been done so for better understanding i need to run the server python manage.py run server if any errors is there your website won't start here so here see i am having some error let us see i am getting pillow module you have not installed it is selling okay so here only i can uh, debug that particular error so here i will say pip install capital p i l l o w pillow because we are uh, dynamically uploading images right so for that we need to have a pillow model so this is one thing extra thing you need to do it here done now i can run the server python manage.py run server you can see my server has been running and all everything is working fine so once it is running fine next what i need to do uh, next i need to go to my setting now i need to create my domain name domain name in the sense like this so domain name in the sense are like this like what will be your domain name a space er rahman or ark coder thunder like this the domain name so now what i'll do i'll create something i'll just say h-e-r-o-k-u hiroku create here you need to give your domain name like uh pinot singh you can give your or mansoor rahmad you can give you can give balaji as like that okay whichever you want as your website name you can give here if it's available you can use or else you can use something else so i'll say and i'll give something like uh, ai robo Tika. If I enter Hiroku Django Hiroku create AI Robotica. So let's see whether uh, it works or not. You can see name AI Robotica is already taken. So I'll just tell here as a ERK Pro Coder. If I just give this website name, name ERK Pro Coder is also already has been taken. I'll just give something like ERK site. I'll just give ERK site. Okay. So ERK site, I think it is not taken. Hopefully, you can see ERK site is not taken, it is created. So if I can just access the website right now here. With this particular link, I can access the website. If I just open this website link, even you can open in your mobile also, in your uh, laptop from anywhere. You can see, hello, welcome to your new application. Now I want to render this application with this particular URL. That is only one thing I need to do it. To do that thing, I need to simply go to my settings.po file and I need to do some more modifications. So obviously your settings.po file will be where inside your project directory. Here it is a settings.po file. Here I need to add some of the stuffs. So what I need to do, I need to add uh, okay, I need to create the proc file first. So I need to create a proc file. 
So what is this proc file means? It is your uh, things it will tell where where you need to create means see in the same format you need to create. Here we have a project right. Inside your project directory you need to create a proc file folder. If I enter you see it should be in the same fashion. It should be below manage.po file. Here I need to tell this one line of code. Same as it is you need to give. You should not leave this space also. After this web and colon there is one small space. You should not remove that space. It should be there important. I need to connect my WSGA server. So inside my project, see, I have given the project name as project itself. So here we have something like WSGA. So I'm just connecting this WSGA file to run this particular application. So this thing, one thing you need to do, and I need to save all. I'll just save it. Then I need to go to the setting.po file. Then here I need to import the Django Heroku. I'll just copy this. I'll go to a code. I'll just at the top I'll import this uh, Django Heroku import the Django Heroku then I need to activate the Django Heroku I'll just uh, activate all the settings of the locals so I'll just come back to my folder VS code at the end I'll activate everything I'll say activate the Django Heroku done almost 90% of job is done now come back to the host thing now I need to use the git commands so I'll use the git commands here so here I'll say so where I need to use the git command means uh, okay I think uh, here itself yeah I'll say in the project directory I'll just tell git init I want to tell git init that means I have initialized as a git empty repository if you don't know git thing I don't know so it is just like we are using git to just transfer the files so I'll check what is the status of the git I'll say git status enter you can see I have this many application this many folders which is not being yet committed so I need to commit everything in the sense I need to save everything I'll say git add everything I'll say git add all uh, where is it I'll say git add all git add iphone iphone all that means I mean I need to add everything so you can see each and everything is getting added so once it is added I need to commit I'll say git initial commit I'll just copy this commit I'll right click and enter so I'm just doing the initial commit. Even you only need to run same commit. Let me see. All my files has been committed. That means all the files has been saved. That is what the thing is there. Next, I need to run this command. So what is this command? The command is uh, I have created one Heroku here. You saw. So I have created the my ERK site, right? I want to connect this uh, GitHub repository to ERK site folder. So I'll say whatever the thing is there, I want to connect it to the ERK site site. So that thing you need to give it inside the double quotes here. That is the Heroku git colon remote iPhone ES space ERK site. Enter. You can see it has been connected to this site. You can see it has been connected to the ERK site now. So once it is connected, last command you need to enter push you git push Heroku master. Copy, right click, enter. So that is a git git push Heroku master. So once I run this command, uh, this is the final command. You can see after this I can uh, load the website inside my mobile phone even you can uh, see inside the desktop desktop so what it does means everything it will install here okay everything it will install like Python it will install all the modules it will it will look onto the particular directory everything it will uh, install it here just wait for a second so you can see all the things it is getting installing it. everything it is installing it You can see everything let's wait for some time once it is installed Okay, you can see your site has been deployed to Heroku. Done. Now come back to the site. Just if I refresh the folder, let's see whether it is hosted or not. You can see our website is hosted successfully. Even you can I'll send you inside the link. If you open that link, you can see the website. Okay. So all the website, our website is hosted perfectly. 
everything works fine you can see bot is working blog is working uh, here see it is not uh, returning why it is returning means errors i am getting because i need to uh, create a super user now to that one i need to just tell heroku -E 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 uh, run bash bash i need to run heroku run bash after heroku run bash what i will say here is hmm. so heroku run bash i'll be opening it so here i'll just tell python manage dot py migrate i need to run this command python manage dot py migrate means okay i'm getting error here so first i need to enter python manage dot py uh, make migrations make migrations okay what is this error python manage dot i'm getting errors so what i'm getting you cannot use image because pillow is not installed okay it is telling the pillow is not installed so what i can do here is uh, pillow is not installed why i have installed right hmm. okay 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 i i and I, I forgot to do one thing here so what is means mm, control c control z so if i just press control c c c okay now i am back to the project now see what i need to do i need to freeze it again see here in the freeze requirement.txt file what there is no pillow module here so i didn't i installed after installing i not freeze it again so i need to freeze it again everything here so i'll just run that command again see after if you add any stuffs you need to do this uh, this one thing i have forgot see i have installed but i have not freeze it i need to freeze everything inside my uh, stuffs i'll enter this command it freeze requirement.txt file so you know it is after freezing it now see here there is a pillow model has been came here now i have added these two things okay even if you do any modification what you need to do you need to run this command what is the command you need to do first you need to activate your virtual environment then you need to uh, run this command first what git init you need to not do mm, where is it git init is not there git status it is telling me you have modified this file git status then git add everything everything added again git commit uh nine some something you can give so you can see one file has been changed and once insertion is done then i'll just tell uh, git initial commit right after that git push hiroku master mm, git push hiroku master so once it is rehosted back now you can see again it will rehost the back now i can uh, easily if you do any modification later in your code you need to run only this command from git status to git push hiroku master okay i hope you understand from this particular command to till last this command you need to run whenever you are doing any changes later so now let's wait for the installation of that one so it will it is done so now what i need to do i need to activate my super user i need to create super user to create a super user you need to run the bash you need to run the migrations migrate folder I need to create a new super user folder because this our website is not connected to the SQL 83. It is not connected to this database right now. It is connected to the database of the uh, this one. It is connected to the uh, this particular database. See now, see uh, if I refresh this page, <coughs> you will be able to see here that particular website. That is a where is it? ERK site. You can see this particular. It is connected to my database that is Postgres SQL. You can see it is giving me the name here postgre it is uh, connected to the postgre sql database okay so all the database will handle in our postgre sql it is a free of cost so now it is done now i need to run the command iraku run bash <coughs> so iraku run bash is applied so iraku run bash is uh, done right so once if i done you can see now it is been there so I'll say python manage uh, dot py migrate enter so you can see all the migrations is been applied if I just tell python manage dot py make a make migrations enter you can see no changes detect now I need to create a super user I'll just tell python manage dot py create create super super user user so i'll enter the create super user i'll just uh, give my email address here okay anisrahman9567gmail.com uh, i'll give the same as it is okay i'll give the password okay 
okay i'll just tell y and enter i'll just save it that's all so now i have created my website successfully so i'll just cancel it done so now you people can fill out the forms with my website so you can see if i click on to this uh, home page everything will work now just try everyone do the sign up first everyone must do the sign up now everyone should do the sign up i have showed you the link over here so i'll show you the real time data so now i'll log in with my super user admin edmin admin so once i log in with my admin i'll provide the username password i'll provide okay now see if i click on to the users you can see i am the one user so you can see ss prabhu had done the sign up his details has been showing over here so all people almost how many are there 20 are there many people almost all everyone should apply you can see the data how it is reflecting in my database got it if i refresh all the data i can see of how many people you can see four people is vinishas prabhu shri uh, shri zahar and manoj also has been uploaded so you can see all the data i can see but i cannot see you people passwords so you have done the sign up now even you can uh, fill out the particular forms also like you can fill out this particular internship form also like you can fill out this data so whatever the data you will be filling it i'll be able to see inside my administration database okay so this is how we can uh, do it understood guys understood everything how the things works yes bro yeah bro any doubts if you have you can ask normally okay so this will be the last session so i have uh, see you the hosting part also <coughs> so <coughs> so you can see all the data is in mansur khan and uh, all, how many people are been uploaded whatever the things you are getting everything i am coming over here and if i just go click on to the internship things you can see no one has been updated right now so if i try to update my details over here automatically it will reflect to me here okay once you fill all the details it will be reflecting over here then i will easily i will download these uh, things inside my excel sheet format also okay so like this uh, we can easily create a website so you can see so in the very short time we can uh, easily create website and you can see this is a nice also i don't know how it's looking in mobile if i open in the mobile it will look something like this it will look something like this which is fine no problem okay so if i open like this it will look something like this okay it is fine no problem